Hey, hey guys, it's El Cabo here. Hola, como estas? In post, I just noticed a nice little intro I had worked up, corrupted. I did want to originally cast this live, but if you want to catch up on the lore, watch my Unite cast video to be caught up. The first few seconds will get you caught up. I'll leave it linked as well. As always, feel free to check the description for more unlisted content, and please do drop a like and a comment to show support. Thanks, guys. Back there, but okay. We'll, we'll have to I have exactly fast forwarded a bit. I believe it it's does start around here. Match incoming. I think our players are ready. I Let's hope see. our judges are ready. Yeah, I believe it starts and I hope right now. Is ready. Let's kick off. Leave Boys, issue that has happened game. with me with Final Bobby matches. himself actually in the past tournaments. Let's get this game underway. Ball. Had to buy some more stages. We see Sakuya starting the turn. That flutter means shutting down initialization. So oh Sakuya no. Could have access to concealed kids always have has earth and vessel to access those fun metas fun form, fun in his deck. format i guess I you could say i mean same format but different meta with his price yeah. checking this time iron towers for me say energy is normally something that players do check for pretty quickly and when you're only playing six copies of your basic energy got rid of type, path to the peak hello iron towers super fast sakuya does kick i will much rather have path to the peak than iron towers to search the deck for any format. basic pokemon and will place it directly on to the bench and what would you like to see from sakuya to develop here hashtag like rating greninja bring the peak back the initialization something he could use that thorns fluttering ability of the flutter main in his active Flutter main is a good is counter i forgot about that active spot establishing attackers as quickly as possible i think ideally you want to do both of course depends on the rest shot of off the hands, for you shot off prioritize those roaring moons you need to get them out asap i have brick so hard against iron like thorns before be playing lubia made me tech a uh flutter main in my deck turn, so you're essentially put on a six turn clock right Either Logan wins in six turns. Speaking of Lugia, Sage. No Lugia made top 16, I believe. I haven't been one. able to find a list. To start us off, and I Shout out to uh, Raul. Checking all the roaring wounds, I all did the post his uh, video up. He did play Lugia. And, and won on stream. Big Lugia believer. For the rest of the game. Sakuya may be young, but he is very well prepped and very well prepped. I haven't seen the live yet, the results, but I do know again it'll get in a win. Players, Sakuya will discard the top Pokey three stop. cards of the deck and put any item cards he finds directly into the hand, discarding lots of guidance and a flutter main. The flutter main going down. Flutter main, okay, I couldn't tell what that was. Ancient cards in the discard pile. Same can be said for that explorer's guidance. I forgot what he got from it though. Didn't quite cash it. Something that could oh, come up. Cash you know, if Logan Bailey wants to retreat between Iron Thorns, you know, try to deny prize KOs. Yeah, Logan is playing a more aggressive version of Iron Thorns without Legacy Energy, but with Oh, Iron I thought he was going Earth Investor, but no, he went with the uh, Seal. That means Sakuya will or whatever it's called, he got two, two, two out. Pokemon. And Logan could try to play around with all four Iron Thorns, as you mentioned, but no wait, um, were, were those basic energies? Yeah, they were basic energy, I believe. That legacy energy. Now, interestingly enough, Sakuya did discard a dark patch. Kind of hard to tell with the glare. Very crucial card to be able to power up and recover. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did go over from Vessel. Through knockouts or through crushing hammers. Sakuya will attach a darkness energy grabbed off of the earthen vessel and a dark patch. That's what it's called. Flutter, or excuse me, the benched roaring moon, and it looks like it was a pass of the turn over to Keep Logan notes. Let's get back down to the He table means and business. See what Logan Bailey has in store already. I see crushing hammer waiting in the wings. Gonna start with this Poke Gear 3.0. Tap Logan the stadium. Top seven cards Logan, of the sir. deck and add any supporter card he finds there into the hand. Which Poke Gear? Roll the dice. Logan play on his first turn of the game. Judge Arvin. Call resist tenacity would be ideal. Find judge Arvin and Cutterus, I guess. Sure he is in control. Looks like he's going for a judge. Yep, judge makes sense. Not a bad call. Hey. You limit your opponent's hand. You know they just got a couple energies off of that earthen vessel. Therefore, you take away one. You know, leave it to chance whether they have it again or not. And with Logan's um, hand already having an energy attachment, that seems like a decent choice. Logan does have at least an energy card in hand. Also. Judge also, and Iona are both cracked no radar and item card in this situation. Iona would have been better, but hindsight. Or two into play. He's going to start with this crushing hammer. This is I'm a sure his deck works better with Judge anyways. Heads. He'll be able to discard an energy card from Sakuya's side of the field. And it is a heads. Darkness oh, the high roll. Discard pile. Heads That's going to hurt. The dice was actually stopped by Sakuya from falling from the table. So Minus one oh. energy. Crucial, right? Immediate energy gone. Dark patch also gone. 
and we're gonna see Logan try to establish more iron thorns through this tech. Logan is very definitely cooking up here. here just to make sure that no surprise happens. got two more uh thorns out make sure that I believe this deck only runs four Pokemon so it may not seem Lots like of mulligans. Has happened, but Logan has already put himself in a pretty solid this deck spot, that took me by surprise the very first time I played against it. We see the judge it was a very up. sad day for Lugia. Is, yes, judge will be played. Both players will shuffle their hands into the deck, and each will only get four cards from this draw. Honestly, this is as impactful. Played a lot of Lugia, Snorlax, Lugia. and yep. right on yeah, lately. Don't know what to go with. Right? Lugia, Lugia of, seems to be falling uh, off. Left or not, at least here, Japan seems to be doing very well. Go look with the judge here. A little bit. Have to slow down a both little shuffle bit their hands to their decks and draw four so cards. Big four cards for both players coming here, Chip. Iono. You shuffle your hand to the bottom of the deck Sakuya, and just draw however many prizes you have. This is really the main thing you're hoping for, be it the Professor Sada's Vitality or even an Explorer Guidance. I think either of those would be acceptable. And Logan Bailey with the attachment of the basic lightning energy. To nice notice. Spot. Is that that Pokemon on his neck? Uh, I forget the Pokemon's name. Comfy, I think. Pack off next turn. Now, one thing that's interesting, Logan did use that Techno That's some good uh, style right there in Hawaii. Hawaii. He chose only to bench the one. Why Hawaii. Is that? Got a boss's orders, sure nice. Sakuya doesn't have an option. Echo Combine, uh, clutch. Is pretty impactful. And oh, that's why, okay, his cards are a different language. Uh, what is he? Japanese, I see. Japan versus America. Now, we do see the Pokestops hitting a couple more ancient cards into the discard pile, and Sakuya it looks slightly different. Find a few pieces Pull me off. To work with, right? That Explorer's Guidance is pretty big. I think Sakuya knows that if he continues to build his ancient, Look at the top two. Uh, what, how does this one work again? Look at the top six. He doesn't need to start attacking him. Two into your hand no and the rest of this card. Yeah, and okay, I remember this one now. Okay, yeah, yeah. He wants to build up the ancient. Being an ancient card. Build up ancients in the discard. Fuel the midnight. Make his uh, moon attack. Fletching, attack. and fleshing. There we go. So Make it attack stronger. Six cards here. Choose two of them I like I like that archetype actually. The iron thorns on the other hand. Cards going down as well. Have to the peak at home. Up for the Way worse. A pair of ancient cards going down now with this earth. Have to the peak, but in a Pokemon so instead of a stadium. Discard card from hand. It is that Fluttermane, and grab two. Basic energy from the deck. It will be two Earth basic vessel. energy as the grab. Two basic darks. Pretty crucial. Both spalas right portugues. I'm okay, I see. See right what he that does. He doesn't have much else on the bench, right? Hasn't found another Roaring Moon. Hasn't found um, more options. The Vicendipity X just hit the discard pile as well. So that's not going to see any use at this point in time. There's an extra Roaring Moon. BRB. Let me take a sip of water. a situation where Sakuya runs out of bench Pokemon at some point, perhaps. Finding those without abilities could be a little tricky if your hand keeps getting attacked every single turn. Yeah, I think a big thing is going to be when does Logan Bailey find those lost cities? And when does he choose to put them in play? Sending those... Roaring Moons and those other ancient Pokemon like the Fluttermane to the Lost Zone as opposed to the discard pile could be a really strong strategy. I think we are back over now to back. Logan's turn. Back, back, back. And Logan is starting off with the Colrus Tenacity, a brand new card from Shrouded Mabel. Not no Shrouded idea what Mabel that does. Card, I haven't really played this format. Curse your deck for Stadium card and Energy card, reveal them, put them into your hand, and shuffle your deck. For any energy card, Pretty good. Energy, any energy Don't know how I feel about it, though. And a I'm really paid card against it. Them directly into the hand. We could see a lost city and double turbo energy. I could not have chosen a better card. Stadiums are becoming cracked right? again, though. Your opponent's there is a new sta a stadium in Shroud of Fable. Forget the name. I believe it's pretty cracked. If I remember correctly, Shroud of Fable or Twilight. Zone instead Forget of which of the two has it. The discard pile. Therefore, you're not helping your opponent build up that very crucial damage. For the vengeance fletch it will be awesome to, to uh make now, world one day logan had a don't really have as much time there before he charged chose i believe only made a hundred very careful with the 150 timing. points logan last being very thorough to check his prices right now sadly. with this search and yeah i mean he must know that at this point he has one lost city prize so timing the lost city is very very crucial D T E lost city to put it in play just to knock out a from that new card i forget what it's called lost city to make sure that it's a oh, it's tenacity, I to the lost zone. That's a, an interesting. Oh, his prizes. Yeah, Roaring Moon is of course the main. He does play Iono. For 
exactly yeah don't play two great tusks which are fighting type pokemon but also requires so much energy and actually never mind there's no fighting energy, <laughs> no, so there's no. no way to attack with them dte attach return situation where logan is very so what low did he do the deck, let me move it and therefore it could end up having some discord oh his attack his attack yeah yeah i believe logan his attack moves the energy first on the okay. board here at the final of the world champion knocked out the florida me does go to logan bailey taking that turbo energy jaws off of the prize just throwing shot off, off the baby moon i'm not sure is gonna kick yeah, it I'm not sure if that counts as an ability or an attack. Hey, Pokestop to draw three cards. I see his text on the card. That is not too bad. And also this Hisuian Heavy Ball. Japanese, kind of hard to read for me. Gonna actually shuffle these prize cards. So those energies are gonna move around a little bit. We're talking about how there was one that stuck up at the he top of the got a Heavy prizes. Ball. We'll have to see how these be, uh, how these are rearranged when Sequoia places Good them luck with out. the Heavy yeah, Ball. No surprises here. We're gonna give the prizes a bit, of, shuffle, a bit of a cut. And yeah, this could actually prove crucial for Sakuya, allowing him to unlock some of those energies earlier than before. Prize cards being placed. We'll get an update shortly. Now, the only thing Sakuya is missing to get off and attack this turn is Oops, an energy card. Oops, I cut that off. Kind of tapped the mic there. My bad. have an energy card already in hand from last turn, right, with the Earthen Vessel. You have to balance, though. When do you want to go for these just basic energy attachments? Man, I need when to set up my camera again. Sasada's Everything's so boxed up. Looks like Sakuya is digging for that supporter card with this Pokegear 3. Feels Pokemon weird the doing is this without a cam. Yes, there is. Sada very crucial will allow Ta Sakuya to a spec. establish I forgot what that A-spec does. At one is that the one that you get like three X cards? One darkness energy in the discard pile for now. But still, getting close to powering up two Roaring Moons. Sakuya needs that vengeance fletching to happen turn after turn because i don't think there's quite enough ancient cards here to get a knockout a one hit ko yet you know don't exactly know what the count is but it's certainly going to be setting up he's for going for the count now i believe i would imagine at this point or no he's going to build it up yet. more recognizing i would like to get everyone does uh every ancient card i believe is 10 or 20 i believe it's 10 so for every ancient card he attacks between 10 and 20 strong i'm pretty sure it's 10 though quite a few strong ones that were found a lot of really good it does build up though from one hit ko up, all of them very very crucial it's about anything exactly really if you build it up enough that there is a lost lady in logan's hand so he and it's a basic to too so it can one hit ko you you won't hit ko it back it's a basic you get one and usually they'll get two you really need those so it's a good trade-off to help you out so i think he kept the focus up and one of the sadas he found the pal pad going down is something to keep track of Sakuya is playing two he discarded a pal pad, pal pad so something he that may be uh on. bad the thing I think pal pad does you get like a supporter back an ancient but he must have cut some good cards cards off of that of them have hit the we discard the uh, pal pad i'm not sure i see one in the hand that would allow this roaring moon to withstand an logan from the best thing he could do here if he Possible some so kind of hand disruption. I own no preferably. In Sakuya's discard yeah. pile, honestly, I think it was on his following turn. Defiance ban, perhaps, and the defiance ban could be huge. To oh, oh, it's a knockout. Sakuya with enough ancient cards in the discard pile. That was a good combo. The defiance ban, defiance is, ban is a comeback mechanic. This you do plus thirty, I believe, for plus twenty. Because he was behind. A massive swing in this match in Sakuya's favor. Now Shaku is wow. ahead, so the fine span will no longer work. But that much damage, but keeping the focus up in play. You could tell you got Logan. Those crucial. He crucial jabbed Logan. He's dazed right now. Able to build up to just enough and finding the cover. Oh, Logan has a prime catcher in hand, I believe. Logan seems like he'll be able. Or no, that was it. Okay, never mind. That was it there. Pokegear does find a professor's research. He does have the knockout pretty well set up, and does know that there's quite a lot of good cards in Sakuya's hand right now. Yeah, is going to have the response K. I think Sakuya has his. Again, I have not seen the final results, but the future booster going capsule. off of this. I don't that, think he did. Yeah, that's a big part. It could still swing either way, but Sakuya, I believe he's leaning towards it more. Reduced by 20. Especially if Logan is only you playing the four basics. The future booster energy capsule. Four iron thorns. That does boost the damage by 20, effectively canceling out that double turn below energy damage reduction, but we do not see the tool card just yet. I think we're gonna see a research hoping to find it to get this return KO. Now, of course, the Defiance Band is no longer working because Sakuya is now ahead in the prize cards. But big seven cards here. Plus seven, let's see what he gets. Yes, there it is. 
does find the future booster energy capsule also has that lost city in oh wait dude, what he had now, a one more thorns and bench i didn't see it tonight the lost zone as opposed the capsule to the okay pile will not 20 more the next attacker a huge hit there for logan bailey making sure that he can keep up the pace here this is what he's going to need to do if he wants to come away with the win sakuya ota already jumping ahead in the prize nice. now logan tying it up Two prizes taken for each of these players. What does Sakuya have to start the turn? Needs to find Professor Sato's Vitality and the Darkness Energy. And it looks like he's already got both. Has both. Has Nest ball for another moon, I would assume. Roaring moon. Can he get Nest ball, more okay. Harder? I see. Perhaps doesn't need that many um, to get to the knockout. We know he dealt 230 damage last time around, right? So yeah, this is the thing. They trade one for one. Because of that, they find Logan kind of end up losing. So Kuya will end up winning this. Again, basics. Can he get two more cards or one prizer? Logan has two prizes. Very soon, but this the math doesn't work out. Backup knockout for Sakuya in this turn. Plenty of cards to work with in the hand. We know the pieces to at least pull off the attack are here. And it looks Bump like to stadium. He played Pokestop. Well. Poke got rid of Lasso. With, with the top three cards of the deck. Discarding them, any item cards go into the hand. Poke stop down, Ultra Ball, Ooh, and the two Sato items, not bad. Discard pile, not a card Sakuya would like to see go down. Does have at least one pal pad remaining to try to bring those back. And here we go. Speaking of bringing back, here come two. Hey, one Sava. He discarded down, one off the stadium, the but the deck. I would say it was worth it. Sakuya would definitely like to find that ancient booster energy capsule, and it looks like there are a pair. Of ancient cards in the hand that can be discarded with the Ultra Ball. This will mean Ultra Ball. Sakuya will that. take two okay, prize cards. Oh, this yes, turn. Oh yes, definitely worth it. Have half the energy now. Certainly has enough after this Sada, after this Ultra Ball. Also has uh, brought out that Greninja, probably just to thin. It might be the last Pokemon left in his deck. There might not be another Roaring Moon, or he might already uh -oh. have it in his hand. But does have everything he needs. Logan is saw Sakuya's card. Over on Logan's side. He's okay though. I'm sure they know this he shows his deck by memory now. Not Grand only finals. will this lead to the KO, he also will take prize cards. It will lead to a Night Stretcher being he should taken. Have the deck list. Be he shows his deck list by now. If he ends up needing it. But I guess at this point, he really does only need these Alpad. two Roaring Moons. Those are the only Pokemon he needs to close out this game. game. He just needs to make sure that he can get the necessary energy onto each of these Pokemon. Yeah, one energy. Let's see what he gets from the Palfire. Two Sadas. Good call, I would say. And put two two Professor Sadas Vitality in the deck with this. Good call, I would say. Palpite, which I don't think is very common. He needs the energies. The ancient box decks we are used to seeing, but coming in super crucial. There are not a lot of cards left in Sakuya's deck here. Yeah, Sakuya was not messing around with Pokestop when it comes to this event. He knew that he was going to be Oh, sleeve stop, issue again, it looks like. Some Possibly. Cards, so wanted to make sure that with the pair of Palpad, it would never be something that hindered him. And he is certainly not going to be hindered at this point. Sakuya is going to jump very Kids far are playing hard. This game with this Ruining sleeves KM. left and right. The icing on the cake here for That's good though. Is the ancient booster energy capsule that you mentioned, Chip. I don't know if he GG's. has it in his hand or not, but that would put the Roaring Moon out of range and would force Logan to find a... One energy? Go. Oh, energy knockout. Hard. Vengeance fletching. One that is not knockout. the position Logan wants to be in. Thorns hits the discard pile. The Kuya is pretty much Logan set up now. Needs to find a way to take... I don't see him coming back unless he's got some kind of hidden check from this new set or something in the world. Knockout. What does Logan Bailey need to find in this situation to fight back in this game? It could come down to a car crushing hammer hand flip. Logan needs, first of all, the capsule crushing hammer would delay. I mean, would actually maybe even win it. Crushing hammer to Depends, really. Energy to really increase Definitely delay it. Winning. Does have an Iono in hand. We'll I don't think he would. I don't think he would win it off of that, but it, it would delay, and then who knows? This knockout or potentially a he needs a crushing hammer, then he needs a heads. To get the stadium and guarantee the energy doesn't seem happy about crushing hammer in hand, but he can't so get it off the stadium the chorus, or the poker year. I mean, wonder if Logan needed more, does he need to also disrupt and also find the crushing hammer? Needs to find the future booster energy capsule. Needs to find all of these pieces. And Colder says tenacity, while it is very strong in this specific deck. It very often gets you the two cards you need. In this spot, it just would not be enough. Yeah, and the stadium, of course, crucial to get rid of this Pokestop, which has done so, so much for Sakuya. This game, we're going to see if he gets the heads. On this crushing hammer heads, and that energy card from Sakuya will hit the discard pile. Tails 
And this will be really difficult. Logan would need to find another crushing hammer and try again. Let's see the flip. What's Ooh. the result? Off the table. <laughs> Off the table. Reroll. One more time. Of course, the evens are heads. Come on, the Logan. You got eyes. it. Here's the flip. Ooh. And it's a tail. Oh, Stage. No now what do you want? The Kuya. The Kuya's got game one more likely. Iono chip. This Iono is huge. I don't think that Iono will help him enough, honestly. Energy capsule. If that's not found... The game is over and Fusion Saturday Energy gives you one. a bonus Five attack, but no health, if I'm correct. Yeah, only four Let me see, wait. And honestly, that one no retreat costs, game, only more damage. That is at a minimum so I don't think well, that would help him. Let's see these four cards. Is there a future booster energy Just capsule? like a one-hit KO. This game is over, and I don't see it. Um, no way to knock out this drawing one, which we know is doing enough damage. I think we're heading to game two, Chip. Yep, and that is going to be the attack. And Sakuya, all he has to do is announce his attack on his turn. Sakuya Ota GG's. winning game one of our junior division finals. I think the Back moon has got this matchup. I mean, closed, right? Everything closed well. I think Logan could definitely win, but this game was that focused of saying he's coming from the back for sure. The so has got the, to counter it the heads up. Combined with that, Josh to hopefully slow down Sakuya, but he chose to conserve the resource, perhaps realizing. All right, I'm gonna add a cut here and guess uh, in the prizes of trying to resume once they are. Done shuffling it up. Let me see. Unless uh, there's another issue. All right, I believe they start around here now. But of course, Pokemon is a perfect common language for both of them. Yeah, they both speak the trading card game language very clearly. Pokemon Universal. Able to find a basic Pokemon, no if you remember the text, that is. Today. Just an attachment of an energy and a pass. It might seem like an underwhelming turn, but honestly, Patch, Logan. Pass. He's totally fine with that. That's the yeah. bare minimum what he needs. Prime Casher yeah, in the prizes. Oh, an Iron Thorn in the prizes out. might be. Usually, prized for Sakuya does seem like they're going to okay, get shuffled right now. Okay, a commentator says same thing. Sakuya will find out immediately what he prized. Nothing super crucial. Heavy ball. Pokemon, that Professor Sal's Vitality, less than ideal, but I think he'd rather that than so many energies like last time. And it was that Roaring Moon as the initial starter. We could see a quick turn one attack. I would say it's pretty unlikely that we see a win here. I don't even know if it would be possible to get that many ancient cards in the discard pile. But with that energy card already going down from the Earthen Vessel, if Sakuya is holding on to a Professor Sada's Vitality, we could see a little poke here with the Vengeance Fletching. Yeah, I mean, and any little bit of extra damage Earthen Vessel is for the two. Okay. However... Uh, you know your Roaring One is likely going to go down, right? Now, we have talked about um, how powerful Iron Thorn takes, but what isn't too powerful is that Bolt Cyclone, right? It does 140 damage. The double turbo usually tends to reduce. Well, it always reduces the damage by 20, and 120 is not enough to hit those Roaring Moon for one KO. So finding Booster Energy Capsule for all his attackers will be very crucial for Logan, and one of them was priced along with his Ace Specs. We do see Professor Sada's Vitality being played that will attach the Darkness Energy from the discard pile to two up to two from the discard roaring and draw three. Yes, looks like we are having That's what's another out of this sleeve game. that was broken here. Been out of the loop for a while. I'm playing a couple, couple weeks now. We'll get back into the game. The one thing that Sakuya is missing at this point, I will say, is another basic Pokemon. And yep. his deck does not play that many basic Pokemon and really not that many ways to find it, all things considered, right? Has the four Nest Ball, has, you know, a, a bunch of different basics, you know, 12 different basic Pokemon in the deck, and then one single copy of Ultra Ball. So Sakuya will need to find another basic Pokemon. Otherwise, that could open up Logan Bailey to take the only KO necessary to move this into a Game 3. Yeah, that would be a harsh way to end Game 2, right? Getting benched out, but, I mean, despite having a lot of outs, right? The 12 basic Pokemon you mentioned, the 4 Nest Ball, the single copy of Ultra Ball, Maybe even Sakuya was hoping to have a Pokemon prize. Not right? sure so what's going that, on here. Um, <coughs> his some kind of issue again. Find him something. So leaves again. Any other way. I don't know. These three cards from looks like a sleeve. Yep. Vitality. Leave Could transplant. Chip. Yeah, it looks like it is a sleeve being split. Maybe you know a little. Your sleeves are in good your, hands. You know, shuffling the deck at this point, trying not to damage the sleeves any further. So leave doctor. Have any more delays? Head judge at the table there, Bobby Clark. Speaking with the translator, Clark making sure Sakuya Kent. understands the whole situation. And we'll hopefully get back into this game very soon. Nothing wrong done by either of the players at this point. Just kind of a more procedural thing. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, after, as you mentioned, grueling three days battling against the top players of the world, you can run into these sort of issues. And it's always important to be very thorough with your shuffling, but also crucial to be careful so that these sleeve splits don't happen too, too often. And oh, sleeve split. Okay. Whatsoever. Yeah, shuffling a little too rough so actually, there. Actually, uh, I think the issue may be that there are not any replacement sleeves at the moment. We may have or no out replacement, of replacement sleeves. sleeves ah, we've got things sorted. Sometimes what we see sense. in these situations is, uh, you know, a sleeve swapped with one of the prize cards here that will be taken later on. And let's see the draw. Is there an out to another basic Pokemon here, Pablo? I think he found a Fluttermane. Perhaps does still have the Pokestop to search for. Nestbolt. I think he might Pokey have found a Fluttermane, but of course not looking to bench that. And there Three items, Nestbolt. Didn't quite look at the other two. That Single will Ultra grab Ball. another Roaring Moon from the deck, put it directly onto the bench. Something that Nestbolt came in nice though. Point. It wasn't guaranteed Logan would get the KO. He would have needed to find the future Booster Energy Capsule, but that is a four of copy in his deck. Also would have needed to find a basic Lightning Energy, and I'm sure Sakuya would prefer this situation here of ensuring that he will not lose the game next turn. Yeah, now both players on the edge, right? Because Logan right now, I couldn't see if there was an Arvin in his hand. I don't believe so. So doesn't have the knockout yet. Double throw allows you to attack. Attach return. I believe you can attack now, right? There's two energies. We're see Sakuya get the first attack of 90 damage with Vengeance Fletching. Uh, potentially setting up a decent KO next turn if he's able to find another Professor Sadas. Or if the Roaring One simply survives by the lack of the boost in damage. Logan does already have an energy 140 card left, yes, you could definitely KO next turn. In order to get There's a couple more Ancients in the discard oh, pile, and it's going to be a we'll KO. Like a and also be play, perhaps looking for an Arvin bad for Logan. That Again, card. basics. Arvin could also get the that maps he doesn't add up. On on if Logan bench, had uh, one prize, but I don't believe Arvin this deck runs one prize. Judge, okay. We may just see Logan add this to the hand. I actually think there is another Poke Gear. He may search once again. I think Arvin would be the best supporter to play right now. Arvin would be fantastic. Finding that Techno Raider, finding the tool to get the knockout. Now, if your opponent does knock you out once again, finding another tool could be problematic. We do know that one is prized. Does leave four mm -hmm. copies, but they're so, so important now. Big Poke Gear happening here. Can he find the chip? Let's see. Seven cards from the top. Any supporter can be added to the hand. Looking specifically for the Arvin. Let's take a look. Does he find it? I don't I own know. No boss, boss no Corus, Arvin. No Arvin is found. It may come down to an Iono play here, most likely. Wow. And I mean, now Logan at risk of the very same thing that Sakuya was in risk. Logan doesn't have any backup Iron Thorns right now. Only plays four Not good. Pokemon total. One of them is prize. One okay, yeah, so the deck does from the four. That only leads That's one only how they run. And two Iron Thorns Basically, if this Iron Thorns is knocked out, it's over for Logan. Find the That's one of the win conditions. You need Pokemon on the bench. Else, right? because it doesn't help him Hammer could the delay it, Big potentially, not really. Nope. And, and it, it fails anyways. Tails, and that is really not the time Logan would even want to use the Crushing Hammer. He'd love to use it to get rid of an energy on a benched Pokemon, since he's hoping to knock this Pokemon out anyway. And it actually does look like Logan is going to be able to go for the Professor's Research. That was hiding in the hand there. Thought it was going to be an Iono, but no. Research will discard this hand. Draw seven fresh Wait, what do you think Judge, right? Needs to find... A basic Pokemon and that future booster energy capsule can oh, dig okay. with the focus stop if I guess necessary. Not. I think he would like I to he had already played a supporter. Deck plays tons of supporter cards, tons of energy that he would not. That must have been really necessary, or I'm not sure what know. happened. Here we go, seven cards. Is there an out to a basic Pokemon? There. It, oh, there is the Iron Thorns, and another hammer. No future booster energy capsule. It might come down to another hammer here. Is it worth it for Logan to play that card? He that will definitely. I would play that card if I was Logan. Okay, potentially he is. Potentially slow down your opponent. You know they. Oh, oh another fail! Tails. That's, That's three like three tails. tails. Yep, three for tails. Logan, so far in this final Logan match. the Two heart of the game. card. I have not been on your yep. side. Chooses not to use the lost vacuum to get rid of the wow. focus stop research. Things not looking good here for our Iron Thorns EX hero. Now, 120. Does need to find a little way weak on that attack. Makes sense why they play the capsule. Even with the capsule, it's sort of weak. As goes down, a nest ball Two is items, gone. counter capture and a nest ball. Nice. Catcher does have darkness energies in hand. Has another explorer's guidance here. 
So should boosting be. things up should be three in the discard pile now, four with the Plate Explorer's Guidance. You beat me to a chip. And there's Beta's three a good there, one. right? And he got that Earthen Vessel, so if there is Not one sure what he's ancient gonna card go for in here, the though. hand, I think Sakuya should be able to pull this off. It will mean discarding a Roaring Moon, but like we've mentioned earlier, Sakuya playing the two copies of the Night Stretcher has ways to get those Pokemon back and potentially will only need two more Roaring Moons to finish out the game outside of the one that he's attacking with at the moment. Yeah, the only thing that would potentially stop that. Yeah, I believe you have to reveal it. Hasn't be wrong about that. Yet, and it's also not in the hand, so. Okay, it looks like he's done reveal it. For Sakuya, and I mean on paper this is a very tough. He's reveal that, right? of your course, your Discord whole, makes um, sense. Your whole idea of stopping rule box abilities as there's any two. Okay. This is the one deck that generally does not rely at all on rule box abilities. So we'll see an attachment for the turn to the bench drawing room, preparing that to be an attacker. In the future, Ancient Booster Energy Capsule being attached as well. How many Ancient cards are there? Is it enough for the KO? It should be enough now. Seven assume. cards, and that should be enough. 140 damage, exactly the perfect exact. match for Sakuya to take the first knockout and the first two prizes Sakuya in looks this game. Like the champion for juniors, at least. Happen here. He doesn't need the booster capsule Either way, anymore. good job, Logan. Second place. KO. Doesn't have a lightning energy there we go. right now, though. Only has the double turbo. Top 32, even. I'm not sure how many he juniors there were, but... Tenacity in order to guarantee the energy a lot of people, I would assume. Basic lightning energy can be found here, as well as the Lost City. That will be pretty strong. Send this Roaring Moon to the Lost Zone. Also, there's a deck for a stadium card and the energy. Gotten rid of with a lost That's a nice vacuum card. at some point. Perhaps why we didn't see lost vacuum. Tenacity, call us tenacity. On the last turn, wanting to ensure that hey, I need to make sure I'm taking out those roaring moons every single time one is attacking into me. Now we know there's exactly seven ancient cards in the discard pile. Getting 16 to get this next knockout could be a steep ask for Sakuya this next turn. So Logan might get one chill turn finally, where he doesn't need to worry about finding too many things, but then the pressure is going to be on him once again. Lost City. What he needs to do, send this Roaring Moon to the Lost Zone. It's going to do a few things, right? It limits That's the number good. of ancient cards in the discard pile. Okay, we do need to make sure that Roaring Moon goes Lost to the Zone, Lost Zone. zone. Yeah, Logan is very much on top the of that. Kuya almost put in the discard. I the card in yeah. the discard pile. <laughs> Logan, it's also a card he will not 100% on recover. top. I forget, yeah, honestly, though. A lot of times, I don't run Lost Zone at all. Whenever my opponent faces a Lost Zone, I always put it in a discard. Nice I don't even have a way to get them back in the discard, let alone the Lost Zone. But with this nest ball, if it grabs another my opponent normally does cash out. It is actually a pretty solid option. Nest ball. Yeah, leaving the backup Roaring Moon ready moon? to go. You have an energy in your hand. You could Baby have moon. both Roaring Moons ready to go so that even if you have a zero card hand, you just get an attack going no matter what setting up the potential to hit KO on the Iron Thorns, so a lot of pressure on Logan to also find another Iron Thorns this coming turn. There is the Sada, two energies attached, three cards now drawn. Looks like Superior Energy Retrieval is in the hand. That's a way that you can discard Oof. a few ancient cards. Pokestop does bump the stadium and also will be used. There's the Defiance Band going down, Palpad and the Nest Ball added to the hand. What is there now? Maybe like nine ancient cards in the good discard one, good pile. Good one, good one. Good stop yeah, right there by Sakuya. Don't Four, think Sakuya is going to be able to get to six. More 16 total needed. Yeah, yeah he's not going to be able. I though. doubt he'll be able two to. But Sakuya will still be in a good spot. You don't need much help. You're fine with the two hit KO. You've seen that Logan is struggling to get a knockout at this point in time. I think it's nine I saw. Not 100% sure, but judge double checking the map. Be setting up the perfect to hit KO, and Logan will need to find crushing hammers and potentially more than his current lost vacuum if he wants to get He's got in three tails and roll from crushing hammer, so you'll need to find That's crushing hammer and find time. the heart of the cards. Find them very, very soon. Lost vacuum in the hand the is side. nice. That will get rid of the ancient. Booster Energy Capsule on the active, and the Arvin can guarantee the future Booster Energy Capsule is found on Logan's side to shore up the KO. He would like to find the replacement stadium if he could. Would love to find some crushing hammers at some point, but priority number one is finding another Iron Thorns EX. Hammer yeah. oh, I think he took and the, the boost from the capsule. Cards, actually. Yeah, that's so he great. has that already in the hand. That's why we're seeing this crushing hammer, but Sakuya's hand is 
huge. You have to imagine there's another energy right there. Indeed, the Iron Thorns was taken off of the prize cards. So Logan is able to use this Arvin for the Crushing Hammer. Could be a pretty impactful flip here. It looks like it will yeah, just Puglia be the one with the cut. Hammer. I don't see another one Good in cut. the hand. And here we go. Logan would really like to see this in order to keep himself in this game. Ooh, We've off the table again. All over the place. And it hit the dice, here too. Here comes the next flip. And it is off again. again. That's like, what, three times in a row now? I mean, we do have well, not in a row, but at least three times it goes it off to you. Be, uh, a problem, but yeah, it's funny. Very a lot of energy here happening here. No. <laughs> oh, so cool you stopped it. Does land on a tail. We're nope. having a riff flip, flip of the interruption, and, and it it's a head. Slow nice. Go. Finally, get a heads here in this second. Logan game. may actually be able to pull it off if he has Lost City in hand. I'm not sure if he does. Right. Energy or Lost Vacuum. Lost City and Lost Vacuum would be perfect though. Vacuum. Okay, I do see the vacuum. Not sure if he has the city. On the charge as well. We're gonna see the ancient booster energy capsule hit the lost zone instead of the boss. Of all, therefore, not adding to the damage. BTE for turn on the bench. Vengeance fletching will do. Capsule. The attachment of the double turbo energy. Okay, no lost city, no stadium, but nice still well. good overall. Logan Bailey able to take another prize card does tie up the race. Both players with four prizes remaining. Does Sakuya have the energy to respond here? And can he establish another Roaring Moon on the bench? Looks like it will be Pokestop discarding a Flutter Main and also a Pokestop adding an Earthen Vessel, I believe it was, to the hand. Now a Nest Ball being played. Is that last Roaring Moon in the deck? No. No Moon. No roaring might be moon right here, I prize, think. There might I be. Guess. There's two in the discard. And there's one in the lost zone, so one. Oh, okay, okay. Left, That's all of them, yeah. That's the last really one. Difficult to take down right now, thanks to that ancient booster energy capsule. And He's trying. He got to get the discard ones out somehow. One night stretcher. He is going to need to find another night stretcher. Does at least guarantee. The I'm not sure what that card does. This turn with this Sada's vitality. That's a new from card the from the new set. I think really read it. Gonna be, can Sakuya draw Does he get it from the discard or something that allow you to get a Pokemon? In the deck? Does he have it in his hand? He's got a lot of cards, that is for sure. He has so many card chip. I mean, I think at this point, you okay, could even consider benching a flutter attach. main to attach to it perhaps, but Sakuya just going for it, attaching the three Put energy. a Pokemon oh, or basic card. Oh, it does, okay. Wow, that, that is, is massive, very good. It. Well, yeah, while you could bench a Fluttermane if you needed to, Roaring Moon is definitely the better target. Sakuya able to find it. And nice. he finds a Dark Patch to prep an energy on it. Can attach an energy, I believe, for turn as well to fully power this Pokemon up. Looks like there's none left in the deck. Very small hand, the though. Hand? There's Hopefully he's got one in the hand because he needs one more. Price, there should be perhaps he one does need one more. A few more in the hand. This is probably also adding to the... Ancient card Can't count quite in see. the discard pile to make oh, sure got that. that you are able to one kill the next yes. and final okay. iron thorn. Superior energy retrieval puts a few more ancient cards in the discard pile, also gets back the energy card, thins out some cards that Sakuya would not nice. want to draw off of something like a judge. That could be one of Logan's few paths back into this game. Sakuya certainly in the driver's seat right now. But it is far from over. Still could be anyone's game to take. Sakuya has set up the end game. I believe Sakuya Logan has this. Response. It I mean, Logan. Down to that final crushing hammer. Two crushing prizes hammer, okay, left yeah. for Sakuya. What will Logan Bailey do? I just counted 14 ancient cards in Sakuya's discard pile. So, Lost City top deck for Logan. Pretty good card to find. Crucially needs Lost Vacuum to make sure that these two cards... Well, that he gets a knockout and Going also for the poke stop here. Gets rid of a future booster capsule and an energy and an Arvin. No Dage. sound to help him. It's gonna come down to this job. He went for the high roll. At this point in time, four crucial cards needs two very specific ones: ancient booster energy capsule and the last copy of Lost Vacuum. Judge. To even try to stay in this game. Good luck, Logan. Two specific ones. The hammer there would be is nice. Also, a future booster energy capsule in the prize cards. Still, I think one was milled from an earlier Pokestop, so there may only be one future booster energy capsule in left the capsule. In the yes, deck. he needs a capsule as well. I forgot. Oh, he needs a capsule in the hammer. Logan, big four cards. 
not out of it yet, right? But then off of four cards, Sakuya would only need to find two ancient cards in the discard pile to then get the clean KO with Vengeance Fletching. Let's see what these four cards are, Chip. Box Vacuum and the Future Booster Energy Capsule. What does he have? There's the Future Booster Energy Capsule, but no Lost okay. Vacuum. No Lost Vacuum. Well, at least he does get the KO. Great cards, but not very useful right now. No, there's the no KO. It doesn't there's even no get the knockout, yeah. Oh, it doesn't get the KO? Yep. 140 damage will be placed on this Roaring Moon. Sakuya was oh, yeah, because of the capsule. Quickly, so yeah. I think he's got it. We may have yeah, yeah, the, the capsule gives him extra help. I forgot. Doesn't get the KO. Like we mentioned earlier, we'll need capsule on the baby moon. You said you counted 14 at I the end of last turn. 14, so. Can he discard two more ancient cards? There's a future booster energy capsule. If Sakuya can get the one hit yeah. KO, is over. I think I saw energies, another capsule, and a Greninja, so. Might just see Logan survive for one more turn. Uh, did he just attack? I think yeah. he may have just attacked. Yeah. Yep, I think he attacked. Damage off that vengeance. Whoa, hold on. Logan's Logan like, let me Bailey do the math. The game this turn. If Sakuya just attacked, Logan Bailey has a chance to win. If he finds Lost Vacuum, he'll knock out the active Pokemon by sending that tool card to the Lost Zone. Logan Sakuya put in cards that aren't ancient. Only Pokemon in play, which I'm in mistake. Withstand a hit. From the Iron me. Thorns EX. This is a massive opening. Logan Bailey given a second chance here. That would be crazy, Chip. I think I saw a, Pokemon uh, music. An Arvin in Logan's Pokemon camp. battle this music playing. Little Arvin, boom, 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 low health sound. I, I think so. I think it was I'll see how I remember. I'll add it. Arvin. If he's got Arvin, that can find the lost vacuum. That would win Logan Bailey this game. Let's see the draw for turn. Yeah, there's, there's the Arvin. Arvin. There is the Arvin. And, and there's the lost, lost, that is the lost vacuum. That gets rid of the tool card. That roaring moon goes GG's. down. The other one is promoted. Wow. Logan Bailey takes the KO. We're going to game three. And Sakuya had an ancient booster. Dos vacuum. In his hand. I think oh, a bit guessing the prize. And then the other one KO. with the knockout. Perhaps got him a little confused. No Pokemon Logan in the bench. Logan. All odds. A win oh, is a win. Good game. The Look at that style. Right, let me fast forward. Logan Bailey, champion. The tension is high. Let's get down all to right. the table. It's time for game three. And Sakuya Winner takes all. Best of five, yes. game three. Yeah, no, no. Best of three, I mean, not best of five. Definitely not work. Will not provide extra cards on Lurzvin. I game, have no idea what that does. Prize cards could be crucial to help Logan close out a game a little I bit earlier. I believe that's that one. Uh, to perhaps stated perhaps online very. The Pokemon itself could be trouble. Model mount. Flip the script, I believe. Yep. One professor says that uh, one of your Pokemon knocked out. Ancient booster capsule prized as well. And over on Logan's side, one Iron Thorns crucially prized, but that's okay, because you can only use three total. Yeah, from Sakuya's side, you may look at those prizes and be like, yeah, I mean, it's nothing too bad. One of, uh, you know, cards that he plays multiple copies of, but if you really look at it, there were five ancient cards in those prize cards. That could really limit Sakuya's reach in order to get to one hit KO numbers. Yeah, and we saw last game, he was I agree, short that's of a lot of ancient cards. The follow -up Iron Thorns, Five out of right? six. And that's not something you expect to, to happen in the late game, but Sakuya missed that crucial KO, and that allowed Logan to be able to run away with the game now. Sakuya will have guaranteed two turns to set up without any sort of pressure from Logan as Logan attaches one energy per turn. We talked about this yesterday, right? Iron Thorns being very strict about playing by the rules, and the rules only let you attach one energy per turn. After the nest fall brings down a roaring moon to the bench, it will be the use of Pokestop. Does discard another Pokestop? That's not super strong because that means that. I would say it was worth it. He did get rid of another Pokestop, but. Uh, Lost City, right? With the one Pokestop being put oh, in. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Lost City. And the other one he doesn't want to bump that, though. But a pretty welcome sight will be that earthen vessel being used to discard a darkness energy, puts one down to be able to use with potentially dark patch, potentially with Professor Zada's vitality, and will also guarantee the attachment this turn. Yeah, only one Pokestop left for Saku. That could spell trouble dark patch. later down the line. Okay. We see the dark patch be utilized immediately. We're gonna attach one basic energy from the discard to one of your bench. that yeah. ready to retreat, and pass. we see the pass over onto Logan. Yeah, I'm not sure how much I like the dark patch use, to be honest, because if your opponent uses Judge, you may not be able to use Sada on the other end of your Judge. I guess it works out okay with the Pheasantipity being attached to in the active spot because you can always retreat that energy, but what if your opponent plays some Crushing Hammers, right? 
Yeah, crushing hammer. Some kind of Obviously mistranslation very, very there. Dark patches, like Looks like by Logan. A little preemptive, Nicole, yeah. perhaps. Logan asking how many cards were in Sakuya's hand, and because of the language barrier, a little bit, Sakuya almost interpreted that as if he was Makes uh, sense. passing okay. the turn. <laughs> Yeah, not going to be the case, that but happened. Logan Something finds like perhaps the best support at a play on turn US, one of Japanese, the game. two very Judge. different languages. Both players will shuffle their hand into the deck, and they each will only get four cards. I think the main thing Logan Bailey will be looking for on the other end of this is a way to get rid of Sakuya's stadium, because that's the big thing you're trying to shut down, your opponent's ability to have access to their resources, have access to the rest of their deck. And Pokestop is a pretty vital way for Sakuya to find new cards to work with. Yeah, new cards to work with, more damage output, right? Discarding those uh, flutter, flutter mains and great calls that are not very useful at this point in time. So yeah, Pokestop, such a crucial card. And especially you Let's see what Logan gets here. Another one. You counter this one, they likely only have one left. Total. Iron Iono. Pretty solid okay. draw there for Logan Bailey. Finds that energy lotto, a card that we've seen come up a few times in the history. Energy lotto, okay. That's Pokemon. real good. I didn't cash it. Um, and also another Iron Thorns. Just a pass now over two seconds. He didn't even play it. I don't believe Sakuya has any hand disruption. So it kind of makes sense. Have. Don't want to get that intel out. Initially only finding counter catcher. Logan feels pretty safe on the one hit KO. Okay, Fezendipity retreats. So Kuyo does get the one hit KO though, it's over. Three cards. We're gonna at least Highly unlikely. An attack. Definitely gonna see a little bit of damage. The wrong one hitting the discard pile. Not ideal, but does add up to the damage for Vengeance Fletching. I also see another Earthen Vessel discarding Fluttermane, establishing another Roaring Moon. So Sakuya off to the races, getting a really good start here to start applying pressure. Now, with no benched Pokemon in play, Sakuya could technically win this turn, but getting 16 Ancient cards in the discard pile would be pretty difficult from this point. He's already played a supporter, so there's no Explorer's Guidance. He's already used an Earthen Vessel. But off of that five-card draw after the Judge, he's found a way to stabilize extremely nicely. Let's see how much damage is done here. Attach and Three, attack, it looks six, like. So 130 damage total, setting up the two-hit KO perfectly. And now it's on Logan to try to knock this Roaring Moon Easy to out a KO here. and have another Iron Thorns, which I do believe he already has in his hand. Iron Thorns is found. There's the Energy Lotto in the hand in order to dig for a basic energy. Top seven cards will be shown here to Logan, and he'll be able to take... Good luck on the high roll, Logan. He finds they're not just basic energy. He can also find those double turbo energies, but in this spot... Just Ooh, the basic nice. ...has a couple to choose from. We'll grab that copy, and now only needing a future booster energy capsule in order. So, cool, you're getting a translation. Out. Plenty of energy to choose from. Of course, the lightning is the priority, and then I don't think Logan had an Arvin in his hand. Did have a Poke here, though, and Arvin is the most common supporter in his deck. So, you have to imagine he's going to try and utilize or find that in order to guarantee this knockout and ask more from his opponent in terms of responding. So much damage already on this first Iron Thorns. Logan Poke gear. for the Poke Gear 3.0. What would be the best support see. here for I think Logan he will win Arvin. Turn? Gotta be the Arvin. Gotta find that future booster energy capsule. Don't Ooh. find the Arvin and the future Arvin. booster energy capsule in there as well. So great find here. Then now, shuffle, the shuffle, gonna go right back in. Makes sense. Be a crushing hammer. Try to Arvin, supporter for turn. Energy force them to have a professor I just realized they have uh, markers. Next turn. Energy supporter and retreat markers in the bottom left and bottom right hand corners. Immediately. That would have been helpful earlier. Something looks like yeah, Logan doing just a little prize checking. Yeah, is this actually his first deck search? I didn't even realize he's making sure he knows exactly what he has access to. One iron thorns in the prize. Yeah, we'll Prizing. likely quickly realize he only has uh, two iron thorns or one iron thorns he left in the deck. Has one in his hand, one in play, and probably checking the future booster energy capsules as well, just to make sure he can boost that damage just a tiny little bit, 20 crucial damage in order to get those knockouts on the Roaring Moon. We do see the cards being grabbed. One item card, one tool card, of course, future booster energy capsule, the choice, and the crushing hammer. This is gonna be a massive flip. These type of flips for this deck can be all the difference in winning or losing games. 
You really just want to slow down your opponent as much as possible, and a big part of it will be the use of this crushing hammer. Here we go. Let's see that roll of the dice. Doesn't get any more crucial than at the game three of the final Logan, I believe you have rolled chip. three tails in a row and the hammer. Maybe a so good luck getting this head. That Logan has ever seen. Here is the flip. And I cannot see that. Off screen tails. slightly. It is a tails. Is tails. A tails One always there. fails. Logan will be able to take That's the four in a row now, Logan. Transfer the double Sage. to the bench. Iron Thorns EX very well. At least he got the we'll one hit KO. A little bit of very nice. To the next incoming Roaring Boot. No Lost City. That would have been good. Able to stabilize so far. Another hammer in hand now, actually, from the prizing. This knockout locked up. I think the only thing he would really That's good. Like to prioritize here I mean, potentially good. He's got four fails in a row. On the bench, something he's sure he'll be able to promote. Perhaps an Ancient Booster Energy Capsule would be really strong here. Looks like, oh, can't use Pheasantipity. Nope, nope, can't use Pheasantipity. We almost saw that <laughs> flip the script. That would have been a really bad thing to do here in the, the final match. It will be Ultra Ball, though. This can find the other Roaring Moon still in the deck. I love how Logan has been very on top of all of his opponent's actions as well, right? Preventing anything wrong from going at the final of the World Championships, and it's really great to see all this clean play from both players. Absolutely, must respect the sportsmanship from both of these players. They're here to just enjoy the game and just happen to find themselves in the highest stake match. Of Sada, very supporter young for turn. Lives. We do see Sada attaching Double. the two darkness energy from the discard pile to each of those ancient three. Pokemon three cards being drawn. There is already two energy on the Super active retrieval. and night stretcher as well. Ooh, that night stretcher, another good card. Moon. Not looking good for Logan. Attach an energy to another Roaring Moon, so you have two options to close out the game. I think you would run risk, run a risk of, you know, spreading yourself a little too thin. Sakuya recognizing that, and will. I'm surprised Logan didn't play that other moon. Fletching, knowing that uh, cards, jumping ahead I mean, Sakuya didn't play that other yeah, moon, knowing that Logan has all that hand disrupt. Benching it immediately does mean he won't be able to have the flexibility of perhaps choosing an energy later down the line. But of course, that's decision that Sakuya has taken. He knows his risk. He knows what he wants to try to do. And now it's on Logan to find yet another future booster energy capsule, another lightning energy, and perhaps more What's crushing hammers that? To, to, to try to disrupt the, Is for the one of aggression KO? that we're seeing from Sakuya right now. Yeah, those ancient cards are starting to build up very, I don't very think it's enough for the one AKO, though. Off return. Is that Colris does have a crushing hammer, also an Iono in hand, Come another on. huge flip. Oh, and we see a uh, heads from Logan. His reaction says it all. It is a tail. Wow. No energy like removed now. from Sakuya's side of the board. Five or four. I've lost track. But all fails. Tail flip for those crushing hammers. Two energies crucially not removed. And now five big cards here for Logan. Doesn't have a backup Iron Thorns. Doesn't even have the lightning energy at no this cut. point. Logan off to the cut. And has two future Most people don't cut there. I want to cut there either, really. As one is still hiding in the prize. You card. do it. Technically, you know, offer it. Card and no. Lost City, at least. Will mean Logan does not get if he can get the one to KO. KO. And he doesn't oh, he can't. Pokemon on no the capsule. Bench. No way to attack, even, unfortunately. Yeah, no, no basic lightning, lightning energy. energy. Wow. Yeah. Not looking good. The Kuya. Oh, my goodness. That is not if you can get Logan the KO here. Well, even if you can't no get the KO. At all. And Sakuya has started to pick up. Logan is very here. far back. He's recognizing this is a great situation for me. Can he reach for the KO? Can he get to 16 ancient cards in the discard pile? Sakuya crucially top deck the Apex secret box. Oh, my you goodness. Advocated for chips. Secret box, the A spec of choice. We have not seen it yet in this final match. You can only use it if you discard three other cards from your hand. Two We're going to start with that focus stop. Two ancient cards going down. Sakuya keeping track of the count here. Needs to get to 16 total. He can win the world championships on this turn. Pokegear 3.0. Is there an ancient supporter able to be found? No, it is just the boss's orders. Bosses have to poke here. The deck quite a bit. Can that secret box? Now what do you want him? him? I wish we knew exactly how many are in the discard pile. What's nice about the secret box as well is after discarding some cards, you can go get an ancient supporter and then discard it with something like an earthen vessel, which is the item card you could take off secret box. There is a pretty high chance Sakuya can reach for the one hit KO this turn. Counting uh -oh. the cards in the discard pile. Secret Looks box. Like it's 10 at this Doss. time. Three more going down, boosting. Two more, sorry. Boosting it up to 12. That's from Twilight. And he discard four more. 
Ever thought of using secret boxes, the moon, with the moon engine, but it makes sense. Yeah, that's three more potentially. He actually may be able to make the one hit KO. If he does, he'll be the champion. 2024 TCG Junior Champion. That will be 15 down, meaning that Sokuya needs to find just one single ancient card from the top six cards of the deck in order to become the world champion. Here we go, six cards, no ancient card yet, There's but two. the pair will be discarded now. Sakuya oh, Sakuya! Discard the ancient cards. Wants He's to make getting nervous, faking, He's happy. As as He's counting, double checking, crossing moment. his T's, dotting the eyes. I think he got it. To become the Pokemon TCG Juniors Division World Champion. Great game, great game, what Logan. Game. You played well. Uh, I'll leave all the interviews. I'll edit them all at the end. I'll leave them at the end for a TCG, VGC, etc. Pokemon Go. I'll leave them at the end. And I'm going to put this in the front for the edit. TCG first, baby. Well, Unite was first because it was a day earlier and I had time. TCG number one. What an exciting cap off to what all right uh brb for all of our junior division competitors for the next one guys well played by both players in this extreme they're gonna have six prize cards each all for right players these are what are starting up out right now these cards are locked up in no idea where they're playing let's find out and taking these prize cards i own no prize arvin prize ultra ball there, two grass energies for evan could be Ooh. a little awkward reggie grego <laughs> You get those energies rolling, it can Evan. lead to some good times with the Teal Mask Ogre Pond. With the Reggie Drago. Yeah, that is true. This could be potentially a little bit damaging here, but at least we have one on each side. And the Japanese Evan. player Hopefully looks like he's playing some kind of ancient. Match, taking these early knockouts. That's it fine now, like let's we're see. Getting started here. Let's get some hype in the crowd for this match. Kicking off Baby here Moon again, possibly. Division World back Championships. We're starting off strong here. Haruku going to be going first. Ultra Ball to discard that Drifloon nice and early on. And that Dark Energy Monkey Dory. Oh, Monkey Dory. Pokemon. Yeah, Monkey Dory, of course, with that Dark Energy, allows to move those damage counters from your side of the field to your opponents. Really start to cause some disruption, save some hit points on your side. Does not really help when that Dark Energy hits the discard pile. You're not bringing it back with the Gardevoir EX. Yeah. It's... One of those few energies, and we already saw one in the prize card. So if Monkey Dory wants to get into the mix, there's just one final dark energy remaining. Ooh, yeah, we're going to have to see if uh, that can be drawn or somehow shuffled back in if that is an option. Tatsugiri is coming down off of this Ultra Ball. Uh, what? How pivotal do you think Tatsugiri is in this strategy for Haruku? Yeah, Tatsugiri is a Pokemon that we typically have only seen from the Japanese list. And yeah. It, Thank goodness we do, because you have that opportunity to find that perfect... A lot better of a shuffle, that's for sure. Ones in the active spot, you look at those top six, and maybe you can attract some customers. We need to find any help here we can. All right, let's Compared look at the six. We need a supporter in this hand to establish this initial turn that's here. That's ah, Attract customers. No course, supporters. Stage. In the prize cards. Top in six, know, you get well, a supporter. Uh, as the Arvin for Haruku, so maybe uh, limiting that Tatsugiri attract customers ability just a bit there, but did we get a look at the opening hand here for Haruku? Are we working with anything else to, to see here? Because the dark energy's gone, Monkey Dory's in play, but it can't use its ability without that dark energy. Oh, Tatsugiri not netting us anything. It's just going to be That's not what pass. we like to see. Over to Evan Pavelski, and we've talked about this deck so much. It can absolutely pop off potentially, starting here with some teal dancing. We're getting groovy out here, Kyle. We're teal dancing into an additional card. Let's see what the starting hand is for Evan. Of course, going second does have access to a supporter, and that's going to be the Iono. Iono. You saw your opponent did not have the hand, but you don't have the hand either. And it's just a, a play the Iono, give your opponent those free cards, and maybe you can establish 
that pivotal Pokemon. You need that Reggie Drago to start things off, and there is the Ultra Ball. Very you nice. might as well throw away that Kieran while you're at it. Yeah, that's a pretty nice selection there, that Reggie Drago. I'm sure having to come I'm out. Not sure who here, would have this actually. I'm still thinking here. Are these dragon Pokemon hitting the discard pile? This is the entire strategy of the Reggie Drago deck. It copies the moves of these dragon Pokemon that are in the discard pile. So not only is it a very easy choice for a discard to the yes, it does. Ball, um, but it's also giving I'm not sure exactly what he's Pokemon running dragon wise to set up as well. The is there anything new in Fable that I'm missing? going down for Evan. Not the best. We would love to see another dragon. Again, I haven't played there, since Fable came out. Trout of Fable. At this point in time, we would have loved to see the capitalization there off of that uh, absolutely brutal starting hand for Haruku. But Evan, like you said, just has to do what he's got to do. And well, I'm excited to see what this hand now looks like. A fresh six cards for Haruku. It might on be the other another side. fresh six cards, just depending on what is in the hand. Perhaps that Squawkabilly EX, a Pokemon that you could incorporate Ooh. on that opening turn. Obviously, a great inclusion for the sole purpose of drawing more cards, seeing more resources, and potentially finding that setup that you're looking for. We'd love to see Reggie Drago V, uh, v along with more Teal Mask Note Pokemon. taking. I like what I see. Basic setup, and we're not seeing it just yet. Not just yet, but can we get there? Of course, Evan is going to take a moment here to identify all the resources that are in the deck. You see the notepad there on the side, jotting down what is in the prize cards. Every resource counts here, especially as we saw three energy in the prize cards for Evan as well. So making sure to keep track of all the finite resources you need to carry out these uh, turns throughout the game. Yeah, of course, the, the grass energies. To kind of sucks. He has both grass energy. Are so helpful, but the fire energy needed as a requirement of that attack for your v and the fire Pokemon. is so needed correct yeah ready drago yes you have plenty of ways to search it with the one fire two grass earlier sooner than later please yes please please yeah there's only three fire energy one of them caught up in the prize cards right now evan does get that reggie drago v of course for the turn here which is great we're going to see the energy switch off of that teal mask ogre pawn moving that grass energy onto that reggie drago v starting to build up to its uh, attack here in the future, but we're over on the other side of the field now for the second turn here for Haruku, and we're gonna Ooh. see buddy, it's buddy going Puffin. a lot nicer yeah. than the last turn did. This Replace Battle Pass VIP. <laughs> it Rest is in peace. Indeed, we're about to feed a couple of Pokemon Broken here. Card. Unfair stamp for the A spec. I see. Are the Pokemon you're targeting Very down nice. with a buddy, buddy Puffin? So Getting two are what we're wanting to see from Haruku. <laughs> I mean, we saw Teleportation with burst. turn there, just two cards in hand. Is I track customers as he used it. V on the other side. This oh, yeah, turn's um, not over. Guys. Arvin helping out. Hopefully that energy is in the hand to go along with this. This could be quite a turn. See those Good evolutions. Arvin. Earlier, come on down. Exactly. That is what you're seeing Another here. Look puffin. at this. This hand Manaphy was and Ralph Spence. Here's the Arvin searching out that technical machine as well as that Buddy Buddy Poffin. Here we show where I'm confused. That's not sure we show. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm going to fix it overlay. Veil ability against damage on the bench. Prevent all damage. Joining us. We are That's very good. Especially against Reggie Drago more than likely. Everybody, it could get very dangerous. Forget dragon, unless you hit the bench. Oh, uh, dragon pole. Fully set dragon pole, unless you hit the bench. Pretty sure. Back to back, and not only Man, if he will that, prevent we that. also have attract some customers. That's right. It's not. Not working, sure if Evan even has Dragon Ball, but more than likely he okay. does, or he should. Cook something new. Oh, look at that, though. The Tatsugiri not only just attracting the customers, but yeah, not having a great business day there with the supporters, but that nice. technical machine evolution is huge here. Going to attach that energy to be able to use it. It's going to discard at the end of the turn, but that is a okay because we have the refinement ability now unlocked for the next turn here for Haruku from those Curlia on the bench now. Yeah, Tatsu did its job. Found the Curlia. You have the opportunity to get aggressive with the Gardevoir next turn. But Attach now it is all the ability. Find a response. Field dance. Okay, That's I forgot what it was called. Card, I like the new How risky do you get? Ooh, we do like pink cards, but Evan seems to be going going he got his a little bit of a pickle here. It's As the professor's research to follow this, but with the Prime Catcher, do you target down a Pokemon like that Manaphy? Mm. Do you target down a Curlia and play it a little safer? 
We'll have to see. It looks like debating that strategy here, Kyle. What does he want to do with this prime catcher? A-spec cards, those bright pink cards. You can only have one of any type in your Don't deck. Don't want to get a uh, route, so it's a teleportation burst. The A-spec here for, That's for Evan. Sure. It allows you to uh, gust your opponent's Pokemon into the active as well as switch your own. But uh, just looking through the resources first here on both ends of the discard piles before Evan makes that decision. Yeah, the discard pile doesn't tell enough of the story just yet. Exactly. There's not that... Prime Cash, I would assume he's going for uh, Manaphy, okay. Love to see in this mix, but Manaphy or the even uh, the Perlia. Maybe but yeah, the man can make sense. Tempo, crazy okay. with beautiful, the beautiful savior. We'll have to see what happens. Fresh seven good cards luck. off of this professor's research, getting us some help here. A what grass, do we see, Kyle? Ultra ball, oh, earth and vessel. vessel. There's a little Two more earth and vessels. Ultra ball can go into the Reggie. Udra, I believe in him. V star that leads into a maybe risky legacy star but if it found canceling cologne that is kiram wiping out everything yeah that is so dangerous here and these are the turns we were waiting to see if they would happen here from evan this could be huge potentially but we need to put those pieces together the canceling cologne a key card it's a one copy canceling. in this deck for evan it would cologne. allow him to shut down that Manaphy there and then wreak havoc on Haruku's board on the other side with that Kurum that is already in the discard pile uh, copied Kurum, wait, let me see. Discard on energy, this attack does 110. Oh, snipe three in the bench for 110. That is better than Dragon Pulp. Kurum. Wait, is Kurum from the new set? Let me go back one second. I'm curious. Thing. Finals here from the seniors. I believe that's a new set. Okay, it makes sense. V -Star. But I have not seen that card before. I believe that is from Try to Fable. Could find a little more help too. Maybe. Let me know below. Let me know. See here, not able to utilize that pheasant. Boss's orders being discarded with the Ultra Ball looks like. We're gonna have to see some teal mask action. Ultra Ball is discard bosses and earthen vessel. Be a discard of the boss's orders as well as that earthen vessel going into the discard. All of these resources being accounted for here by Evan. Giddy up. Evolution makes sense. Evolution the V Star. Down. We have the Reggie Drago V Star now. That is one more piece of the puzzle, and that Legacy Star ability is huge here, Kyle. Yep, this is a, a big moment now for Evan. Do you do you full send at this point? <laughs> Legacy Star discards a lot of resources. This is your one ability scary. to use for the entire game. Throw away seven resources, but you get to look through that discard pile and find any two cards. And if you throw away that clone, you get it right back. Exactly. It's a way, the Legacy Star being used as a way to recycle resources. It's a way to clutch those cards toward the end of the game. If you are able to save it up here, it is a key piece to the puzzle here for Evan. But we're going to have to see what this turn brings us here. All right, well, we have the energy now on that Reggie Drago. V-Star, it's fully charged up here for some Apex Dragon action. Safety first is oh, going to be the measure. Nice and consistent. Nice and calm there with the Suian Gudra laying down that rolling iron. Very safe play here to uh, preserve those hit points. And your opponent hasn't shown you anything just yet. They can draw a few more cards, of course, with the Curlia, but they have to reestablish that mana fee or yep. else the Kirim could go crazy with the Trifrost again. Exactly. You're almost forcing your Does he have a way to get the Manaphy back out? Reprotect themselves here. Oh, okay. Right away. We do see the evolution into the Gardevoir. Very nice. PDX, and that Night Stretcher, a brand Night new Stretcher. card from Shrouded Fable. And look that card how is pretty good. It plays into this deck. Monster Reborn. Pokemon or Kinda. basic energy from your discard pile. Yu -Gi -Oh terms. straight into your hand. So that is perfect here for Haruku. Haruku Ghana at Joker. I think Haruku's gonna win. See a Pokemon like that, Tatsugiri, and you look at the rest of oh, the at least win this round. Safe and have the Manaphy. Plenty of energy is being thrown. Unless, uh, uh, let me see, Evan, what do you use? Prime Casher, A spec, the card of the boss. Like this? Do you, do you confuse I'm not sure if Evan has a cancer code on. That could actually be very, very good if he has some one. Relevant damage, but that is your main Pokemon to get your engine rolling. Yeah, exactly. We are seeing the strategy be pulled together here from Haruku. I love the, the just 
how composed he is as well, going through all these actions, knowing exactly what needs to be done here on these turns, getting those psychic energy into the discard pile to be able to re-accelerate them out. There's gonna be some damage counters going around, so it has to be very careful where all of these energies are placed in our future turns. Of course, this refinement ability, huge. You discard, you draw two cards. We're gonna be drawing a ton of cards here on Haruku's side. Lots of resources to work with here, but like you said, Kyle, what's the strategy? We're gonna do an attract customers once again. Can we actually get a support? No supporter time? again, no. Yeah, they just, Sage. <laughs> it's not working. The, the business model is struggling, but we've seen plenty of cards here and that's just fine. Yes, I know, yeah, that is what this deck does. It sees a lot of cards. It gives you access to all the strategies you'd like to carry out as soon as you can get this set up. And Haruku is getting there here, Gardevoir EX. Already out on the field. We're utilizing all of these abilities now. They've all been used. We have the retreat oh, force. Monkey Dory. Here we go. Look at this. Freaking We're havoc. Hit the confusion one time for the people. Oh, you love to see it. The mind bends. Not only does this Monkey Dory have that Adrena Brain ability, but it can also use mind bend. 60 damage, and then your opponent is confused. Of course, there was that Hisuian Gudra mm -hmm. Vsar last turn. I but like yeah, that. You see that Ripped right? a card like that for Vsar. confusion. It's not damage, but it is looking quite confused. Never seen it done like that before. It What's going on? That must be the official <laughs> way to do it, I guess, or? Upside down. Quite literally. Language barriers make it <laughs> yes. simpler. Help indeed. Let's see if Evan is able to get out of this situation after that monkey dory came into play, added some confusion to the field. Going to start us off with a nest ball. It's going to get us this mute. Plus, every three costs of the Rego Beastar. Which is a nice pivot option uh, to have on your bench here for the future for Evan. Yeah, we've seen the prime catcher already in the discard pile. Like Genome star, hacking is also very nice. Use that ability. In the you could find that prime catcher and move around. There's one switch as well. This is a three retreat cost Pokemon. So <laughs> flipping it's through this would be scary. That's a big boy right there. Right. Three retreat. That is huge. And that is one obstacle that Haruku has identified to put in Evan's way here. And I'm excited to see how this turns out. I'm wondering how close this was to their previous matchup. If it was kind of the same strategies used and how Evan was able to uh, get around them back then. But Ultra Ball is going to be used here now. Dragon Ball yeah, makes sense. The, for, for Evan, honestly, he may not have wanted to play the Prime Catcher, but it had Professor's Research. That one is but for six. Sure you know your opponent goes for a confusion strategy. It's a venture of six. Those resources. You make sure that you can use the switch, use the Prime Catcher, and then maybe Legacy Star, bring those back so you can continue to just attack, 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 and never worry about flipping the coin. <laughs> we've, we've seen the flips at the stage. Sometimes oh, they don't go yeah. your way. yeah, they do not always go your way. That is very true, Kyle. So <laughs> we'd like to avoid those as much as possible. Here we go, Kyle. Ooh, Legacy up. Star. Seven cards here. They're all going to go into the discard pile. But then Evan is able to take two cards out of the discard, oh. put them into the hand. But this is uh, a bit awkward here, huh, Kyle? One of them was the switch. And, of course, the Prime Catcher is... A great card to think about as well. Professors, it looks like. After this uh, is found, I'm Professors, uh, it's reach the prime catcher. There's no more prime catcher. This Pokemon from the active spot. Oof, yeah. This is uh, limited resources here for Evan. We've talked so much about having to keep heavy counts of all your resources to make oh, sure yeah, he's looking at the Discord. Okay. I was confused. I believe he was looking at the Discord. Not sure things where you get put that in the hand. I see here if you're just one card sh short on one of these turns, you could fall behind significantly. But okay, no, Prime no, so Catcher got is going to be used here. That's going to bring up one of these Pokemon on Haruku's side of the board, as well as allowing Evan to get out of this state of confusion on that Ready Drago V-Star. Going to the bench, nice. uh, nullifying that effect. The Mew EX already is able to hard retreat for the turn, thanks to that free retreat cost for Evan as well. Beautiful, yep. Mew, free retreat cost, cost, and you can still retreat. Up. You don't have Only retreat once per turn, but the Prime Catcher does not count as retreat. It's just not Air all. Vessel, not discard the uh, drag. Certainly, Evan will feel comfortable with an attacking Reggie Drago V Star in the active Got spot. Got a fire in the grass. From the Mew. Just continue to build on the board state that you have here. Find those energies and accelerate them to your Pokemon. You've got the Teal Mask to draw an additional resource. The fire energy to the bench to Drago makes sense. And maybe this is going to be a game where you just have to start flipping. 
That is true. You might have to start seeing some flips here. I mean, we like seeing some flips on the stream. It's always a, a bit hype. But it's maybe not me. Yeah. Nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, it's not us. Uh, definitely nerve wracking to get through if you are the person flipping that coin or I guess rolling that dice here. But Evan, now back into the active position with that Reggie Jago V Star. We're going to see an attack here from one of these dragon Pokemon in the discard pile. It's going to be the Dragapult EX this time around. Yeah, and More for the dragon missed bolt. opportunity, I suppose, if you wanted to get the prize cards, if Halucha were available, six to the Manaphy, and maybe- Because yeah, the Manaphy uh, would, would have blocked uh, Kyrium, I believe, so that makes sense. Well, and you can see already, Evan, he's uh, considering using this attack from Dragapult many one more one. times. All of these Pokemon now lined up to be knocked out from six damage counters. Yeah, exactly. Phantom Dive, it is a huge One on the Tashiguri, one Dragapult on the Manaphy. EX. Not only are you hitting 200 damage in the active, which is a huge amount, but you get six damage counters to place onto your opponent's Pokemon in any way that you'd like. That's worth what we're seeing right now from Evan. So going to get that knockout, going to get these damage counters. First prize Ooh, card has Dory. been taken here. Or sorry, second prize card for Evan. Only four more to go to close out this game. But like you said, Kyle, it could get pretty dicey here on both sides of the field because we're seeing those damage counters be placed now on Haruku's side, as well as Evan might uh, be worked into some of those dangerous situations with some confusion down the line. Yeah, and of course, when you take a prize card, <laughs> it leads to maybe some unfair activities on the other side. The unfair stamp waiting in the hands yes. of Ruku. That is dangerous, as we've seen so many resources Unfair already stamp. used by Evan. Does Ruku no have that in hand, though? The active Pokemon. You put them on a two-card hand, we've already seen plenty of grass energies, too. How do you draw out of this? Art yeah, for the stadium, exactly. bumping the Unfair ample. stamp in the trading card game. Anytime unfair is in the title of a card, you know it's probably pretty He good. does have it in hand, I see. So, Haruku choosing that Ultra Ball is a card, uh, Psychic. List specifically. And we're churning out sure what this the other card here with the Ultra Ball discarding a Psychic Energy, as well as one of those technical machines to draw another Pokemon out of the deck in that second Monkey Dory to Monkey Dory list that's pretty consistent now with our Gardevoir players. This list has been heavily refined here no pun intended, Kyle, <laughs> by a lot of our players. And uh, yeah, two monkey is the way to go. Yeah, the one piece that's missing now is those dark energy to go along with it. I know. Move these damage counters away. On so first stamp stand has up. been played. Yes. Dangerous with the Dragapult attack on Haruku. the other side. You can't let the Phantom die. And come up real nice off of exactly. this, actually. Exactly, Phantom dies. Depends so on when Evan draws. You're almost put on a clock here by the Reggie Drago V Star deck. As soon as those damage counters keep mounting and you have no way to move them off with that monkey dory thanks to not having the dark energy one has been discarded one in the prize cards haruku could uh work himself into some dangerous situations here the refinement discarding another psychic energy into two more cards to the hand the hand is pretty stacked here arvin? right now but we're getting even more stacked up with this arvin here as well super rod being drawn as the item card off of the arvin for the supporter for turn yeah, Super Rod is a big help when you're thinking about the dark energy. You see the damage on the Curlia, you need to move that as soon as you can. The draw engine of the deck. Arvin, he got the rod, looks like he's gonna get the Drift Loon routes, and, this and uh, do just that. If there's a way to search dark, dark energy, energy looks like. Great. But we'll also take this cool combo Psychic. here with the yes. Drift Loon Artisan. Sign me up. Yes, wasn't that quite Drift sure that glare. Down onto the bench here, thanks to that Artisan. That is our stadium in play from Haruku. Drift Loon, the little balloon, it's out. It is ready here, Kyle. We love alliteration. Time for a balloon blast. Balloon perhaps. blast, baby. <laughs> balloon blast with the bravery charm. We're getting uh, ready here on the bench uh, for Haruku. Look three, three look like Drift Loon. The only time you want to uh -oh. damage your Pokemon. I think I know what he's going for, yep. <laughs> Give him the HP. <laughs> this well Pokemon does more damage. With the, the more HP it has, potentially. Oh, plenty to go here. I'm not uh, sure if he can one-hit KO the Red Drago V-Star, though, love can he? Love uh, 34 yeah. counter. Oh, my goodness. We didn't even Bravery gives him, there, what, Kyle, 50, I believe? Right now. 
Psychic it may be enough. Bringing all of these psychic energy onto this drift loot in the active position it has to take a ton of damage counters, two for each energy attached here. But you want that damage. It is 30 damage per damage counter on that drift loon. It's got a little Ooh, extra the one here, hit KO. And that is a knockout on the Reggie Drago V Star. Bad it was fully stage. loaded with energy. Now it's fully loaded into the disc. KO the V Star with a basic the one hit KO. On the right side the math doesn't field. add up there. And Evan, Evan is going to have to respond. You got a punch now, back that Mew EX with that free harder bit into the active position. Somehow. Where's this turn going to go from here, Kyle? Well, three cards in hand. One of them one for the two. Ball, probably mapping, mapping. Art is on to look through the deck for basic Pokemon. You don't really need that. And you have ten cards remaining in deck. So finding a solution here seems to be pretty difficult. Of course, you have the Regidrago V-Star to help out. You need one additional energy, but maybe a boss's orders if that were there. You could take a pretty cool combo knockout and take two prize cards, maybe get a little closer. Yeah, unfortunately for Evan, we've had a bit of awkward turns in a lot of these uh, hands that we've seen. The boss's orders, at least one of them, was in the discard pile. We see this one now in the deck here. That nest ball being nest ball. activated to check out the resources that are still av available. Makes sense. Okay, I have to yeah. look at the resources, yeah, but I'm not sure what else you'll go for. This guy right here might be helping us out here. The Mew. If you can play with the low hand size, restart might Ooh. honestly be your best bet. Finding some additional resources. Restart, yep. Don't want Draw to three. Well, research Up to three. At this point. So Build if he can out. somehow get rid of his whole hand, preferably, Instead, and then use it somehow. You can find the exact right cards to if help he can out. somehow discard his hand. The awkwardness of holding energy switch when all your energy is already where you want them. Yeah, that is unfortunate for sure. Halucha is going to come down on Halucha, I'm not sure what that one does. I forget. It's going to allow that ability to be activated to get 10 damage counters down onto the field of two different Pokemon with that oh, okay. flying entry. Make it's sure I can't put them both From your hand to your deck, two, two, two Pokemon. Judge. <laughs> Not a whole lot, but something, something, it I guess. like the targets of choice are the Monkey Dory and the Manaphy. Two cards to help out. One is boss's orders, but there's no energy to go along with this. Pheasant you use restart. There is uh, energy to help. Help! Can we flip some script? We got some energy nice. here. Nice. Flip the script. That's a new card from the new set. For Evan. There's not Draw three cards, left. I believe, if a Pokemon's knocked we out. Very good. That plus a genome hacking. Like six cards, basically. Hand too, so you can well, search out the final genome game only two. Uh, so three plus a three, five. Is there, but wants to preserve the resources. I own them. Just draw right into them. If it's four cards in your deck, possibly you know what you're drawing. Yep. Exactly. I own is going to be used here for both only four of cards in his deck. So hands, it's gonna go at the he doesn't know what he's going to get. Of that sense. very slim deck on Evan's side. Hey, look at that. <laughs> four resources here. It's almost like we knew what was going to happen there, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> evolved. All right. Going to get that earlier uh, from the dust ball. Going through the discard pile here now, now, looking at all of the Pokemon that are in there uh, that Evan is able to util utilize so far in this matchup. And you put your opponent on a lower hand size now. Maybe they're missing some resources. Free retreat from the Mew. There's okay. A question: Do you want to play a little more defense? You're running out of time. You could preserve some hit points. Maybe the reduction of 80 from Rolling Iron would help. But true. Dragapult could also just continue to draw more prize cards. Who draws attack? I'm like not sure what that one does. Let's see. The game, three prize cards remaining. Hopefully however, they put it up. There's a lot of time. Who doesn't hit the bench? Let me establish see. a pretty big play. Exactly. There's time. Eighty less damage. When you give it from over to basics, I believe. Deck. Very three nice. Very nice. So basically, he gave Evan himself an extra eighty. This game away after that rolling iron, rolling health. up some biscuits in this matchup here. Eighty reduction on the left side of the field, as well as that knockout Haruku on the other. Is hand. it eighty Taking less or eighty less from basics? There on that monkey dory. Oh, Either way, he should be good, I believe, because all of those look like basics. It's a fancy one too. Oh. Except for the guardy. Fancy looking scream tail in I believe it's just 80. That's the thing. There's in general. probably a way to get there at this point. Uh, if you want to take down a two prize knockout, we see plenty of damage on the other side. The monkey dory could spread a little bit. You could use scream tail to attack and start taking a two prize knockout. 
Yeah, at this How point, do you want to go about this? Exactly. At this point, it's up to Haruku to just decide the strategy here. We're first going to draw into some cards. Refinement is going to be activated. Refinement for two? Kalia into the discard pile. Two additional cards. That scream, scream tail, tail. Uh, potentially coming down onto the bench here now. Roaring the bench. Scream is the name of the game for that uh, attack there on that Scream Tail. It's very cute, but it is Dangerous! Don't be a uh, fool here by Let's that. Some some water. This one doesn't need a microphone. It's gonna get you. Uh, yeah, it'll get you in D20 damage for each Ooh. damage counter to any of your opponent's Pokemon. We saw that Iono being used four cards to the hands now for Haruku. What are you seeing, Kyle? Yeah, there's a counter catcher in the hand, so maybe Ooh. you could target down a different Pokemon if you so choose here. You could establish. Perhaps a checkmate situation if you attack with the Gardevoir, load up the damage onto the Screamtail, but then you start to get into situations with Dragapult you don't want to get into, so. Yeah. What that. is the right way? What is the right way? We're going to have to see where this turn goes, what Haruka chooses to do. I'm trusting this right now. It's going to be the counter catcher because we're behind in prize cards on the right side, but counter catcher is a fantastic card to have here because it allows you to uh, pivot one of your opponent's Pokemon into the active here. That Holucha coming up here, but that scream tail damage can go wherever. Yeah, I like this strategy. Your opponent is running very low on resources. Force an additional retreat once more from your opponent. Take the knockout on the Pheasant Dip. Ooh. It's less cards that they can draw. If they have the grass energy, they can't draw with it because they need to retreat with it. And Haruku is down to just two prize cards remaining here. Yeah, this is huge. This is the bread and butter of the Gardevoir deck. It has these strategies. All right, I'm back. Had to fill up my bottle. They're single water. prize Pokemon that are so dangerous. You have to take them Haruku. out. Haruku, down to two prizes. Evan, into these future oh, so win, though. Okay, we got well, pretty close game. Let's see what's going on. Your retrieval bosses orders in hand. Is there a way to search to draw into the final canceling cologne? Is oh, there yes. enough? Hit points on the other side to take a triple knockout. Yeah, I see plenty of them here. Let's oh, bring up Mana Bee and figure it out. This could be huge here. Boss's orders for the Mana Bee here. Energy Ooh, switch can... leads to the retreat that you need. Oh, look at that. The Artisan being used to look at these cards. It's only four cards left in the entire deck here for Evan. But if this strategy can be pulled off and there's enough damage on that side to take all of these prize cards. This could be huge here, Kyle. Yeah, trying to line it up with the restart from the Mew. You can thin down the hand. You have to play Small all the deck cards. Size. Maybe it's down to a 50-50. We'll see oh. four cards remaining. Looking for maybe... Well, we can, we'll see the bosses. Bosses. bosses How orders. low can you get this yeah, hand down? It's the superior energy retrieval per just one. I presume you draw three. If it's the last card in the deck, you lose. This is huge. Only Let's one. see what this is going to be here. Restart on that Mew EX. He found we it. have it. The canceling cologne here. Nice. Gonna play. It's going to shut that Vanifee down here and allow Evan to take all of the prize cards needed. Canceling cologne shut down the Vanifee's ability. Division championships. Let's hear it from the crowd. Well played. Well played. Wow. All right. BRB guys, gonna fast forward. In that open that led to a full board. All right. Perfect, it was just a little late. All right, all right. I found start rising being laid out. We'll see what I see they show it. I'm not sure why they're not showing it in the grand finals. The fist bump. At least not right away how they normally do. In our game two of the senior nope, finals didn't show of our it world championships. That was a turn. That Evan was a turn. We started the whole first. Turn here, Kyle. What are we doing here? Oh, okay, yeah, we did miss a turn. Uh, a Rook won first. We did miss a turn. Here, but that's going to be the entire turn. Not a single so Evan just had to go second. The discard pile here for Haruku. That top two Winner. As well. I mean, and loser, I guess you pick if he goes first. Second. In the prize cards as well. Uh, the other side, a Reggie Drago V. Second, you can play supporters generally and attack and shut. I say generally because I need supporters and I can play turn one. Our mind, I believe, is called. And uses that monkey dory to confuse, but other than that, both players could work with these resources. The curly well, is a little unfortunate. Evan played again. At this point in time, it's all about establishing a board. Japan won game Evan. one. He's throwing away some uh, dragon type Pokemon, finding Ooh. the energy. Well, the earlier one of these. Basic Pokemon there to go along with this. You love to see the Teal Mask early on. Can yeah, USA make it back? We're gonna love to see if it can happen Tied up here, one to but one hey, of these. We at least have for the one TCG. piece of the puzzle in this Dragapult EX hitting the discard pile. So what your strategy is, get these energy out. Earth and Vessel. You can accelerate them with some Teal Mask, Ogre Pond, draw into some additional cards, thin down your deck here, get these Dragon Pokemon in the discard. 
and Evan is trying to get there. What a sneaky little nod there with the, uh, we've seen the halucha just pop out at the last second. Says, you know what, turn two, I actually could knock out that Ralts if we worked that in. Dragapult could take the six damage counter to sneak in the one additional and knock that Pokemon out. So That's if true. your opponent doesn't have a great setup, this could get dangerous. Deal Mask helps out in that situation. Deal Mask, yeah, this is draw huge one when you attach the energy. Drawing any more cards to the or hand to line I mean. up those pieces, especially if Haruku cannot have some answers in this next turn, not even having played a single card yet. And he switch to the uh, Reggie? It's going to be the Iona every time, Kyle, every time. So Haruku is going to get a new hand. He could attack here. here. I believe he has another way well. to attach one Brand more energy, new right? For both players. We're Obviously not manual attack, but field. let's see. Whoa, that's a good hand. A lot of certainty Nest ball. in the Beautiful. Earthen Vessel along with a Professor's Research for next turn. I don't think it gets much better than that when you're trying to establish this board and start to flood the board with energies as well. Yeah, this is dangerous here. If you're looking at this board state on Haruku's side of the field, first Nest Ball here played. Now like opening going back out. in on the Nest Ball. Second Nest Ball is going to be here uh, as well to get another basic Pokemon down. And that is pretty huge here for Evan. All right, still searching through the deck. I mean, you see these cards are flying here, looking at all the resources. We're going to have a second Teal Mask Ogre Pond come on cool to teal the mask. bench. That is Earth and Vessel. energy to match as That's well. That's the worst thing to see from Haruku's side. Is, cool grass. Oh, he just throws away Professor's Research in his two-card hand. Yeah, I'm probably in a little bit of trouble here. A little bit of a pickle, potentially. I agree. From uh, Haruku looking at this match. Don't know where the professor like that it is. Have some a flex. To do. Teal Mask Ogre Pond. Get or draw a sign nest that here you could be in trouble. Field dance ability. Yeah, there's honestly not much else you need. You might preserve the resource and find uh, a Pheasantipity. Okay, some it's point. attached, but the board is well like established right off, now. But, yeah, this is all on Haruku to show that he's got something going on. My so goodness. Heavy Ball looking for help. Yeah, has oh, wow. Heavy Ball at least can get us a resource Haruku here. Haruku has Haruku nine wins, no losses, and one tie. Exchange it with that Hisui and Heavy Ball. Evan has eight wins, two losses, redisplayed on our clear and no ties. Uh, prize card screen. Drift Haruku's Loon undefeated other than that time. There, buddy, buddy, popping, going down now. Let's get some more be uh, benched Pokemon here for Haruku. Yeah, and that was uh, a big nod to how the rest of this game could potentially go if you. Looks like Evan might game in the first L. The fact that your hand might turn into something you run. need to find Tatsugiri, then you already know the hand is bad. And we're yeah, going to be in some trouble. So mm. feels comfortable in this spot. What Body for a route and a Manaphy. Arvin. Let's see what he gets out. All right. We don't need to attract customers. We already got them. Yeah, we got him now. The business has Looks definitely like picked for the up TM. here, Kyle, for sure. Arvin Anything is else? huge here getting out that technical machine evolution for Haruku. It was pivotal in our game one, and we're seeing it come down again. Thanks and to that, that beautiful another body. Arvin Makes that sense. Uh, selects these cards out of your deck and helps out so much. We're seeing the same thing as well with that Buddy Buddy Poffin once again. All of these Ralts are being established here. The Ultra Ball being played now as well. And to think this was all Ultra Ball is called uh, Griffloon and uh, again Party. Evan's side. Every Evolve. single time. Every just, time. Just like this. You don't want to give your opponent that new hand. Um, I, honestly, Haruka could have already had it. Could have already been. It's true. Arvin, Curlia's everything ready to go. But he can't show that on the opening turn. Instead, now here we are. Yes, throw away these vital resources that you need, the Drifloon and the Gardevoir. You can find them at a later point. Right now, you have to continue to draw and build this board state. Yeah, you can get them set up later on with some retrieval there. First refinement here, drawing in Refinement, what did he get? After the discard of that Ultra Ball. Not sure what he got, but he did play the uh, evil. TM Makes sense. Evolution come down. Energy That's a double evolution. That's very nice. Be able to utilize it here. And the Monkey, and, uh, Monkey Dory, Dory joining the field. Yep, typically you'd see the double Curlia in a spot like this. We already saw one in the prize cards, but this will be the Gardevoir this time. Evolve, around. okay. Understands that we might need to put a little pressure on this time because Evan is in a pretty great spot. Showed off all the energies to go along with it. Has basically flexed that there is a god hand on the other side. Yes, this could exactly. get dangerous. Oh, it could get so dangerous, Kyle. We could have an Evan incredible match coming up here, depending on what happens in these next couple of turns. We see those two evolutions 
come down here for Haruku. And now we're over to the other side on Evan's side of the playing field. Reggie Drago V with two energies attached in the active spot at this moment in time. We have another grass energy in the hand as well as some ball search here. It's going to be the Ultra Ball discarding that Reggie Drago V. And ultra Ball, let's see what he gets out. Yeah, and if you have a Pokemon that you specifically want in the discard pile this time, now would be the chance. You're using the Professor's Research, but if it's already there, or you feel comfortable throwing it away with Legacy Star later on, just establish this Pokemon. Let's attack this turn. Yeah, let's get some safety moves here. Reggie Drago V-Star is out on the field now, uh, which means that Apex Dragon p can be used down the line here for Evan. So... Like you said, Kyle, getting that consistency out there, making sure to stabilize the board here before we draw into some more cards with this hand. Another question, I suppose, is this grass energy. You could draw an additional resource, but if you throw it away, that's not great. So let's just attach it for the Does turn. Does he have a cancer Nicolone? If he has a cancer Nicolone. Or he gets one off of this. We I'm not sure what and his prizes are. Kyle, I forgot. Look at like you predicted. Well, I think they showed them, actually. Grass energy to the hand. Professor's research netting us seven more cards here. We're safe. We got the Reggie Drago V-Star. It has oh, the way, you're sending your boss up to the man if he fit the Kira in this card. We're dancing on the bench here with the Steel Mask to draw into he can still make something happen here, though. Here as well, and we're we're looking much safer with this board state. Reggie Drago V as well on the bench here for Evan for future turns. Yeah, the Ultra Ball to continue. Ultra to Ball again. Through. Maybe uh, a second Reggie Drago V Star could be incorporated. Uh, you could uh, start to use the Halucha if you can target down that Ralts on the other side that was not evolved. That's uh, occasionally something we see players go for. Yeah, we're going to see what the strategy is here. The Ultra Ball being used. Two more discards here for Evan to search out any Pokemon from the deck. We'll have to see which one it was that went to the hand. The energy switch as well. Over the Starting energy, okay. To get that Reggie Drago V on the bench loaded up. The Fed's powered up. is here as well as that Halucha. We're going to get those damage ping down that flying entry never it's thought about halusha it's pecking these little pokemon it makes sense though, especially with the deck Haruku. and you know what that means kyle this is huge here dragapult ex coming out of the woodwork it's being played in the reggie drago v star deck but it has so much utility as you see Ooh, those Evan's pokemon got going down v star and the price uh, it's not gonna i don't think it'll, it'll matter limit us the energy so switch may matter more. Game here for Haruku. That is so much of the strategy yeah, that has down. now been debilitated exactly. uh, on the field. This is what happens when you don't search out that other Curlia there. You could have protected this Pokemon. It looks like Maybe U.S. Around for a little bit has longer, this one. Drawn additional resources Team instead. USA. Now, three card hand one. With the Curlia one one now. To helpfully draw out of this situation. Any support Making or something ones, to help is. out here would be great. Oh no. It's yeah. just dark energies this and is, ultra ball this is not helping right now it, i mean we do have the dark energy that can be placed attached on the dark on the monkey dory but Makes uh, sense. those pokemon were wiped out here there's only one damage counter on the field on that manaphy here we're going to see those two now so that at least is going to be able to to shift these damage counters off of haruka's field onto evan's side with that adrena brain ability on the monkey dory wise to protect three if it has dark energy spot, okay so three on there i forgot exactly how many counters that. That what? Like, what is Where happening go? <laughs> flip outside down the mind bend coming back and he's confused as a part of the strategy here mind for bend. haruku to uh get past the obstacles in this game throw some evan's way we see the confusion there on the reggie drago v star now and evan has uh, a couple of cards in hand here but now they're in the discard pile and uh, you'll see plenty of potential pop-off opportunities. If you find the pink card, and there it is, yeah, Prime Catcher canceling is. Cologne. Oh my goodness. Wow. Hold those, up. Those two in combination are so dangerous here, Evan. Looking at this hand that was drawn off the professor's research. Gonna play it out here. Stay calm, stay cool, stay collected, and get through this turn. But Prime Catcher canceling Cologne. Evan, you're looking golden right now, man. Here. We're gonna see that earthen vessel discarding a card as well to get two more energy out. We have even more play for this turn from Evan. Yeah, not only finding a way to move this Pokemon, but potentially to catch Heal dance on number one. A debilitating and so use the other one, I believe. Earlier, just in general, would be devastating. Cash so return on the V-Star, fire, okay. Prime Casher. Oh, oh, earlier. 
Yeah, this is huge here. Prime catcher bringing up that curly. I brought up the Ruku was already behind heel mask and, and retreated. Makes sense now. No longer confused on the V star position here. That Reggie Drago V star. No beautiful play. Confused. This is a different one, of course, from that prime catcher. Aruku still has some uh, good cook, some good sauce. Give him that. Of the discard pile here, that phantom dive, taking out the Curlia, another prize card here for Evan. Miss very sad no Lugia may top. On the field here or at least grand final, so no to say. I still got a final list. Anyone watching this? If you hear this, energy. I would appreciate it if you drop this down not work. You have a good continue. source where I can find top 32 you know or even top 16. Very curious. I want to see the list, deck list. There's the legacy star that can search out the prime catcher again. I did try see all these a couple hours ago, right after this ended, actually. The price card taken here. Wasn't able to find anything. Hopefully, it's been updated now. I'll try, if I can find anything between now and when I edit post, I'll put it overlay. Or I'll make a second video, more than likely. Something out from that ability being used, and then we just see the mind bend once again. If it doesn't even bother flipping I know. Pokemon around, so see, I'm, 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 I'm getting that. out of it. I'm getting out of it here. You're gonna see me again. <laughs> yeah, it's flip it around it now. now. Makes Once sense. Confused for that Reggie Draco V Star. It's upside down. It doesn't know what's going on here, but Evan knows what's going on. The Earthen Vessel discarding that Giratina V Star. Searching out more energy. It's just going to be that grass here into the hands for Evan. Everything is going his way right now in this match. We're going to see an additional card draw off of this teal dance on the Ogre Pond. Ooh. And a nice little legacy star as well. Giddy up. Here we go. Legacy yep. star. Oof. Yeah, that is seven cards hitting the discard pile. Evan legacy star. I am thinking you can use Prime so Capture again, though, right? Prime uh, Ace Specs in general cannot be used twice. Well, has already been discarded. This is such a the Energy one can. Okay, so this one can as well. Some of them can be used twice. The Energy one can. It has a two-part effect. I remember now. Lugia. Use it all the time in Lugia. You can't use uh, minus one prize, though. What but you can show you other effect as a rainbow Just energy more than once. Both of your Reggie Drago V Star are ready to attack. I think if which makes sense, that will be so busted go, if you could use that twice. Knock out both in the same turn it doesn't line up uh, in a two two turn clock, so energy switch seems fine there. Yeah, Evan probably feeling pretty comfortable here. Prime catch, okay. Everything going his way. Prime catcher being recycled now. Uh, for this Promote the teal, retreated, retreat. no longer uh, confused, beautiful play. He could get two that's prizes uh, off here, more than likely. Map, I believe he sure can one hit KO. Either way, it wouldn't be enough, but he'll be very indeed. close. We're seeing these energy fly around the board here right now. It's pretty scary from here, the girl Haruku. Down to just one prize card remaining for your opponents. Your lone guard of knocked out. No pieces of the entire line left. Yeah. Monkey Dory in a dream. Monkey Dory and a dream. Giratina V Star, a pivotal card here in the Reggie Drago. Beautiful Deck. one hit KO. Impact. Well, it already had damage on it. But pretty much a one hit KO. The loss zone here, but that's going to take the knockout on that Gardevoir EX. And that is everything. That has been wiped off the board here in just a few swift turns by Evan Pavelski in this matchup. Monkey Dory, all it can do is continue out here. And that's the game. Ooh, Evan Haruku Pavelski with the handshake. GG's. Well played. In 2024 at our world championship. You still got second place, buddy. Very nice. USA one to one now. Let it be known, Evan Pavelski gets the job done. Two zero victory. All right, I'll be putting all the interviews and etc. All of that in the end, guys. If you do want to see that, I may even put in the pre-game interview as well. I don't know. I'm gonna pause and uh, we'll be back with the masters. Uh, Dave the best for last. But was able Again, to no Lugia, very uh, sad, but BRB, guys. All right. The best for last. Masters. Oh, they're actually showing the prizes this time, okay? Boss, Fodder Tenacity, Enhancing Hammer. Oh, two Crushing Hammers. Okay, well, that's not in English. I would issue bringing that. Is not ideal because they are some of your gusting options. Uh, if you're worried about the ace back, they're both playing prime catcher. Jobs are good. Prime catcher, 
Did it win our bracket in the end yesterday? It certainly yeah, did. Of course it won the bracket. Well, it won Good both luck. the finals here. Both. I'm just thinking when we made our cast. So I'm guessing. Mixes, let me see. Should have just said prime catch. Well, one of them's not in English. I see what country you're from. Trading card game, Masters Division, World Championship final is going. And today's game. Japan is going again. Japan all three. Earthen vessel. And I think this DL. Earthen vessel is going to be super impactful. So Nosuke is going to have to really CL, I believe that's, try and get as much energy in place so you can try and Dilly. limit the effectiveness of that initialization. Going to discard Makes one copy sense. of basic dark to get any two that's basic Spanish. energy like I thought, I thought it was somewhat familiar. Deck. So let's take a little second to, to explain how Sonosuke's deck is going to work. It revolves around that Roaring Moon EX. has two attacks, uh, two attacks. Frenzied Gouging just says, I'm going to KO what is ever in your active position. And then you take prize cards as well however it does have iron thorns 200 damage to it i still well, can't believe they got rid of uh two basic dark path to the peak and just put it on a pokemon you may discard a i was so play. happy if when path to the peak left do 120 more worth noting 220 however is 10 short oh of playing the big moon X. yeah that's one of the big things we need to be watching in this matchup Calamity thorns can't shut that off when this card was printed 220 done in death maybe the magic numbers there's very few pokemon like roaring moon and iron thorns which have more than 220 HP is a basic, but it's become more common in the Scarlet and Violet Japan block. versus so that means Latin doing enough. America. It looks like Snosuke is just going to attack. I'm not sure that counts as Latin America. Moon and I will count that it as Latin. Fernando's first turn here, and he's going to kick off this final Fernando with an Arvin. Let in Fuentes. That's not his last name. Here, an awesome item, enough. and it looks like he was ironed up that technical machine. How do you pronounce turbo that? Turbo Energize. Phenomenal turn one play. Turbo Energize accelerates energy, and one of the things about Iron Thorns is takes free energy it's not an automatic thing where you can just get it going really quickly and there's no other great energy acceleration we're playing here okay so we so got the uh, turbo on turbo energize and then using oh, two basics turbo as we go and also going for that item guard there gonna go and get you know techno radar gets more Ryan thorns yeah techno radar lets you discard one card from your hand to search any two future pokemon pop them in your hand that is going to search out 50 percent nice nando's pokemon as we do see 75 percent now three taken one's going to hit total. the bench as well let's have a quick talk going back in didn't even shuffle let's see what else he does getting attached we see a basic energy attached as well and i imagine we'll see that turbo energized attack there and you search your deck for two basic oh, okay energized makes sense them so you're one of your bench Pokemon in any way you like. Fernando is going to really try and stick that Iron Thorns there in the active and make use of that initialization ability, which turns off all Rulebox Pokemon ability from your opponent while it's in that active. Yeah, it's not one of these decks, you know, the, the, these, these Roaring Moon decks don't rely on abilities like something like uh, a Roaring Moon Dog. I've probably said this a hundred times already, but, but it's gonna turn still so sad. No Lugas made top or Grand Finals. For instance, which is Pro so ready? Actually plays Pro, two of them. I believe you're on number one with Lugia. It's gonna Gotta look at the list. Endurance. And it's switching ability, it doesn't Not shut sure who you lost to. But it's annoying enough. Maybe an Iron Thorns player stop. makes sense. All gonna get one copy of Trekking Shoes, but did discard a boss's orders and a basic dark energy. That's actually not too bad, though. We are gonna see the Trekking Shoes, and you look at the top card of your deck if you trekking like. Trekking Shoes, in keeping hand. it. What was it? Discard and draw the next one. It is Ultra an ball. Ultra Ball. And here we go. Shinosuke is off. Discarding to the a judge and can tell what the card is. Search his deck for any Pokemon and pop it in his hand. One important point to note: Snakeskay here is playing Dark Patch. It accelerates yep. Darkness Energy from the discard to a bench Darkness Pokemon. Now, there's Darkness Energy in the discard. Wonderful. You can accelerate it. But you need to have a Bench Darkness Pokemon as a target for that card. It won't go to the active. So we do get a, a Non-EX Roaring Moon. Just a the little baby one there. Moon. And that's going to go down onto the bench. And if you want to start accelerating energy, you can. Energy is going to be really important here. And Shinosuke has two ways to accelerate that. As you said, whilst we do have Dark Patch, we also have Professor Stardust Vitality that lets you attach one basic energy Baby. to two of Data. your Makes ancient sense. Pokemon. As we do see it being so played So you have two there, or one? We are going to see okay, one energy two. to the active and Beautiful. one to the bench. Two energy. And here we go. We're going to see one, one there, one. one there. And get to draw three as well. There is a chance we see a KO here from a Frenzy Gouging. There is a basic Ooh, energy dark patch. in hand. Shinosuke Another basic. can attack this turn and has a dark patch in hand as well. Shinosuke off to the races. And that is the thing about Frenzy Gouging. Yeah, you can KO for the stadium. Do an extra 100, I believe, because if you just the stadium. But it looks like, I think we're going to see a Calamity Storm there. 
and it's not discarding not the stadium. Discarding the stadium. Oh, I don't I didn't mind this because 220 doesn't get a KO. Clearly, one oh, yeah, okay, okay. the following turn. Now I don't want any KO either. Right? I thought it was 220. Survive by 10. Turn. Oh, we do see a heads on crossing. He probably wants the stadium. Wow. A heads. First crushing hammer with the heads. I mentioned that energy is going to be really important for Sinosuke. Fernando's going to be playing the mini game of can I remove these energies just as fast as you would Actual high roll on the hammer for once. On stream. Chorus's tenacity, fantastic support, letting you search your deck for an energy card and a stadium. And you've already mentioned, Ross, that Shinosuke really likes having that uh, DTE well, Fernando might and a last say, song. Well, you can't have Makes it sense. anymore as I put my Lost City down. I mean, that is a real telegraph, right? Or Lost City. I don't want to do extra the damage. Who wants to do an extra Lost City sends damage? you to the Lost Zone. You only do that if you really want to keep the stadium in play. With telegraph to Fernando, you want the stadium. Which says to Fernando, you know, tr try not to replace my stadium. Would jump. Fernando's like, yeah, I'm definitely getting rid of it. But I'm going to use it first. Gets a Lost Vacuum. Ooh, but don't lost Vacuum. And a Lost City. And we have the Lost City in hand, which the Lost is City would have been nice. gonna come down, replace that At least he has stock, one. which is fun. And we can attach here and attack. We can do Volt Cyclone for 120. DTE. Because remember, double turn Return. will reduce the Patch. damage done Active. by 20. Worth noting as well that the text on Volt Cyclone means you have to remove an energy from your active and put it on one of your bench Pokemon. So we do see that lightning energy cycloning to the bench. 120, 120 damage onto Shinosuke's active. KO next turn. The now, does have an easy KO by Calamity Storm if he likes. Does that Pokemon catch you in hand? But we do see Dark Patch being played. Going to power up that bench for Roaring Moon, who can now attack with Vengeance Fletchling. Which One energy short because of the hammers. Ancient card in your discard pile. Then Oscar second cards in hand. I'm going to get four. Try KO is here. The one on the bench that's got free energy on thinking, is a very thinking. enticing target. Looks but like you paid Judge or Iona. Pokemon Catcher. Or no, Pokemon Catcher. We're going to see the flip. It is a tail. Ooh, fail. Does not get the Iron Thorns into the active. Clearly trying to go after the energy. The KO is not the issue. The issue is which one would you judge. run KO? And here comes a Judge. This is the favorite toy of Fernando. But Sinesuke is going, yeah, you know what? Does Sinesuke have I another way, like down support way this. of getting that swap? Does he run Prime Catcher? Good enough. To be able to I'll be this judge. This is really correct if he top decks it. The crowd going wild. Here, reducing both layers hand size down to four. The judge can quite honestly decide these games if players don't draw particularly well. Let's see what Judge can quite honestly decide these games if players don't draw particularly well. Let's see what Shinosuke has. Are there many options in that hand? I saw a Poke Gear at the very least. So we'll have some options to try and grab some supporters at a later date. And has a fully powered Roaring Moon on the bench. Yes. So has an attacker built up for next turn. So it seems this like part a the good for now, the KO. Here we go with the Calamity Storm for 220, getting a KO without having to sell damage, which is quite important. And then we get a fresh Iron Thorns in the active. So Nate K gets the first KO. Can Fernando respond? The answer is we'll. Fernando, yeah, you're doing very good. Yeah, so we do see our first prize card. I mean, you are behind, but in our Masters final, we do see Fernando. I do see you uh, on top. Look at top seven at least cards. This you can any support that you find now. I think I saw a boss's orders in there. And maybe Unless a you're judge not as well. Yeah, we see a judge there, and it looks like he took the judge. Goes wild with the bench. Yeah, the bench is lacking right now. You're gonna judge me. I'm gonna judge you right back. But right now we Another have energy. extra energy on. I don't mind this. Boost. Oh, we question hammer, hammer here. Well, it's coming up. It's tail. a KO. Ooh, fails. It seems fair after the, the yep. Pokemon catcher. Here comes the judge. And what we see here, remember, you have to move an energy when you attack with your Iron Thorns. So what he's basically Makes sense. doing is going right. He just wants to move the energy to the here, bench. And I can just move you one still have enough to attack afterwards. And twice. that way, I've still got free energy on my active if it doesn't get KO'd while having an energy on my bench. It's taking advantage of the fact that you're moving energy with the attack. This judge could be really interesting here for Shinosuke because this Roaring Moon EX is going to get KO'd via this Volt Cyclone and that Bench Roaring Moon only has 140 HP. So if he hasn't got an attacker here in that hand, we, this could be a fairly quick game one. As we do see Volt Cyclone, we're going to KO that Roaring Moon EX. Fernando evens it up at four prize cards each. Shinosuke, what four have you got four. in your hand? Can you respond? Right, we got four cards from the judge. We've got a there's a nest ball in hand. That perfect will allow yeah. you not uh, to nice, uh, excuse me. So not scared to go and search out any Pokemon. It is of course Moon, okay. a roaring the big moon one. EX. That is the big threat here. 
The single prize roar in Moon, it takes a while to get up, and this isn't a deck like we saw in the Juniors final, which is built to really accelerate into big chaos. I agree. This is a backup attacker, an extra attacker. It's Definitely a, a backup attacker. Doesn't burn the Ancient it's quite nice as good. Bonus. It's the oh, going for I prefer the other one, though. I prefer the one that turbo the baby. To each of those Pokemon, Not this wish. one. But no Just my opinion. I mean, they're, they're both good. But the baby one, I believe, is better. Or more my taste, I should say. His mood. This vengeance fletchling is actually going to bring this iron thorns into range of a calamity storm. So this damage is super. He has got a follow. I'm not sure if they're going to follow up on stream well. or in the recording. If I remember, I did that out. Thanks for the random YouTube subscription. Right now, it seems like Ooh, we're just to do 100 with 110. If you listen to this, Fletchling. but here's the deal: two turns time. So, in this case, winning this game because yep. you just use Calamity Storm and then use Frenzy Gouging on whatever, and that's the game. Here we see a crushing hammer here. Prime Ross, Casher, see what it is. crushing Hell. hammer. Energy Ooh. is safe. Two fails back to back. Heads on those that is good. Is Fernando so far has got the attack, but it's not. It is going to get a KO. It's going to be a clean KO, actually, but it's a Prime Catcher. Onto the bench, Rory Wait, what? EX. I'm confused will now. need to retreat, which of course it can because of that future boost energy. Capsule. Oh, okay, okay, a future but booster was, makes sense. Free, means, free retreat, I believe. You know, it, that's a two hit KO. You're not one hit KO in there. He wants to get some damage on a reel of two KOs in a row. So, you know what? Yes, get this, damage it now. It's not going to get two KOs, it's only going to get one. Love this prime catcher. Ooh, okay, well, let's take a second just to take a deep breath here. Oh my goodness gracious. We do see Fernando gonna play that earthen vessel and discard one card from your hand to get any two basic energy. That prime catcher was super important. We do see an energy attachment. Attach to return. Now bear in mind, or we do Professors, see Professor's research beautiful. there as well for Fernando gonna draw seven. seven. That, that uh, active Iron Thorns DX does have a free retreat cost thanks to that. Vamos Fernando. Capsule. We see some Pokemon catches, we see some double turbo energy, we see a cancelling clone. You can do it, Love bro. that. Future boost on both of them means you get the extra damage and you get the free retreat. And of course, you've got... Actually, no, I want to roll for Fernando. Next turn, and I love this. I do Getting not like the Iron Thorns archetype. Moon is absolutely huge because I'd rather root for Shanoske. Easy map for Sanesuke there to just hit with Path to the peak at home. And then just hit twice in a row with the EX and win Bring the back Path, You're remove now Iron. Forcing a third Roaring Moon EX to come out. Here we go, Pokestop. Ultra, Ultra. 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 Ooh. And then the Fezzi Two for three. EX. Worth Fezzi noting Dippity. that scripts will not be able to be activated at any point during this game due to that oh, initialization okay. ability. We are you can't even use it. Okay, so not bad, not bad. I've been very intrigued to see what Ultra, Ultra Ball for two Ultra Balls. Hello. While it can't use this ability, he needs it's something. actually a super kind of relevant desperate. attacker in this matchup. Dealing 60 for each prize card your opponent has taken with that irritated outburst attack. And Ross only does it for two basic energy. That right there could be an impactful attack. It's the perfect Pokemon with which to take your final two prizes. Yes. When you're tied, four prizes taken each. It does 240 for two energy. You can frenzy gouging for free energy, or you can irritate it out first for two. I don't want to waste any energy. And of course, it's a darkness Pokemon, so Dark Patch works absolutely perfectly. And you know what? Yeah. That sounds good to me. Big Moon but makes sense. Going for the Roaring Moon EX, which is again Done in a death situation. That would be crazy. Here. Frenzied Gouging will finish it off, choosing to go Roaring Moon. And here's the thing. Petrarant is only good if you give up those next two prizes. So Nesuke, I think here, is trying to not give up prizes. Can they get a KO with Vengeance Fletchling here? Wouldn't have thought so. You have to have to consult the discard pile. That was a failed search there on that Poke Gear 3.0. It's going to shuffle those cards back into the deck. And it's real interesting here. I don't. Oh, we we don't could take one a more ancient. There was, a le there was 110 last turn. You only need to do 120 ah. this turn. So you don't okay. need one more ancient card in the discard. Now, if you can pull that off, that's why you don't go Petrant. Because three prizes taken means Petrant's no good. Here uh -oh. we go with that stretcher, and it's getting an energy. Roaring Moon comes down with the energy. What a basic, from the night stretcher. what a Pokemon or basic energy. Okay, I thought it was just Pokemon. That calamity I was like, what? Put onto Makes sense. Two, uh, yeah, two prize cards. I did take the prime catcher out the prize card. 
So let's keep an and eye Nosuke on that over to Fernando. Going to promote that iron to self into the active, destruct just basically. Well, not self destruct, it survives, but barely. And it seems to be Shinosuke, I think, is Frenzy the There's plenty of attackers with plenty of energy. That is Fernando's. That is not what Fernando wants to have happen. Looks like going to play be, be playing a Pokemon catcher, perhaps. And let's see. Oh, Canton Cologne first into Iron Earth. Yeah, that Canton Cologne's not really doing no. anything. No. It's just getting a card out of your hand, filling your deck a little bit, increasing your odds of drawing what you need in the future. Two cards for Sinead, two know, cards for Fernando, and Energy Lotto. We've got Double Turbo, and we've got a... Is that a Giovanni? As a Giovanni's Charisma, letting you actually attack with an Iron Fawn in one turn, if you like, because it lets you attach one energy to your active from your hand, and also remove an energy from your opponent's active and pop it back into their hand. Not going to be too relevant in this game, but we could see it in games two and three. We do see a Techno Raid. I'm going to discard that Energy Lotto. Going to grab the Iron Thorns EX from the deck and pop it in the hand. And I would imagine we'll see it hit the bench. As well. nice game. Yeah, now of course, at this Looks point, like he's got game, game one. To KO more than one iron Only two prizes left. Want to mention man. Number one, so you've got an option you got to this. Retreat into a fresh one, give your opponent a, a more difficult route to victory, so to speak. So we are going to see the Volt Cyclone coming in here doing 140 damage, which KO. is enough to KO. We're I gain two, two for two. Each. So nice okay here. Very simply, and ask if you can somehow one hit KO. You got the this. Game. All your petrons will win the game. What are we looking at, Shay? I think we are going to see the trekking shoes here. Uh, just debating on what's in the discard pile. I do think a frenzy gouging would for. Ooh, Greninja, not what he scenario. needed. Oh, we do see a, he can't uh, use it. Earthen vessel, and we do see the Radiant Greninja in hand. Energy oh wait, really need to see he right could here. use it, I guess. Yeah, if he does that. Yeah, we do need Earthen to see. Oh, it is a fresh. Uh, there is a fresh Roaring Moon on the bench. Yes. So if we can get the energy on that, then you will be able to KO without KOing yourself, and you would get the clean win there. Oh yeah. Sorry. Oh, you're gonna yeah. discard the Greninja. Fine. The Roaring Moon is fine. I don't. Think, I imagine Vengeance Fletchling is not that close. I'm not sure what his so third card was, but I thought he would have discarded the third card, Moon. another Greninja. Those are the two cards we're looking for here to get an attack off and send Sineske one game up in this Masters Division final. There's an energy. Let's see what that third card was. Let me see if I can get a look. Doesn't have it. Those are going to see the Vengeance Fletchling there. And it's fine. Either no, way, set up for the one hit next turn. not have to KO a Roaring Moon in one turn. Nope. So this damage is super relevant. Basically saying... That my um, Calamity Storm will KO you next turn, or I could Frenzy Gouging if you don't have and a box order. And asking with orders. the quick map, fix it, Pokemon for Fernando. Two, DTE, Giovine's Charisma, Pokemon and Catcher. All these could be super relevant. Here we do see the Pokemon Catcher. It's a it's test. Nice. Brings it into the active, but remember, we know today's Can we get the one hit KO somehow? Or no, it got, it, it, it got uh oh, oh. No oh, oh. Nail. That been nice. Nice. Nice for you, man. Oh, what can goodness. we do here? We Bosses. Giovanni's charisma is oh, going no, to remove an energy. It is going to be relevant in this game, Shay. Will allow Fernando to attach an energy if he wishes. The free retreat. We get a new Iron Thorns into the active. ETE. We attach the double turbo. Wow. We hit for 120. And Sineske here. Now, Prime Catcher would win this game straight up. Yeah. You need a switch and you need gusting. Will win the game. Because at this that stage, moon is going down next turn more than likely. Iron Thorns with your and actually you gotta get the win here is an option, or you'll be in trouble no it's doing 130 we saw it last turn it is not care in the active you're frankly miles away you're not getting two energy onto your active roaring moon because you need dark patch and that won't attach to the active so i know it's a lot to ask but you know prime catcher i don't think we have available we see a basic we energy we have a petron basic attach energy return on the active. ex roaring moon ex we're just going to see maybe a pay retreat and vengeance fletchling again Force the boss's orders or force any form of gust. We see a petulant getting bench. We won't be able to use that ability, of course. So we are going to see a pay retreat by the looks of it. Hard we'll retreat. The vengeance fletchling roaring moon. Not what we'll I wanted to see. The vengeance fletchling again. I mean, Shanasi could still win this, huh? Tiny bit, yeah. Ooh. Now, I don't like putting the roaring moon active. Yeah. Because if it gets KO'd, you lose all of your energy and you might not have an attacker next turn. So I kind of like putting the petulant active. It's still a two hit KO. Yep. That is true. Oh, so, no, we are so going to... It is a Roaring Moon. Again, it, I don't think there's really a right and wrong answer here. You're just playing the percentages. What is more likely to end up going wrong for you? So, Fernando does have an opening here. Oh, oh, oh. Good uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hey, if he gets ahead here, it's over. Oh, it's not the goodness game yet. gracious me. 
and unfortunately has to attach double turbo to pay retreat and this will be a ko so all the energy is gone and now oh, this no is energy though, so Nasa Kate yeah. does not have great options wait does fernando not have any energy did i hear that right vessel, energy, so what happens here Denoski? neither of which are great options frankly we are still got in a good this, spot man. though because the earthen vessel can search two basic energy you can attach one to the actor that petruan isn't going to get ko'd now irritate outburst next turn would KO whatever Fernando leaves in the active. You are still vulnerable to a boss's orders or a Pokemon catcher, but Shinosuke does still have a route to victory here. Has a route to victory, but it's not much fun when you're in game one of the Masters final. Uh. You're like, I can win next turn. So, you know, would you mind taking a turn? Yeah. Don't win this turn so I can win next turn. You're right. It is not over, but it's not the position I really want to put myself in if I can help it. But there oh. is no option, not even an energy attachment. No. Oh, boss's orders is in hand, but it won't have the energy to attack. Bosses? Actually. Nope, there's two energy. And this is the thing. We've talked about using Volt Cyclone's energy moving as an advantage, and sometimes it is. Yep. But sometimes it spreads out your energy so much you don't have a valid attack. And that is what happened. And I hate to say it, this is one of those times Volt Cyclone. where it spread the energy out a bit too thin. Ooh. Boss's orders Boss up. onto the roaring moon, but it's Ooh. a pass. Now, has one more no energy for no energy. Shoot. It's only it's fair. Catcher, but no Bought himself catcher. some time. Fernando, okay, good move, man. Oh, and a squawker Billy. A bit of a squawker silly here. We don't need that. And it looks like we are going to see a pass back. And it's an energy. Oh, top deck the energy. Part of the cards. Exodia. Obliterate. Fernando, Fernando up game one. BRB guys, kind of fast win. forward. I'll make a nice little cut for you guys. BRB. I think it might be. And here we go. So the judge is going to keep revealing. Oh, now we get one at the third. The judge. No, it wouldn't have been Mulligan. Mulligan. So, yep, there we go. That is the judge ball concluded. So now Fernando. First time I ever see that in a tournament. Now, I wonder. Since Never I happened to me. Or one of my I opponents. I think it's every seven Mulligans, right? The of the event. But Fernando only has four Pokemon, I believe. So, it makes sense. You have to imagine. That's quite a common occurrence. So the mass is, and this is super rough, all right? Don't judge me too harshly. But if you play four copies of a card in a deck, you've got a roughly just under 50% chance of drawing it in your opening hand if you play a full four. Under 50% so chance, you definitely okay. should not mulligan eight times very much at all. So there is Nesuke going, eight look. Eight times, I know mulligan eight times. Here's very the, rare. Have to take all the Never seen you it till now, to actually. How many Heard about taking, it. But you don't have to take them all. And it does look like Turbo Energize is prized. And it looks like Shinosuke here is starting us off here in our, in our game two in our Masters World Final. But yes, Fernando has... Shinosuke, let's go, man. Energize. We saw it get used a lot in game one. Fernando Don't will let game one get to you. To use that. And Shinosuke does have prize that Pheasant Dipity, Dark Patch, Pokestop, Squawker Billy, Trek and Shoes, and Basic Dark Energy. In all honesty, not the worst of prizes there for Shinosuke. Has so many cards to play here. Just trying to work out how do I optimize this turn one. And prizing two judges after you gave your opponent an extra eight cards with a mulligan. Frankly, not ideal. There's three judge and one Iono in the list. That's how you hand disrupt after something like a judge ball. Shinosuke took all eight to mulligans as well, I believe. So, here we Very go. good start for Shinosuke. An earthen vessel discarding what I think might have been the only energy in the hand. Actually. Pretty much starting with <laughs> more than double the regular hand ball. size. Turn the goal one. here is simple. Attach an energy, try and get a couple of dark patch, get some Pokemon down. That is your goal before you start getting disrupted. If you can get a few Pokemon down, an energy and one or two dark patch, that's pretty much your ideal turn one here. Yeah, and that seems perfectly fine to me, especially if you've got a big hand like that. Hopefully, it should be easier for Shinoshke to do that. Has got the Prime Catcher currently in hand as well. Look at it, you see that flash of pink there from the Ace spec. We see Ultra Ball, we see a Nest Ball being eyed up here. I imagine this will be for a big Roaring Moon EX. Yeah, you got to think so. At some point, that Roaring Moon is going to be pretty big. We've got energy in hand now. We do have Prime Catcher in hand. Yeah. Did I spy a Dark Patch at the back of the hand? Not entirely sure. Let's do a Nest Ball here and figure it out later. Okay, like that okay. okay. Nest ball, I think we're getting failed there by the looks of it. It's going to shuffle up the deck. And, uh, yeah, it looks like shuffling up the deck. Shinosuke has a ton of resource there. Now. Is there a Dark You'd like to imagine there'd be a Dark Patch. It looks like we see an energy attached. To the active boy moon, no, and a pass. 
Okay, not the best turn one after a 15 card opening hand. I'm gonna be honest with you. I we agree. Do see a poke gear coming down and really 15 card opening hand, not the best turn one. Here because but then again, is absurd. I don't see he still has the 15 cards. Cole or close enough. And professor's research. And, and we really want a hand disruption. There's an Arvin in hand and a Giovanni. I don't think Fernando's been able to find a judge or an Iono here. And Sinesuke still has a 10 card hand. Yeah. You do not want them to have that bigger hand. It's why you play these cards. But two judges in the prizes is going to make it much more difficult to find it in the deck. Yeah, two judges in the prize and that turbo energizer. So Fernando Ooh, judge. tries to grab Fs. that, will not be able to. Let's see what Fernando opts to do here. Let's see that Pokemon catch is going to be really impactful. We'll turn off Dark Pack to the bench. Nice. Oh, yeah, so, now, so now that Royal Moon DX will be able to on the come up with the heads. Pyro, attach return, a deck for energy. This is a deck that relies on Petron switching the capsule. Active. Too many professors discard hand. Means lots of good I would have so probably played that stadium. Oh, wait, I forgot. Don't want to play the stadium necessarily with the big moon. We'll power it up, actually. Up Makes sense. If you're playing Petrant. So that Pokemon catcher potentially very, very big. Like I'm see the Calamity Storm would have made it do plus Fernando 100. Gonna draw seven cards in a Techno Radar. Gonna discard the basic Lightning. Techno Radar. Basic Lightning Discard. Not sure how I feel about that. Hammer in that hand, which might be seen played, unsure. But we do see that Techno Radar concluding for the Ooh, two copies of Iron Gold. And worth noting, this is actually Fernando's first time having a deck search. So we'll be trying to work out what is in those prize cards. Yeah, and this is the game where with no Turbo Energize, the turn 1k or the turn 2k are going first would have been absolutely huge. Your opponent doesn't have a way to accelerate energy. If you can get a big frenzy gouging KO turn 1 or turn 2 going first, that gets rid of all the energy, and Fernando has to double attach in order to attack. But now, with an active Roaring Moon with no energy, seems like even an opening hand of 15 cards has not gone to Snake's Cave where they want to be. We are just going to see Future Future Energy capture the free free both pass. A retreat and a pass. All right, Shinosuke, what can we do? Makes sense. Pokemon's I want to get down one damage with the energy. Night stretch. You got Pokemon two capsules. Catcher, Roaring Moon EX. Wow, that casher and that one new card, I forget the name. You know get rid of the moon, that is that the big moon. Prime but that new card is so good, like a monster Way reborn, basically. Oh, it works on energy, too. Off and will be turned off the entire game. The stressor. Not what it's called, but that is the art. energy attacker stuck in the active not where you want to be by any stretch i think there's a world i can see basic energy in hand i can see prime catcher and i think two copies of dark patch we could see this ultra ball being played here they're going to grab a roaring moon ex attach dark patch dark patch prime catcher ultra ball discarding ko the bench uh, uh, catcher and DX, but, not sure what the other thing is uh, fernando Bail. removed energy as well let's see that's what happens i we're think he's wanted to look at the deck i guess that's some active. intel Let's see what else he does. That would be then he shuffles, so like, probably going back in. Patch onto the frenzy gouging the. I uh, was frenzy gouging the. Um, vengeance flexing. Thank you, vengeance flexing, roaring moon on the bench. So we're not going for that big. But there is the prime. There, Ross. You had to prime. Now we're Fernando wanted to see. Only switching target, and now we're going to see vengeance flexing for frankly not enough unless we see. A manual retreat. Judge. A judge. I love this. This is, yeah. This you look is. at your opponent's board and you go, look, you don't have double turbo energy right now. You just don't have it. Yep. So I I'm just going to judge you. And either you draw double turbo or you literally can't attack next turn. And I get a cheeky two hit KO with this. And then you basically lose the game. Love it. Put your opponent in a situation where you don't think they're going to be able to attack. That cut. sounds like fun to me. Always yeah, cut after a shuffle. Deck getting disrupted here Better safe judge. than sorry. We do see energy. We see a professor sword. I'm calling either one of them a cheater. Yes, general on. advice. In the hand as well. if I'm, if I'm Oscar, Only time I don't personally cut in a tournament is if like I just don't see myself I topping and I'm just playing for fun. Uh, ancient cards in a discard pile. So that would have been 90 damage. Yeah, it does actually mean you're going to need another five next turn to get the KO. Which is going to be a little bit awkward, but I don't think. Ooh, but worth noting there, Ross. Tenacity. Off the judge joins us. Energy card. Tenacity. And a stadium. An Very good in this. Deck. The double specifically. Energy quickly getting taken there for Fernando. Now, normally that would reduce damage down from Bolt Cyclone down to 120. 
but thanks to that future booster energy capsule, that Volt Cyclone will minus be twenty plus twenty makes sense. War in Moon. And that was out. still, I think it was a good bet from some SK yeah. there to, to play that judge. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Cancelling Cologne, at least. There, I'm not sure that will come in effect energy. here, actually. Yeah, not ideal. Didn't really give him any value there at all. Yep, I agree, yeah. Cancelling you know, Cologne, not really valuable in this matchup. Four double turbo. It was a decent shout with the judge. Didn't work out, unfortunately. And things Can you vote Cyclone or DTE? I guess we're Firstly, about to find out. You're about to lose a Pokemon. Because if he doesn't, Secondly, here's a DT. Okay, you can. Pokemon. Makes sense. And it's, you're not going to have much energy. I don't know. Shosuke did have a Professor Sada in hand. So there's a basic energy in the hand as well. Fernando up Sada one prize. Attack and take a KO here. There is a Professor Sada in hand. And there is an okay. Earthen Vessel here. Five to six. Shinosuke can reload and Fernando's take favorite. a KO. It looked bad. And actually just drew a second Professor Sada. Oh. Wow. First. Professor Very Sada attached return. Turn. And Manual. maybe it's not all over yet. Because now we're going to see a two prize KO. You're going to go up by one prize, and it's all about the up energy by at this one. point. So NSK lost game one because they ran out of energy. NSK That's how they lost. Up game one. Here, I may be mispronouncing your name. My bad, bro. Uh, More likely I am. With that iron form getting discarded from the Pokey stop, how many Arvin, iron okay. forms Fernando have access to? So obviously, we can see two there in the discard pile, one in the active. Ah, uh, Fernando. One more available, I believe, if it is in hand. I'm not going to lie, I would like to see the moon win over the Iron Thorns, but it's not looking like that. I do think Fernando's going to get this. Because it means, you know, you know your opponent's playing Pokestop. You don't want to risk this getting lost to Pokestop or something else. Get it out of the deck now. But you're right, that's it. That's all the Iron Thorns that are available. So it's going to make things more awkward in the late game, trying to, because we saw last turn or last game, Fernando did take a damaged Iron Thorns to the bench to protect it. We are going to see the basic energy getting attached there as the Techno Radar does conclude. Going to grab that Iron Fawns and attach a future booster energy capsule to it as well. We do see a Pokemon Catcher in the hand there for Fernando. We Pokemon are going to Catcher? As well. Let's see what we get. It's Ooh, an end. nice. And I like this because I'm just looking at this and I'm thinking frenzy gouging, frenzy gouging, frenzy gouging, frenzy gouging. Because there's only three and Oh, yeah, it does get moved, I suppose. <laughs> I just want to get rid of all the energy, Shay. I want a frenzied gouging. And if I've got two Roaring Moons... Set up for the KO next turn. -KO. Yes. I was about to say, we could just... Or frenzied gouging as well, self-KO. But I don't think Shinosuke would... Actually, wait, Shinosuke is up. That is something he could do. What can you do? He could sacrifice... Earth but you'll still be up, so let's see. Gonna grab two basic dark energy, ultra ball, being ultra ball, here as well. This guy Pokey, Casher, and, and dark energy. energy as well. Looks let's see what he gets up. Another warring moon, or just gonna consult how many Pokemon Shinosuke has available. Yeah, not too bad here. Trying to figure out exactly what's available. Two frenzied gouging in a row would win this, and what would be kind of funny is you'd probably KO both your roaring moon to do your frenzied gouging. You'd give your opponent four prizes, but you'd win by one prize if you did it. So you're totally okay giving your opponent four prizes. Two frenzy gouging will win this game. It is all about the energy at this stage. That is what is most important. Of course, Petrarun also a decent shout. Here comes your Professor Data, Data okay. attaching an energy. So there we go. One on the active. We want to see Trekking, trekking shoes. Going to get rid of Squawker Billy. Love to see yeah, that. Yeah, Squawker's in need after turn one. one. Looks Makes sense. Energy in the hand there as well for Shinosuke. Nest ball. Nest ball. Fail. We are now going to see a... Uh, trying to thin out the deck, uh, thin out the hand. Here, Ross, the power pad's going to be too poor. Professor Sada last time didn't really Two get Sardis. involved too much in game one. And that's how Shinosuke managed to run out of resources. If we have Professor Sada drawn into for the rest of this game, Shinosuke will be able to continue attacking. It's all about the energy. At this stage of the game, I'm pretty confident that if Shinosuke is able to just keep drawing energy, they will win this game. They're ahead on prizes. They're about to go up four to one. It, well, assuming they frenzy gouging, which I think they're going to. It's Fernando with the cut. Energy on the board. That is the absolutely crucial thing. You could manually retreat here in frenzied gouging with a fresh roaring moon. No, you do it. You KO yourself. You give up. KO himself. Two for two. Now, but he's still up by one. Roaring moon in the active. Fernando Beautiful. Can't want Beautiful KO. play. No. Fernando cannot cast around it. No. So unless they can hit double crushing hammer, or basically, if Sinesuke gets free energy on that Roaring Moon next turn, he will win this game. 
So even if you hit double crushing hammer, you can still solder and attack them for turn. And this is the downside of this Iron Thorn DX deck. Sure, it is very disruptive by crushing hammer, initialization, crushing hammer. Giovanni's looks charisma. Like the... There's a lot of Oh no, no, Earth and Vessel. But that all comes at the downside. Earth and Vessel just got in a boss. Looks like got two electrics. Beautiful. Cash return, maximum. manual. You do have no one shot options he does need a Pokemon on the bench or he wins. And Oscar will win, I believe, on the sudden death situation. Fernando needs to to stay in this game. There's a crushing hammer. There is one crushing hammer. Here we go. Uh oh. This is designed for game two. It's a heads. So he's wow. still in the game for now. Forcing Sonetsuke to have Fernando. another energy next turn. If we see an energy, we will see game two for Sonetsuke. And we know that energy. We've got an energy in hand, and that is the game. Sudden death, yeah. Sonetsuke wins. It up, I should say. 1 1. We got a Going the distance here. Game man. three, We're best of three. BRB guys, I'm gonna fast forward. Game three, off game three baby. Hot game. Hot diggity dog. Fernando attached past it looks like. Shinosuke. Let's see what he does here. Taking the next card. Shinosuke, what have you got in your hand there? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it is possible that we can see a frenzied gouging turn. Two items, not bad, okay. The stretcher, you can get that energy back if you want to. Two in combination of Dark Patch and Professor Sada. Attachment for turn, switch into the active. We could see, I'm not, I don't know how likely it is. It, you know, Snake's K keeps choosing to go first. So that tells us that their turn one KO is not that great. Because if it was, they keep choosing to go second. Squawk makes sense, I'm okay. You Looks like he's going for a squawk with the it Ultra Ball, discarding another Ultra hard. Ball and the Alpad. Looks like. There, so has to only or he might the go, for the, go for the Moon, I'm not sure. I'd probably go for the squawk if I was him. Let's see. Probably his prize striking as well. And a professor's research. Now, I'm really interested to see that since I guess Fernando it also depends if he has a lot of energy in hand, doesn't necessarily want to squat. Resource that Shinosuke had to start game two if it's gonna sure be does. super impactful here. Well, we're going to grab a raw. So he didn't go for a squat of all here, and that is the first part of the puzzle. Yeah, it's a lot to ask, but here's the thing you don't actually have to win the game turn one, it would be fun to win the game turn one. You don't actually have to do so. No. What you really need to do is what you did in the first two games. You need to get your basics down. You need to get some energy established on the board. And since Sonesuke went second, that does mean that you can Not go sure what he's doing there. Sada's vitality. Okay, Sada. Okay. Fantastic. And this 70 damage is super One on each, drop three. Calamity Storm can take a KO. We do have a basic energy in the hand there for Sonesuke. So can attach that to the active and do a vengeance fletching there for that. What, I think it'd be 80 damage so far. Super relevant here, Ross. And this one prize KO for Fernando is essentially useless as Shinosuke only plays other two prize Pokemon, forcing Fernando to still force his way through three EX Pokemon. This is what we saw in game two, Shay. We He's thinking, a little bit of chip maybe discard more ancients. No, I don't think he's going to go for it. He's a regular and then attack. We saw KO, and then we saw 150. Gouging. The Mook yeah, will knock that out next turn. The big Mook. The only thing stopping Focus up. Ooh. Energy. We see a Pokestop, we're gonna get rid of an Iron Nose. At least he got the radar, research. I guess. Could be worse. Radar. Now, that might be super impactful. Fernando only has one Pokemon in play right now. Might that could have cost him the game, so yeah, that radar is very nice. Energy, judge, research, and a catcher. Have we mentioned that Prime Catcher is prized for Sanesuke yet? We have. Okay, that's good. Because what's prized for Fernando is the one of Penny. Yeah, which is a way to see a catcher. Heads there, sorry, Ross. That's Beautiful. gonna get the uh, Royal Mooney X into the active. But. Yeah, okay, that's quite nice. That makes it less likely to get a KO next turn. It means Dark Patch That Techno Radar may have won in the game, the game or at least definitely saved him. Because you need to kind of establish your board. You need to yeah. set up. Yeah. However, Penny to heal after yeah, Poppy the South came in clutch. with Vengeance Fletchling is a pretty good option. Yep. But not when the only copy of Penny is in your prizes. So we see a good look through here from Fernando, having a good look at his deck, figuring out What's prized? Obviously, we know we're getting two Iron Thorns. You, you play four in the deck. It makes the, um, you know, it, it makes this a very predictable card, shall we say. We do see the Chorus Tenacity being used as well. Going to grab that basic Lightning Energy and the Lost City as well. See if Fernando probably doesn't want to put Lost, or actually might want to put Lost City in play. I apologize to get around that Pokestop, but that does give a Calamity Storm a way to get extra I agree. Get rid of, you want to bump that. Stadium. Does indeed. So we and put in the last one will be a bonus. Here. 
Having cool. a little bit of yep. backup bump there. to stadium. City to get rid of the post Attach return. Energy on the active, so that Volt Cyclone is now available. And we hit 120. Remember the 20 reduction from double. Going for 120, energy. okay. Now, Let's see what Shinasuke can do here. Decay, find a way to get free energy on that active Roaring Moon. It only that will really be real good if you can do that. And an attachment from turn. It really does. Professor Star is going to be super impactful here. That catch your head is going to be really awkward for Sonosuke to sort of hurdle over. But if he can, could be in a also very be three costs attack. of the big moon. Two energy, I believe. Up, though. It was, so there will be no Professor Sada. I mean, he could even retreat cost of being used. No Professor Sada. And once again, this judge Actually, really no. could end up determining this game three. He if one player potentially could retreat and swing with the basic moon, baby moon. If one plays better than if he can build up enough other, ancient in the discard for the this game. KO. But I'll tell you, today's K draws. That's gonna be a long shot. Judge. Let's see what he does here. Fernando plays free. They're both preparing for this, but here's the big difference. Zanesa K plays Squawkabilly, Raiding Greninja, and Pheasant That's the draw ending. None of them work in this matchup. It makes Judge more scary. Okay, I've done that. Double turbo energy there. Didn't quite get to see what Shinoshke had. I see Ultra Boss here, Dark Patch, and a basic energy. Oh, really Donosuke got a decent hand, sounds Navia. like. Won't be able to move this, uh, Hold us off on Fernando, so that was a DTE. Another DTE off the top deck. Let's see what he can do. Just need a lightning energy still to attack, even. This poke here could be super impactful. Currently not in the hand, that lightning energy. Chorus or another supporter? I see a judge. Oh, judge would be I don't know if he wants that judge. Quite risky here. But the judge I agree, it would be very risky. Here, so, you know, why not? Have a go. <laughs> More risky than normal. We're looking for a Chorus. We're looking for a lightning energy. Of course, Chorus can. Chorus's research. No, Chorus's tenacity. Arvin. Can actually grab a basic or a special energy. Yeah. We're going for Arvin instead here. We've got a few uh, energy capsule. And with double turbo in hand, you can retreat yeah. the active, attach double turbo, and attack with your bench iron thorns, which will be enough to KO. It would be, but then that would mean that you'd have two... Uh, hammer and capsule looks like from the Arvin. On. But you're right, or put the hammer back. Let's see what else he gets. See that future boost energy capsule being taken. Arvin, Maybe the radar. Yeah, just deciding there, Fernando, on what to take off that item card is going to go for the techno radar. And I think at some point, if we do see lots of damage, I mean, he has another Arvin in hand. Makes sense. Because the hammer is nice as well. In here. Radar, yeah, this card, one DTE. Got another DT opponent. in hand as well. If you KO this, you're not helping your prize map. It's as if you didn't really take a KO because it's the only one prize I'm ever going to play. So it's actually a way to kind of take a prize while saying your opponent, you get nothing. Oh, Shinosuke is only playing that one one prize during yeah. the game. And you're That's right. it worked very out. good, actually. All those three iron thorns in play with that fourth iron thorn. Nicely done, prize. Shinosuke. If Fernando doesn't liberate that, this is all the iron thorns. Attach a capsule, free retreat. Future energy capsule attached to the active. We are going to see DTE a free for return. That future boost energy capsule. And we are going to see a Going for the KO. For KO. Fernando takes the first prize card here in our game three Masters final. And that Last zone, Shinosuke forgot. Again, I believe. Fletchling. Forgot earlier as well. What can you do? I remember correctly you in game here? one. Yeah, well, you know I forget that all the time the in his defense. And if you're gonna I never play last zone. It doesn't really affect me either way. A ride on kind of affects me, I guess, when I play Snorlax, maybe. You're giving up that one prize for Only really up. played three decks recently, at least. Lugia, oh, sorry, Dark Patch, Snorlax control with Pidgey or without Pidgey. Depends. And we ride on. just do see Vengeance Fletchling. I like that. Because, well, I mean, essentially the route here is really simple. You just go Calamity Storm, Calamity Storm, Frenzy Gouging. Oh, look, six prizes. Minus 80. Set and him up. There's no one hit KO on Roaring Moon. Benoski was the setup. The EX. KOing the single prize. Penny. Does Penny, I believe Penny, Penny picks it up, right? We do see the Penny to remove Ooh, that beautiful. damage. Iron Thorn DX from play. That's going to make it a lot harder for Shinosuke to do that exact prize match with those attacks, as you mentioned. We see an energy attached to the act. You need a future boost to energy capture to make sure you actually get a KO there. So we are going to see a KO on that Roaring Moon in the active. And again, that will be getting sent to the Lost Zone. So that won't be getting extra in any extra ancient cards there. Shinosuke does promote the fresh Roaring Moon here, though. We'll be able to take some prize cards at the very least. Let's see if Looking Shinosuke very good for Fernando now. Shinosuke, nice you can still win this. I'm not saying you can't, but... Here. That should still give them the victory. Uphill battle for sure. Yeah. To get them over 
because unfortunately Fernando now is going to be two hit carrying for the rest of the game. Oh, I think we just saw a Calamity Storm though. We didn't see any bench Pokemon or any extra energy attachment. We'll take a Roaring Moon and a Bed Scandy out of the prize cards here though. Has Fernando got a double turbo energy in hand? I think he should off that penny last turn, right? So we'll be able to attack. He had two in hand when he attacked the last one. Okay, okay. So... Yes, there is one in hand. We are BTE good. for turn, so attach, okay, energy manual. Active. We're going to get an attack Energy for turn. And it looks like we're eyeing up an Arvin. Arvin. A tool and an item card. Okay. Whew. Okay, it's getting very exciting here. We do see this Arvin being played. Now, one we're going to grab here. Future boost, energy capsule is very nice. It's going to boost damage and give free retreat cost as well. Fernando, Capsule, okay. You know, if Janoshke opts to use Calamity Storm, can start to play musical chairs and just sort of avoid KOs. And let's see what the item card here is, though. Crushing. <laughs> Could be iron up the crushing hammer. That would be a thorn in Chinosuke's side. We've already established that get, Chinosuke needs to get loads of energy in play to have attackers ready to go. Crushing hammer could be a thorn in Chinosuke's side there to stop him doing that. Absolutely could. That generally is the right decision in this matchup. Yes, it's on a coin flip. But like we keep saying, Sanesuke here, all the question is, can you keep the energy on the board? Here we do and see that crushing hammer being played there. Sorry, what's that? Hey. Hey. That is a big Beautiful. Yes, so this case that may have won Fernando. But it means the game. Roaring Moon is going to be one Not only the game. This is game three. Out. The it championship. What you are looking for. That is a multi-thousand dollar head right there. I believe exactly what, what's the are. difference? Ten thousand dollars between the first and second could be wrong. Fernando, but we are going to move that double turbo energy to the bench. We do see that Volt Cycle of 140. Now, Shadowsky, a professor starter here would be huge. Does he have it in hand? I can see a Royal Moon. I can see an Ultra Ball at the very least. He's going to consult the discard. We do need to see discard. another attacker from Shinosuke at some point if he wants to continue his run of becoming a world champion. And the thing is, we're not like we were in game two. In game two, Shinosuke could just go, well, nah, it's all right. Just friends, he's gouging. I don't care if I KO myself. Mm. Well, now you're down by a prize. You actually yeah. do care if you KO yourself. So you need to be a little bit careful. Or maybe you force a sudden death game because you go, you know what? Yeah. I feel great in sudden death in this particular matchup. We're away, away. Oh, I forgot about that, yeah. Up. Sudden death. A possibility. I forgot exactly 100% how it works, incredible. but that would be interesting if Shinosuke does, does that and somehow pulls off the it. sudden death match. We are, yep. That's good. But this is where that crushing hammer is going to be super impactful because now you would love to bench that and attach your energy to it. But instead, you have to just attach to the active just to keep up tempo. But that means you're not getting other attackers lined up. It doesn't look like Professor Star is currently available. Um, no, we do see a Pokemon catcher here, though. This could be big. And we see nice. It. Okay, that's going to get our Iron Thorn DX into the active with the double turbo energy. We are going to see that Roaring Moon DX getting benched, potentially. So in this case, hand is low-key kind of terrible. Yeah. We've got a couple of Ultra Ball. We've got ourselves a Roaring Moon. We've got an energy, like... You're not playing a supporter card of any description here. You got so I'm not going to help, actually. Fernando has like energy in hand, moves. anyways. And that's it. That's all you've got. We are going to see a frenzy gouging. Frenzy here, gouging. Though, never and mind. That's going to take Shinosuke down to two prize cards. Is he going for the sun and death? And the Let's see if he can pull it off. Out of the prize cards, Fernando. What can we do here? That you need the one hit KO, man. Turbo energy in that hand. I don't think there is. We basically, what today's case done beautifully here is force the to have a double But did turbo. find the, the Carver's tenacity it's there off the pokey gear. Sorry there, Ross. That oh. was a huge uh -oh. pokey gear. Yeah, absolutely, it was huge. Let's see what he can do here. Finds Chorus. Chorus will find the double turbo. That means that you will be able to get the attack off this turn with Iron Thorns. And that is what today's case was hoping to avoid. There is still a route to an attack here next turn for Snake's Kate, it's a little bit awkward. You kind of need Petcherunt. Petcherunt, yeah. next turn, I'm just saying we'll win the World Championship. Just putting that out there, Petcherunt would be quite good. Chorus Tenacity, yeah, okay. Chorus Tenacity being played there as the Energy Lotto did grab a basic Lightning. There was not a DT, so it looks like we are going to see a DT and a Lost City being taken there off that Chorus Tenacity. So that means we will see a Volt Cyclone, which is going to be very impactful. It's going to be incredibly impactful. It's going to put... Sineske on a huge clock here of one turn. We see Cancelling Cologne. That doesn't do anything. It's just getting it out of the hand. And then we're going to see... Are we going to see a Volt Cyclone? It looks like we're going to. Is it time? We're going to wait a minute. No, I think we are going to see a Volt Cyclone. Yeah. Interesting. We've decided to bench the Pokemon. We're not. That means there will be no Prime Catcher out. Okay. Shinosuke. What is that top deck? It's going to be super impactful. It's a Judge. Oh, I don't mind Judge at all here. I Ultra Ball to see what he gets out. 
The thing is, I want a dark patch onto a Petron, and then I want to use Prime Catcher as a switch, but I don't have a dark patch, and I do have Prime Catcher, and then I'm going to play Judge. Yeah, but the thing is, you can't play the Prime Catcher with your opponent. It hasn't got a bench Pokemon. I there. mean, you know, that as well. So that, that was a real <laughs> heads up play there for Fernando. Opting to debate him to bench that Iron Thorns, but didn't. So that means it's going to be very hard for Shinosuke to actually be able to remove that Warrior. I mean, now, that is possible. But it's going to be quite hard, especially if Shinosuke has to play that judge. I don't think there's a person side of in hand, so it must be a judge and pray. Shinosuke might be yeah, a little too low on energy here. here there's Resources. No targets on Fernando's bench. We do see the Petron being, I think, discarded with the tracking shoes. I don't know if Shinosuke's got any way around this here. Oh my goodness, it's going to be a pokey stop. Here we go. One, two, Catcher, Earth and Vessel. Three Netball. items. I don't think. That's gonna get Shinosuke out Yeah, I don't think it's gonna help him out either. Really. At least he did Roy hit Moon three for three. Let's see no, what he can do. And if that Roy Moon is in the active at the start of next turn, Fernando is going Earthen to be the champion. Okay. We see an earthen vessel coming out here. One last look through the deck for Sinesuke. You're in that situation here where you're thinking, I've probably lost. I'm gonna look through my deck for every possible chance of an out here. Is that That's what I'll do too. In the deck that can get this. There's one even though I don't think he is can do anything here. Is there a switch? We are thinking so worth the try though. Thinking here, Shay. A lot of money in the line and the title the on the line as well. Oh, so sad. No Lugia. I've been a lot better for the Lugia. I wouldn't even taken him a ride on or a Snorlax. Man, path to the peak. Please bring it back and somehow retract this fan Iron Thorns. Do not like Iron Thorns. Congratulations. I'll be adding all the interviews, etc. at the end. Thank you for watching, guys. Drop a like if you made it this far. I would appreciate a comment. Check the description for more videos. I'll be uploading the rest now, guys, as well. I'll put on the, the VOD for the finals for Go and VGC. The Unite VOD final, casted, is already, uh, I'll, I'll link it as well if I remember. Take care, guys. And congrats. Wins here against inadequates here. Let's break down the teams. It's going to be because he's been able to farm things down and use that. I know Shinkai versus inadequates. Game number one, it's going to be Shadow Quags are into a Giratina. And he brings his signature Pokemon in the lead. And this is exactly what he wants to see. Seeing the Shadow Quags are throwing straight for the Shadow Ball. Yakai gets that mud shot through. And if you don't protect shield this, this is really close to knockout. He does last second protect shield though. That's a big shield here. And this is a fairly neutral matchup. If you could land the Stone Edge, it's going to do a lot of damage. The pacing on the Stone Edge is just a little bit faster than the Shadow Ball. He it lets it go. Land. That's a huge chunk. And now he's in Aqua Tail range. He did give up the Protect Shield. But now this Quagsire is kind of healthy. But Inadequance has this Polyrath in the back. He's going to be able to ramp up. He doesn't care about any of the energy from Shadow Quagsire. He resists all of the charge attacks. It's actually really good for Yukai, even though he's getting farmed down here. He has a shield disadvantage, but he gets some chip damage, and more importantly, he has the alignment. He has the charge. Oh, he shields an Aqua Tail bait, though. Oh, but does not get to the Stone Edge as well? Wow, what a play from Yukai to get the Protect Shield with Aqua Tail and then land the Stone Edge, which will do significantly more damage. Every little decision matters at this stage. Having Switch Advantage here is absolutely massive because if you look at the back line, the Woods have has nowhere to go against the Skarmory. How can an adequate dig himself out of this hole? Big Skull is going to land about half the health of the charge bug. No deep buff though. And here comes the Skarmory, the matchup Inadequance did not want to see. And Inadequance has been one of the best trainers on the planet at reading the opponent and running the right team compositions. Yakai early on has the perfect backline for Inadequance. Has the Charger Bug for the Polyrath, has the Skarmory for the Wigglytuff, and Skarmory can just fully Steel wing down and you can double sky attack or sky attack Brave Bird the Polyrath. And this is a tough matchup for Inadequance. You can see he's already trying to figure out his next line. This is not going to be a win for him. And Yakai going to take the first game off of Inadequance. He is two games away from being your world champion. Inadequance is going to have to dig deep here to try to get some wins off the table. And this is what Yakai 
was trying to do early on. He thought that this might be a tough team composition, but if you could- Oh no! Once again, it's the Wigglytuff against the only counter that Yakai has! Oh, and Yakai brings in the Lickitung right away, recognizing that, yes, Charge Bug has a positive matchup against Lantern too, but he'll have to spend some shields, and also expecting maybe the Polyrath in the back. It's probably the next most reliable counter to that Skarmie, especially with shields. Yakai's gonna let the first Thunderbolt go through, though. This is an interesting matchup, because because you still have a chance to flip this, especially if you land that Thunderbolt, which is what Inadequance did. Yeah, you have to land that Thunderbolt. You can absolutely flip this matchup now. So Yukai knows that, goes for the bait. Oh, and Inadequance actually no calls shield. the bait on the body slam there. This is huge. But the problem is, here's the power whip. And if you give up Protect Shields, even if you have alignment versus Polyrath against Skarmory, it calls the power whip two great calls by Inadequance. Skarmory with a Protect Shield advantage will beat Polyrath because of that super effective Sky attack. That's absolutely right. And so he actually has a lot more play than an Inadequance does because Polyrath, yes, it can beat Skarmory, but not at a shield disadvantage. Oh, oh, he, does not oh he doesn't get, get to the Body Slam, slam though. One turn, uh, Water Gun was able to take it out. And now you have the Charge Bug, also a pause matchup. And Yakai knows that as long as they got this Lantern, the Skarmory actually has, has a lot of positive play against the rest of the team, especially with the shield advantage. Yeah, and you can never pivot here because you know that Skarmory is in the back. So actually, Yakai pivots here. That's so risky. He's going for a huge steel, wow, steel wing down. Remember, these steel wings are double resisted by the Lantern. This is an impossible task. Now you're getting a protect shield with the Surf, but I think you're going to get the double Surf, but instead, Inadequance wants to come into the Polyrath and try to get to some charge attack before the double Sky attack is available. Wow, this is going to be big here too. Yakai has a massive energy advantage over Inadequence's Polyrath. And the Polyrath, you need to throw Skull to do some incredible damage here, but you can bait with the Icy Wind. And Inadequence, I think, goes straight for the Icy Wind, not even add the Skull. Does Yakai snuff this out? And oh, he no, does shield it though. Shield, wants to protect the Skarmory. I think it's a solid play too, because you can now build up to Brave Bird. Wants some more energy, but taking a lot of neutral counters in the process. Brave Bird is coming through, and I think it's going to be enough to knock out this Polyrath. I think so too, but remember, the Skarmory is debuffed. There goes the Brave Bird. It's enough for the knockout, and now the Lantern's going to be able to come in and get to the Surf though. And Oh! What a swap by Yakai to catch that surf and hold on to that energy on Skarmory. Caleb, how much Skarmory did he, how much energy did he bank? I, it's, he's closing in on the steel wing and you see Inakwa's not tapping on purpose. He needs energy on this wings up. He needs to be able to get to an icy win here. And you can see Yakai doing everything he can to get off double discharge. I don't know the how much energy might take does... out the charge button before the second discharge comes through. If it does, Inadequance might have a chance here. Oh, it does! Can he get right, here? He's there. He get he's the charge the oh! Yakai pulls off another game against Inadequance. We are match point! Yakai is one victory away from being your 2024 Pokemon Grand Champion. And suddenly, Inadequance is in a deep hole. This is exactly what Inadequance needs to get back in this series. He's got Polyrath in the Shadow Quagsire. And here we see the swap in the Skarmory, the main check to that Wigglytuff. This is exactly what Inadequance wants to see. He's going for the Scald as well. Hard hitting move. Does it get shielded from Yakai or not? And no, it goes unshielded. Hard hitting damage, no debuff, but Yakai patient here, trying to figure out how to play this out. And it's going to throw the Brave Bird, the hard hitting Brave Bird against Polyrath. And Inadequance is going to shield it. But in Look at this backline. Inadequance has caught Zyre, and look at the backline for Yakai. It is so hard to bring Charger Bug into this team composition. It looks like Charger Bug is going to be lined up into that Claude Zyre. I don't know how Yakai is going to be able to win this battle. All right, well, we'll have to see what happens here. And in comes Oh, the there it is. Guy. They're switched on. But wait, counter. the timers it's are so misaligned, Caleb. Yes, that's right. And Yakai still has a shield here. Let's see what he can do. He's trying to stall the timer, leaving with so much energy. Oh, does oh, it even actually shield it go? the Stone Edge? 
lets it go, sacrificing this Charger Bug, even though you could get back to the timer, but this is a little tough for the Quadsire here. But, I mean, even if <laughs> this Shadow Quadsire is able to get through the Quadsire, finally using a Protect Shield, there is still a full Wigglytuff and almost a full Polyrath awaiting in the back line. And the Polyrath has energy as well. That's a key point to remember. I think that's why Yakai chose not to shield there, recognize that he needs to save probably at least one more shield for that Polyrath. He has back-to-back -back discharge loaded, though, so could potentially go for combo place here. Great timing on Yakai's and throwing a charge back party against the Quadsire, and Akron's feeling confident here, going to let this go. Might even survive the algorithm. Let's see if he can hang on and get that final Earthquake off. No, not going to happen. In comes the Polyrath. Polyrath already Icy Wind is going to be the bait here. The lesser energy move does Yakai shield this is a huge shield call. And no, he calls the Icy Wind bait. Let's it go. The timer is almost back up. You want to get out of here and go into the Charger Bug. Are you going to throw a Charge Attack or try to swap on the Ice Wind? And now suddenly you're in this position. You don't want to waste all this energy that you have gathered. Have to use your last Protect Shield of the game. There it is from Yakai. Do we see the pivot into the Charger Bug? No. Pivot into Wigglytuff. And now, actually, Yakai does have some good energy on both these Pokemon. He's not out of it yet. I think that was a genius swap from Inadequance, though, knowing that the uh, the Quagsire was double debuffed at that point, even if he swaps in Wigglytuff, and that might be what Yakai wants to match up with against the Quagsire. He knows that Yakai has to swap out to have a chance here, and now we have two discharges thrown on the Wigglytuff, exactly what Inadequance wants. He still has a shield advantage as well. It is Quagsire almost has no entry left. Yakai just going to concede this game, and Inadequance is not out of it yet. Every river starts with a raindrop, and that little piece for Inadequance could be the... Oh, this looks like it's going to be the signature Giratina origin into an Altaria Dragon versus Dragon, but Giratina loses, so swapping in the Clodsire. And here's the thing, Yakai doesn't have a great answer to this Skarmory on the side of Inadequance. Actually going to stay in here and oh, have to maybe shield a Stone Edge. This is going to be a huge way to set up Inadequance for a comeback. Oh no, let's the Stone Edge go. Yeah, and now suddenly you're kind of back in it. But the problem is, if you don't take alignment, look at the back line, Caleb. Yakai brought Lickitung for the first time ever in this series to try to close it out, expecting that with his back against the wall, Inadequates would bring that Giratina Origin. Quadsire needs to take alignment here, or else it's going to be so tough for Inadequance in the back line. And this is a positive match for Quadsire. Yes, resisted much shot damage, but the Stone Edge is a lot to handle. And on top of that, the bulk of Quadsire is so strong. You see Inadequance throwing up his first shield as well, recognizing that, wait, I really need switch advantage. Licked on the back is going to be very strong into Giratina, and I think Inadequance is going to snuff out that back line. But if Yakai decides to two shield this, this is such a. He lets oh. it go! And now he has lost the alignment. It is going to be probably Skarmory onto that Giratina and then Lickitung into Wait. Inadequate to Skarmory. Do you get this Stone Edge? The bulk of Clodsire able to take out the Altaria and leave a Stone Edge into this Skarmory as well. This is still looking pretty good for Yakai, though. He comes away with so much energy. You can't come into this with your Giratina. You have to come in with your own Skarmory. One shield apiece on both sides. This is a really tough decision for Inadequate to make. Does he protect the Lickitung in the back? Does he come in Giratina? No, he comes in with the Skarmory. Oh, no! This is a desperate situation. This is so bad for Inadequate. He didn't know that the Lickitung is lurking in the back. Here comes the Sky Attack. He doesn't Brave Bird and Pivot either. He is actually staying in this matchup because, of course, he knows Giratina Origin is out there already. Oh, and this is so tough to actually didn't even notice it's a Brave Bird Sky Attack. It could be huge either way. No shield on the side of Inadequance. Brave Bird is going to land. Yakai comfortable with just tanking this energy, saving the shield for the Ligatung for the Lick Down. Inadequance. I think he knows he's one of the best players in the world. He's got to know it's going to be Ligatung. We're going to see on his face real soon. And here comes the Ligatung. Inadequance uh -oh. throwing one final move from Skarmory. You can see Yakai nodding his head as well. It is going to be a sky attack. Can he get to another move, though? That's going to be crucial. He needs every chip damage he can, but not no! going to do it. It's going to be Giratina up a shield, the signature Pokemon of Inadequance. But it's not enough. Yakai, he's not only the first and only player from Hong Kong to represent at World Championships this year. He is not just 
the most successful A-back player in Championship Series history. He is your 2024 Pokemon Go World Champion! And all in that is Quince can do is sit and watch his signature Pokemon get knocked out by the Lickitung because there's absolutely nothing he can do. And it's official! Congratulations to Yakai as your 2024 Pokemon Go World Champion. He's cooking! What a series we talked about it. To start the Juniors Finals here at the Pokemon World Championships in Honolulu. The crowd is hype. We're going to have Calyrex, Ice Rider, Incineroar for the leading game one on Kevin Hans and, and Tatsuomi Shimanuki with Zamazenta Rillaboom with the spectator mode too. I know, it's always so exciting to see just how incredible the crowd looks in the game for these World Finals. But let's go ahead and talk about the board state here because this Incineroar is a great supporting option for the Calyrex, but is going to be a bit slower typically than the opposing Rillaboom. So you have to be very careful for fake out on both sides of the field. My big question for Kevin is, is he considering Trick Room in this matchup or not? Because Calyrex Ice Rider is going to be slower than both of the Pokemon on Tatuomi's side of the field. Does seem like a great opportunity here to try and use it either this turn or next turn, as as of right now, the Samazenta does not have an, enough attack power to take it out in one hit. Yeah, I think the, the Trick Room really does make a lot of sense, Gabby, because looking at Tatuomi's team, Zamazenta, fastest thing out of all the Pokemon, Choice Scarf, on the Chiyu as well. The uh, the Tornadus is also super fast. Iron Tread's an incredibly fast Pokemon that Kevin Han might be able to twist the dimensions and switch up the narrative. But for now, it will be Terra Ghost Incineroar on the first turn here. Kevin using Terra right away. Tatsuomi protecting the Zamazenta, doesn't want to take any damage. Kevin matching that energy with a protect of his own on the Ice Rider. Rillaboom goes through the fake out, but it's into the protect on Calyrex, so Kevin doesn't take any damage this turn and now it's time for a parting shot but it goes towards the protect so really smart safe play from Tatsuomi a lot of times when you see Terra Ghost on an Incineroar you assume that it is there to stop fake out once you are a ghost type Pokemon normal type attacks don't work but fighting type attacks don't work either. And in the Zamazenta matchup in particular, if you can afford to use the Terrastalization on your Incineroar, you essentially set up a Pokemon that cannot take damage from Zamazenta. And what's better than not taking damage? Reducing the damage it can do as well. And just as you pointed out, Joe Brown, this Incineroar knows Will-O-Wisp, and that would be such an amazing move for Kevin in this turn. Right onto either of Tatsuomi's uh, Pokemon here that are both physical attackers. Yes, Body Press uses the defense stat instead of your attack stat, but it would still work pretty well. Here's the double target with the grassy terrain boost from the wood hammer. It's not enough to take out Calyrex Ice Rider, one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the format. will is connecting onto Tatsuomi Zamazenta, so now it is burned. It will be doing half of the damage from its attacks. Trick Room successfully going up. Now for the next four turns on Kevin's end with these Twisted Dimensions, these slower Pokemon will move first, and that's bad news for Tatsuomi. It is bad news for Tatsuomi, but he does still have some plays he can make here. While the Rillaboom is at full health, there is a chance prior to any attack boost on that Calyrex that it can survive a Glacial Lance, assuming there's still a partner standing next to it to reduce the damage. So if Tatsuomi has trained his Rillaboom to survive that attack, he can fire off another Wood Hammer into that Calyrex. We saw that it didn't do as much damage as one would assume thanks to the Intimidate from that Incineroar, but it's still gonna put it within knockout range of another attack, which is exactly why Kevin decides to keep it safe and switch it out. Yeah, that Calyrex will swap into Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt, one of the Pokemon that has taken competitive Pokemon by storm over the last half year, ever since it became legal through the DLC. A very offensive Pokemon. The wide guard from Zamazenta will be wasted since the Calyrex swapped off the field. Anyway, parting shot, landing into this Rillaboom, lowering its attack and special attack by one stage. But of course, if it goes for the Woodhammer into this resisted uh, Raging Bolt on the other and it's still going to be a solid defensive swap for Kevin. It is, and it also gives him the opportunity to send that Calyrex right back out onto the field once the damage has been lowered even further. 
U-turn targeting down that Raging Bolt also means that Calyrex doesn't take any damage from that switch, essentially swapping spots so it could dodge the U-turn. Right, and now Tatsumi's gonna have to reveal his third Pokemon in this game. What is one of those Pokemon in the back that are all generally speedy, say, except for Raging Bolt. Uh, the other three are pretty fast Pokemon that would not be working quickly under Trick Room. Exactly, and I do want to take a moment to talk about the overall positioning of Kevin in this trick room right now as he sends in the Iron Treads. Joe, he brought it. Iron Treads is essentially anti-Maridon, anti-Raging Bolt. They're both electric dragon types. You're immune to electric as a ground type and you resist dragon as a steel type. So Tatsuomi doesn't care if it's going to be moving slower under trick room. He knows he's hardly going to take any damage from either Glacial Lance or a Draco Meteor. And unfortunately for Kevin, I think he has to make a very defensive play here, either by switching out one of these Pokemon or by letting them get KO'd this turn, most likely from an attack from that Iron Treads, and then be, send in your Incineroar the next turn to threaten it with Intimidate, to threaten it with a Will-O-Wisp. It's a very unique Pokemon that I don't think he's encountered throughout his run here at the World Championships. So let's see how he's going to plan a strategy around the huge threat that it brings. And you have to wonder what Tatsuomi's strategy is on which Pokemon to terastalize here in game one as, Zam as Zamazenta has had some damage mitigation from the burn, might not be as valuable. You turn into a dragon type and you'll be very weak to both of Kevin's Pokemon. So maybe it's up to this Iron Treads or Rillaboom later on in this game one to terastalize and change the dynamic. It will be just to protect though on, uh, on Kevin's end as well as Iron Treads protecting. So uh, if Zamazenta went for the protect, it wouldn't work. But of course, goes for a body press, not doing any damage. Good information all around for these trainers. In addition, by double protecting there, Kevin ensures that he can target down attacks into that Iron Treads when it doesn't have protect available to it. A little bit strange to be double protecting throughout your own trick room, but I think given the Pokemon on the field, more information is better. You can see how your opponent wants to use that Iron Treads, and then you can, again, adjust to the game plan at hand. It is two steel types on the other end facing down Kevin's Raging Bolt. So these Draco Meteors, even if they are boosted from the booster energy increasing its special attack stat, would still be resisted. Tatsuomi making a big call on this turn to swap that Iron Treads back out into the Rillaboom. High horsepower into the ground type is now resisted. So a really smart call, but the Draco connects. It hits Rillaboom, hangs on in the Red. The double target does not get the KO, and now Body Press will hit into the Calyrex, bringing it a little bit lower. There is one more turn of Trick Room remaining now, and the Rillaboom has access to fake out once again to flinch either of the Pokemon on Kevin's side of the field. So even though Tatsuomi's own Zamazenta fell short of doing any significant damage that turn, it is in such a prime position here. You can wide guard any attempts at Glacial Lance to deny Calyrex the chilling Nay boost from knocking out the Rillaboom. You can go ahead and target down another attack to either of the Pokemon on the opposing side of the field if Rillaboom opts to go for Fake Out. Tatsuomi is almost guaranteed to make it through this Trick Room relatively unharmed. Calyrex will swap out in this position, so a little bit worried about a Fake Out going into that slot. And now that Incineroar with the Terra Ghost, it would be immune to the Fake Out if that's what Rillaboom wants to go for. But Tatsuomi had a really smart play. The Previous turn, can he get another advantage here on the last turn of Trick Room? Kevin revealing Urshifu Rapid Strike, so he's shown off all four Pokemon he brought in game one, and smartly does not click the fake out, instead uses that momentum to U-turn out. One strategy that has been popular in Pokemon for almost an eternity at this point is this idea that as long as you can keep switching your Pokemon in and out on the field, you can reposition, you can respond to whatever threats your opponent brings. And with the reveal of that Chi Yu from Tatsuomi, there is so much damage potential from him on the field right now. Kevin is almost forced to target down that Pokemon with his own Urshifu because if you leave it unchecked, it can now do super effective damage to the Incineroar and can also threaten huge damage onto the opposing Calyrex Ice Rider with a fire attack. Right, and this, the Urshifu is so crucial right now for uh, for Kevin because the Choice Scarf is allowing it to outspeed Chiyu on the other end who's holding the Choice Specs item. So that would be one thing that definitely threatens Tatsuomi's Chiyu from trying to click and attack this turn. Kevin instead will swap out. 
Raging Bolt will take the field once again, and we do get a terrestrialization from Tatsuomi. It is the Chi Yu Terra Dostalizing into the Ghost type. So two Ghost Terras here in game one, a very spooky start to our Juniors Finals. Surging Strikes now means it is just a neutral hit, no longer super effective. So these three critical hits are not going to be enough to take out the Chiyu on this turn. Tatsuomi really playing smartly in game one. Body press follow up into the Urshifu, not enough. And a Dark Pulse now from that Chiyu into the Raging Bolt. All takes it out in a single hit and that is the power of the combination of choice specs and the beads of ruin ability it means your special attacks do so much damage even though chi yu locked into a single target attack this chi yu if given the opportunity to attack could easily ko the urshifu or this raging bolt now, Kevin does have options to get around the Chi Yu. The Urshifu is still naturally faster, and we did see that another Surging Strikes would be enough to lock in that KO. But the Raging Bolt also has access to a priority attack in Thunderclap. So if Kevin assumes the Chi Yu will be attacking again this turn, you can KO it first. Incineroar swaps into the Urshifu slot. Urshifu was hit by a body press the last two consecutive turns. So now Kevin anticipating if body press goes into that slot, now you will be immune to it as a ghost type. Tatsuomi being on the advantage instead of clicking a Dark Bolts yet again, will swap into the Rillaboom, resetting up the grassy terrain, helping his Zamazen to recover just a little bit of HP every single turn. But the Body press goes towards Raging Bolt for the knockout. He knew that it was too risky to target the Urshifu slot and gets rewarded KOing Raging Bolt. Even if Raging Bolt opted to thunderclap that Zamazenta so it could attack before being knocked out, Zamazenta has so much health it wouldn't have mattered. Tatsuomi said this when we were talking to him before the game. He loves bulky Pokemon. He loves having the ability to stay on the field and take all of these hits. And even though the Zamazenta was weakened by an Intimidate, was weakened by a burn, it is still doing enough damage thanks to the time it has to make a huge difference in his game plan. Now this Calyrex is already down to about a third of its HP. Sure, the Incineroar has effectively full HP, but there's no Trick Room up. Your Restricted is, is, is very close to being knocked out. Losing Raging Bolt, who does so much damage on Kevin's end, it's such a difficult position here in game one. It is. That all being said, though, with the combination of Urshifu and Calyrex still available at this moment in time, I think Kevin has a little bit of options here. This Urshifu has the Choice Scarf, like we were talking about earlier, but it also has coaching, which means there's a way to power up this Calyrex. One thing he could consider doing here after a turn of Fake Out and maybe even setting up Trick Room again is to try to power up this Calyrex so it can make a bigger difference in this matchup. Rubum just clicking U-turn almost as if it's Choice Locked into it, but it's not. Consistently, Rillaboom swaps out to the field as a defensive pivot, and then he'll U-turn into something else in the back, revealing the Iron Treads yet again. It's been a while, but it looks pretty poised right now until Calyrex twists the dimensions. That means Kevin got to bring his Calyrex on the field and set Trick Room up for a second time in game one. It is a second time, but again, there's so much damage on the field, and I'm not sure if Kevin can match that damage from Tatsuomi. Calyrex Ice Rider did manage to twist the dimensions in its favor, which means it will be able to attack first. But like you were saying, Joe, this Iron Treads will be able to take a hit from it quite comfortably. It's most likely going to need two hits from High Horsepower or Glacial Lance to secure that KO. Meanwhile, Zamazenta is still free to try and wide guard if you want to stop this Calyrex from attacking, or you can continue to use those body pressures to just wear down the HP of your opponent. Well, Kevin has protected his Calyrex Ice Rider on the turn knockoff goes into that protect. Tatsuomi is just making so many great decisions turn after turn in game one. The body press will hit Calyrex as protect, so no damage really from anybody. Just a little bit of HP recovery thanks to the grassy terrain. While the HP recovery is nice though, it's not necessarily going to help even out the Pokemon count here. You have to start looking at how Kevin can go on the offense in this matchup. 
Iron Treads is certainly the bigger enemy here, as with Grassy Terrain active on the field, you can utilize Steel Roller. It's a Steel-type attack. It has a very high base power, but it only works when there's terrain on the field. It'll also remove the terrain by using that move. Now, you might look at that Zamazenta and think, well, he can appreciate some healing. You know, you're going to be taking damage over time thanks to the burn. However, I think in this scenario, you don't necessarily mind losing your terrain because it's going to stop your opponent's Pokemon from recovering as well. But it looks like Iron Treads is just content to keep waiting out this trick room. Iron Treads really just being a, a, a more of a, a warning on Tatsunomi's end, like, hey, eventually I'm going to click the hit here. Uh... Rubble Boom hangs on with one HP, forcing the knockoff to go into that slot. Double target, finally Rillaboom goes down with what will be one turn of grassy terrain remaining. But what a crucial survival from the Rillaboom there. The hit from Body Press will bring Calyrex down low, but the, just because of that burn from so many turns ago, Gabby, it's really not doing enough damage. That's a very common strategy when facing off against Zamazenta as well. You lock in the Ghost-type Terrestrialization on your Incineroar, so it'll really struggle to deal damage. You put a burn onto that Zamazenta, so it will struggle to deal damage to everything else on your team, and you kind of wait it out. That being said, though, with the juxtaposition of the Iron Treads right next to it, all you have to do this turn is double protect, Trick Room ends, and now you're able to go on the offense and really threaten some huge damage. Tatsumi doing exactly what you mentioned, the double protect, so he doesn't take any damage from Kevin's super powerful Pokemon on his side. That high horsepower goes into Iron Head's protect, as well as Incineroar's knockoff there. So you can see that's multiple turns in a row or of the last times that Iron Head has been on the field, that he has been double targeting that slot because it is such a massive threat. It is, and now that the Twisted Dimensions have returned to normal as well, the Iron Treads is going to be one of the fastest Pokemon on the field. So if Kevin wants to avoid damage this turn, you can certainly protect for a turn, but that's not going to necessarily help you navigate the situation any better. I think you have to go on the offense. Just try and land as much damage into that Iron Treads as possible, and then also tr start setting things up so that your Choice Scarf Rillaboom in the back, or excuse me, Choice Scarf Shifu in the back of your party can deal some big damage. There's the high horsepower. Whoa. It's super effective, but it's not enough. He hangs on. It's in a roar. Going first because of Trick Room. Double target means Iron Treads. All of those turns of positioning. Mendic didn't get any attacks off. The Life 4 being knocked off as well. Here's the body press, but because of the prior health recovery from the grassy terrain turns, Calyrex hangs through the hit. And now Trick Room has ended. And now it's just the Zama, Zenta, and the Chi Yu standing on the field for Kevin or for Tatsuomi. Kevin still has a full health Incineroar, but it is going to be taking super effective damage from the Chi Yu's dark type attacks. And there, of course, is that Zamazenta as well still for Tatsuomi. That being said, though, the victory conditions for, heaven, for Kevin are starting to look good. All you have to do is take out that Chi Yu, and the Zamazenta is just going to struggle to deal damage. There's three minutes left here in this game one. That is how long and back and forth this battle between these juniors has gone. Dark Pulse though into the Ghost Incineroar. It's a one hit. For the one hit KO. Joy Specs, Beads of Ruin, boosted damage from this Pokemon is just so difficult. The Terror Ghost that helped Kevin on turn one is costing him late in the game. That Terra Ghost is not as safe to make if there is a Pokemon like Chi Yu in the back. So that is an adjustment that Kevin will have to make going into game two of this matchup. For now, you certainly can utilize your Urshifu to outspeed and knock out that Chi Yu before it uses something like Dark Pulse to knock out your own Calyrex Ice Rider. But it's at such low health, there is no more grassy terrain recovery around. Another body press honestly should do it. There is the surging strikes from Urshifu knocking out this Terra Ghost Chi Yu who did so much work for Tatsuomi here in the game one, getting that huge one hit KO into the Incineroar. Two minutes left, but I don't know if it's going to last long enough with these three Pokemon remaining. Body press into the Calyrex, takes it down. Finally, it felt like he's been clicking body press for literally 18 minutes and he finally gets rewarded. Well, technically, with three minutes remaining, your math is not far off there, Joe. <laughs> uh, but yes, we are down to the final two Pokemon here. Urshifu will continue to move 
first, and we will continue to see these surging strikes connect three times with the Zamazenta. It looks like it's going to take one more surging strikes to lock in that it KO burned. here. The Let's burned. see how Zamazenta. it does. Will Incineroar be able to help give Kevin the win? No! Ashifu can't take the body press! And Tat the field, turn one, and it didn't leave, even though That's it was right. burned. Junior's division world champion here in Honolulu, but Kevin Hahn, of course, might have something to say about that. It will be Incineroar and Calyrex Ice Rider as the lead for Kevin in game two, compared to Zamazenta Chiyu for Tatuomi. A big adjustment here from Tatsuomi as the presence of the Chi Yu threatens away the ghost type terrestrialization on that Incineroar. And it also threatens huge damage onto the Calyrex Ice Rider. A lot of times, Calyrex Ice Rider will terrestrialize into a fire type in this position just so you don't take super effective damage from this Pokemon or you even get resisted damage depending on what attack the opponent picks. I would not be surprised to see Kevin go for that this turn here. You could try and set up Trick Room again early, but I think you have to prioritize getting another burn down onto that Zamazenta, and then you need to start doing damage a bit more aggressively. And it's a tough decision for Tatsuomi, as you mentioned, the fake out potential into Zamazenta or or the Willowisp, which landed very early on in game one and just hurt so much damage, but he's gonna listen here and adjusting instead of Incineroar terrestrializing in game one. We're gonna go with the horse who brung us and Calyrex Terra Fire on this turn would resist the potential heat wave going into that slot. Fake out from Incineroar stops Zamazenta's attack on the turn thanks to that flinch, but it's a dark pulse into the still dark type. Incineroar are gonna take that way better here in game two. Now Trick Room is up, Calyrex fully healthy, and Incineroar still with a lot of HP. With a lot of HP and a lot of time on the field to land another burn against that Zamazenta to parting shot out to weaken the attack or the special attack of Tatsuomi's Pokemon. There are plenty of options that he did not have in the previous game, thanks to the fire type terrestrialization, and again, just how these Pokemon are gonna struggle to do damage as a result. GU, because of that choice specs held item, is forced essentially to swap out on this turn to reset the attack it wants to click later. And of course, Rillaboom is one of the best Pokemon you could choose to swap in. Besides oh. the quick lands, there's no wide guard! Zamazenta didn't click the wide guard, and Rillaboom takes the whole brunt of that hit! That's gonna be a one-hit KO and an attack boost for Calyrex! Learning from game one, where that Rillaboom swapped in to take high horsepower, that Chi you got off the field, Rillaboom knocked out, and now Zamazenta burned alongside of it. Insult to injury or burn as well. Two games in a row that Willis has connected. The oh, body press crit. is still super effective into the dark type Incineroar, so it's more than enough for the KO. They do trade two very strong Pokemon, but I would definitely say Kevin Hahn comes out on top. One, Zamazenta's his damage hurt because of the burn, and Calyrex got the attack boost. Calyrex got the attack boost. Zamazenta is going to be the slowest Pokemon on the field, but hey, that Iron Treads is still here. Tatsuomi opting to bring the same four Pokemon into this matchup that we saw from him in game number one. Going back to game number one, we saw this Iron Treads go for Protect in this situation just to see what Kevin will lock into. Again, we saw Kevin very consistently target down that slot with a high horsepower. Rillaboom's no longer there to take those attacks, so even if your opponent protects this turn, you're eventually gonna land it. Right, there's essentially no need to worry about the wide guard mind games for Glacier Lance when you have two Steel types on the field that would, don't wanna take a high horsepower and a Fire type Chiyu in the back that wouldn't wanna to swap into it either so Kevin smartly clicking the glacial or the uh, high horsepower excuse me Thunderbolt will go into the uh, protector and wouldn't hit iron treads anyway in case he hit that slot but uh, there are two turns of trick room left for Kevin there are two turns of trick room and three turns of grassy terrain which means uh, <laughs> that Zamazenta will have a couple more turns to not necessarily keep that burn damage around. That all being said though, Kevin is in the driver's seat for this matchup as he can go on the offense. One thing I do want to call out here is the fact that getting that Glacial Lance to connect with that Rillaboom a couple turns ago was so important for him because of the risk of wide guard on that Zamazenta. It's terrible! 
iron treads. We are not making it up, everybody. One of the bug typing, one of the most underrepresented types in all of Pokemon will help the iron treads take that high horsepower, resisting it. But the critical hit Thunderbolt means iron treads can't survive the turn. And Zamazent is all by himself on the battlefield right now. That could have been an amazing Terra for Tatsuomi, but instead it's going to result in a KO. Zamazenta doing its best to get a little bit of damage thanks to body press down onto the opposing Calyrex Ice Rider. Tatsuomi is now down to his final two Pokemon. Chi Yu, who cannot protect thanks to the Choice Specs item that it's holding, and that Zamazenta. This is all also going to be the final turn of Trick Room. So while this Calyrex Ice Rider still needs to click high horsepower to be safe, it is able to land that against the Chi Yu and pick up that KO. There's the one hit KO into Chi Yu. So it's Calyrex's second knockout of the game, getting another attack boost. And here's the booster energy uh, aided, I should say, Thunderbolt into Zamazenta doing over half. That's the other important thing from that turn before Gabby is that the boost energy onto Raging Bolt's special attack meant that Thunderbolt does even more damage, meaning the critical hit is even stronger. It is, and with just Zamazenta remaining on the field for Tatsuomi, I think it's time we turn our eyes towards a game number three here in the Juniors Finals at the World. It's gonna leave Honolulu as the Junior Division. If you're able to catch a Fire-type Terrestrialization with a high horse power, that could be one out, but instead, we're seeing a very similar lead here from Tatsuomi in game number three. This is for all the marbles, everybody. Game three, Kevin Han, Tatsuomi, Shimanuki, Tatsuomi with Chi you Zamazenta, they've swapped sides, but it's the same lead. And then Urshifu Rapid Strike next to Calyrex Ice Rider. That Urshifu has the Choice Scarf. It's faster than Chi Yu. It's faster than Chi Yu. And while we know that Chi Yu can terrestrialize to survive the hit from the Urshifu, that is a big commitment for Tatsuomi to make in game or turn one of game three here. If he has that Iron Tread still in the back of his party, he might want to save terrestrialization for that bug type. On the other side of the field, Kevin really can comfortably go for that fire type terrestrialization once again on the Calyrex, knowing that the Chiyu has already been revealed. But Zamazenta has to feel at least comfortable in some capacity this turn since Incineroar is not here to ruin its day and burn it with Willowisp. It's potentially in the back, you have to be prepared for that, but it is not on the field on turn one, so you can't burn these body presses into the other side. Kevin Hunt terrestrial terrestrializing Urshifu Rapid strike getting additional damage from those water attacks the surging strikes they're already massive and they're going to be even bigger in this game there's no protects there's no I can't protect anyway in front of GU or with GU that's only a two hit KO you don't even need the third surging strike a huge momentum shift for Kevin as he's able to secure a knockout on the first move of the first turn of this game three. And there's the body press. That does some pretty solid damage into the Urshifu. Definitely cannot take another one. Here's the Glacial Lance that is ineffective thanks to Zamazenta's steel typing. So you do lose your Chiyu, but you do get a lot of damage onto the Urshifu and Trick Room is not set up. And you also cover for the potential Rillaboom switch in that turn. Instead, Chiyu was just knocked out, which means we do get the Rillaboom here now. Urshifu, very threatened by this Pokemon. It is more than within a Grassy Glide knockout range. So if Kevin wants to save that Urshifu for later on in this game, again, to put more pressure down onto the Zamazenta, which Tatsuomi has shown us time and time again, is very comfortable staying on the field, you have to switch that Pokemon out. Without nope. Chiyu around, though, this seems like a great opportunity for Incineroar to take the field. Right, exactly. One, because Incineroar would love to just switch in general in front of the grass type on its, uh, on Rillaboom on the other end. But of course, because Rillaboom, or excuse me, or Shifu's locked into the Choice Scarf, Surging Strikes, it would take uh, a tough spot. But instead, he's going to use Surging Strikes with your Shifu. Knows that potentially this Rapid Strike Pokemon is not long for the rest of this match. So let me get some more critical hit damage off on the field. 
bring Zamazenta down to under half of its HP remaining. So the body press will knock out Urshifu. He's done its job. He's done you know, essentially one and a half uh, times the HP bars of Tatsuomi's Pokemon. So Urshifu has put in so much work in game three, but it's the U-turn from Rillaboom. The real question is, did Calyrex go for the Stomping Tantrum into Zamazenta? We'll have to wait just a little bit longer to get that information, but we do get the reveal of Tatsuomi's final Pokemon, and once again, it is the Iron Treads taking the field. It's Trick Room instead of the attack, so now on the second turn of the game, Kevin is able to twist those dimensions, and you have a free switch into either the Incineroar or whatever the fourth Pokemon in the back will be for Kevin. I love this positioning from Kevin there as well. One thing that Tatsuomi could have done in that previous turn is target down the, uh, the Calyrex Ice Rider with both an attack from that Zamazenta and a Wood Hammer from that Rillaboom to get very close, if not knock it out outright. But because we saw Kevin commit to that Trick Room, recognizing that he might lose a Pokemon that turn, as long as Trick Room is there for a Raging Bolt or a Raging Bolt can come in while the Urshifu is still around, that is still a very favorable board position for him as the Calyrex will still be able to attack first and the Raging Bolt should underspeed the Zamazenta as well. Yeah, the Zamazenta already under half HP, so it's in a really critical position for Tatsuomi. You know you can get some recovery every turn with the Protect, as grassy terrain is here, it'll give you a little bit of HP at the end of each turn. Double protect from Kevin here on the turn. We've actually seen that now multiple times that as he sets up his own trick room, he will then protect the following turn. Iron Heads goes, or excuse me, Iron Treads goes for the protect as well to keep itself safe. Body press doesn't hit into the Raging Bolt, so no damage from anybody, only health recovery. And Kevin, again, anticipating the Protect on that Iron Treads to ensure that Zamazenta can't find a knockout in this turn. Now you can fairly safely target into the Iron Treads with your Pokemon. You do still have to worry about a Wide Guard, and you do have to worry about the Rillaboom switching in for that Iron Treads as well. So there's a bit of a mind game here as to what attack Kevin uses with that Calyrex. But still, none of these Pokemon are necessarily worried about being knocked out this turn. And as you can see, Calyrex actually switching out to keep itself safe. So Kevin just going on the offense with the Raging Bolt. Kevin going to reveal his fourth and final Pokemon in game three being the Incineroar. Let's see if Tatsuomi was prepared for this situation. These trick room turns are so tricky to get through when you're not the Pokemon or the trainer that takes advantage of it. Terra Bug Iron Treads yet again in game three. Last time it was double targeted, so that's why it wasn't able to hang on, but he did get crit by a booster energy Thunderbolt from Raging Bolt. This time it goes towards the Zamazenta, and Tatsuomi has lost his restricted Pokemon in game three. It's this, just the Iron Dreads, Steel Roller with the grassy terrain into a fire type. It does hardly anything. It does hardly anything, it, and it will also tear up the grassy terrain on the field. Rillaboom will be back out shortly to reset that terrain and give Iron Dreads access to Steel Roller once again, but you really wanted to land that attack into the Calyrex Ice Rider, which is why you terastalize so you can take those hits. That all being said, though, with two turns of Trick Room remaining, Tatsuomi is on the back foot. You have access to fake out this turn. You can go ahead and maybe protect your Iron Treads for one of these turns or fake out and protect to get through both turns. But you have to find your way through Trick Room in order to keep an advantage and keep yourself in the game for that world champion title. Incineroar does not have a fire attack. There is no Flare Blitz because of Lilith being that fourth slot. So both of these, the grass and bug types on the field right now are not threatened by super effective damage. Draco Meteor lands into Iron Treads. It's going to be more than enough for the KO. And Tatsuomi losing his terrestrialized Pokemon. It's just Rillaboom versus the world. Rillaboom does have that grassy terrain to help keep its health higher and also boost the damage of its grass type attacks. But with a Calyrex Ice Rider waiting in the wings, will it have enough in the tank to take all three of these KOs? That's the forfeit, and Kevin Hahn throughout the season has proved he's the best junior in the world, EUIC champion, NAI. With an excellent...
excellent piloting of that. Regional championships from earlier this year and also only started very strong and potentially ending it off even strong match. Cannot wait to see how this is going to be going down. The leads, we're going to see Muride on up the bat. Farigraf's going to be the partner of Jose. Calyrex Urshi for the crowd, making the noise. Let's get to it. Yeah, it's a really aggressive start here from Luke going with that Muride on straight out of the gate. It's going to pressure both that Calyrex with this electric train being set up and more importantly, that Urshifu on race side. But the Urshifu on race side, not really immediately pressured because it is going to be able to get an attack off. It does have that focus sash as it's held out. I'm going to be able to take one attack and maybe get some really pivotal damage onto something like that Ferrigraph. You can't say the same for the Calyrex though. That has the Astral Barrage, but the Ferrigraph on Luke's side going to be immune to that. Not really going to be uh, really threatened by that Psychic either. So is it in a position where it can get a nasty plot off? It is pretty risky. Can you take an attack from this Mariadon? So we're not going to test it out. That will be the protect. Make sure you can scout out what this Mariadon on the opposing end does as their Shifu also detecting. Luke had spoken about how there is going to be these helping hat Draco Meteors, but the Volt Switch, an attempt to reposition. You'll have another opportunity on that next turn. Foul play. It would be the double up. Try and get as much damage to be starting off. Yeah, there's a bit risky there because you could maybe see the Furograph go for a Trick Room if you're expecting to get that Volt Switch off with the Mariadon, but not looking into that, just wanting to chase after that Calyrex as soon as possible. The nice thing now is that Ray does have an idea of what that Mariadon's locked into. It is choice locked, so it has to lock in again this turn to the Volt Switch. Does he go for that? Maybe that's something that Ray can take advantage of. I think that's the best move to be locked into since you would be able to pivot out, but you will be taking some damage before and a lot into that Mariadon, bringing it down just below half. Volt Switch a lot back into the Urshifu into response. It does have the Focus Sash, so it will be holding off and will have an opportunity to attack. It's either this Furigraph or whatever is Luke's going to be bringing in. It'll yeah, be interesting to see what the adjustment is to bring in from Luke's side of the field. Now that both targets on Ray's side have attacked, and it is that Brimsnarl. And that's going to be taking the close combat a little bit better. And the defense, that's not going to matter. We don't care about the drops. You're on one HP. You're on borrowed time. So that psychic noise is going to drop the Urshi for once and for all on this turn. Now, if Luke does have that Entai in the back, this is a huge move for him. Yes, he's taken a bit of damage from the Astro Barrage, but there's not been that Grim Nair boost, which is great. Nothing's been knocked out. You've still got all your Pokemon, and you've removed that big threat to the Entai, which could come in later on and utilize that Terrestrialization. You've got a nice position as well with your Grim Snarl out on the field. It is going to be able to threaten with those Thunder Waves, or even better, get some screen support set up. That light screen, especially supported by the light clay, means you're going to have an extended period of time with that protection on your side of the field, taking those Astro Barrages or even Psychics coming out from the Calyrex that are threatening right now. And this is why it's the, what Ray has in the back is going to be so important, because this Calyrex, you need to make sure it stays safe. And when this Grimmsnarl is threatening over on the opposing end with these Thunder Waves, if that all of a sudden targets into that Calyrex, that is going to be neutralized for the rest of the matchup. Going to be slower and a potential to not even attack. So I love the Amoongus joining the field. Yeah, it's a great play here from Ray. He's got that board position set up now where he has access to that Rage Powder. Nothing's really too threatened. The, the Psychic Noise is going to do super effective damage, but not enough to pick up the knockout onto the Amoongus. So there's no immediate reason for you to have to lock in with a Trastalization here with the Amoongus, unlike if the Entai was out on the opposite side of the field. Again, the Grimmsnarl is threatening with the foul play as well. So you've got that really great way of just protecting perfectly that Calyrex and opening the door for you to get a nasty plot off in this position. The one thing that I'd be worried about with the nasty plot on this turn is that we do want to be going for Trick Room. It's sometimes dangerous to go for a Trick Room against Amoongus, but since we do have that electric terrain, the only thing it'll really be able to do is some damage or just consistently keeping this Calyrex safe. This is going to be Terrastalization, the Terra Fairy for a little Amoongus, a little heart on top. So cute out here and trying to have a little bit more longevity in this is Rage Powder, move of choice. Keep the Calyrex safe. That's a really small terrestrialization. I was saying there's no need for it, but there is a need if you want to keep that Amoongus around a lot longer, taking away that psychic weakness and also reducing the damage from a foul play. And there is the nasty plot. Plus two special attack. This Calyrex is starting to get set up. Plotting on the demise and a lot of damage on the horizon. Amoongus just a little bit of damage in from that psychic noise, but this Calyrex is about to dish out a world of hurt. Reminder, that Virgraph is going to be fine up against 
against it, but you'll be doing a lot into that Grimstall, picking up the KO and anything that's swapping in. And you do have another move as well. You can't just be firing off with Psychics, psychics as well. No, that, and that's the thing. You can't just continue going for them now. I think you need to readjust. If you are Luke, you can't allow this Calyrex just to freely fire off these Astral Barrages. And this Amoongus is in a great position where we've already mentioned the Psychic No is not going to be doing too much. And even if we do see a Thunder Wave, the Amoongus is not really too worried about that so slow anyway. Yeah, the Amoongus, that's just soaking up this paralysis from the Calyrex Shadow Rider is another Astral Barrage plus two boosted. The Grim Snarls already taken some damage. So coming on out, eliminating it. You do not have to worry about the Thunder Waves from here on out. And the Phragorath, sure, it's not taking any damage, but this Calyrex now is at a plus three and constantly threaten the partner Pokemon. So perfect time for the Trick Room to make sure that horse is moving last. Yeah, the, the Trick Room being sent up uh, is really in one way a nice thing for the Amoongus, right? Because it's so slow and it could almost threaten with those foes. But because the Electric Terrain is still active on the field, that's not a thing that you can utilize now. The Entai coming onto the field for Luke going to be very threatening to this Amoongus, especially the double up from that Frigorath. And both of these Pokemon will move first. The big risk here is if Raid decides to go for a Rage Powder, there is a chance of the Fully Paralysis yes. from that Thunder Wave. So if you can't get the Rage Powder off, then your Calyrex is sitting a little bit open, especially with a Life Orb boosted Entei that can go for that Terrestrialization into the normal type now and have that immunity from those really threatening Astral Barrages. And that is not... A there's no way around that risk with the Amoongus. With the Paralysis, you you go for it, and it's mm. not going to do anything. It cannot keep the partner Calyrex safe on this turn, but maybe the Punish won't be there. Entei, the Protect for that first turn. Oh, and that's so unfortunate, but I mean, you get away with it slightly there because of the Entai. Just going for that Protect. The Psychic Noise coming out into the Amoongus. Going to be able to take that a little bit better, but that's the sort of risk that you're taking at this point. The Calyrex going for the Protect there. Yeah. Cannot go for it again you've got to hope if you go for the same play this time around and the entai doesn't go for that terrestrialization and also that you don't get paralyzed it was a no harm no foul on the turn i think it was just a double protect to try and get through that first turn of trick room but a real testament of how this can really just go downhill from here on out if the calyrex had to protect it and the glute did want to go on the offensive that could have been absolutely massive so you know from Ray, that must be a, a little nerve-wracking from here on out because you've seen the potential for where this can go wrong yeah, and I think if you've got one, you think that's it out of the way now. So hopefully Amoongus can get through the rest of this game and provide a little bit extra support. And you will see the Electric Terrain has gone off the field now, but we're not keeping the Amoongus on the field. We're going to let it just go back, use that regenerator ability now that the noise is kind of worn off and the Raging Bolt enter the field. It's going to be terrestrialization for Luke here in game one. And that Ente that we talked about, the importance of it. Here is the drastization into the normal type. So the Calyrex with these plus three special attack, if it wants to keep firing off Astro Barrages, it's not going to do anything. And the Helping Hand, we are looking to go on the offensive. Can it be the MVP? Not just offensive drastization, but offensive as well. Extreme speed into the Raging Bolt, dropping a lot of damage. Yeah, and the big thing is the Psychic here into that Entai. And is it enough at plus three? It is enough, taking down that huge important Pokemon for Luke. That one hit KO, you needed this damage, you needed to stick around, but this Calyrex, now another boost, but I think it's too late. No amount of slowing down from Luke. You do have this Maridon, but this Calyrex hasn't been touched. It's sitting at this plus four, and sure, maybe it's in this trick room, but Luke has not made a scratch on it so far. Yeah, and that's the thing, and is one foul play from the Furograph gonna be enough to knock it out? Maybe not, depends how the Calyrex Shadow Rider has been trained, so it's at least gonna be able to fire off one Astro Barrage. The Maridon in a pin position as well, it's slower, it's gonna have to take an Astro Barrage. Can it take a plus flow? Probably not. The Psychic Noise into the Raging Bolt, not even going for it if we were strained wrong. But I think at the World Championships, the Calyrex will be all the right stats. Dragon Falls into the Maradon, super effective, super critical hit. It will drop, and now the Frigorath, last Pokemon standing, and it's not going to be able to get it done. No, no, and the, the Trick Room's still in effect, so the, the Calyrex, the last thing to actually attack this turn, the Maraidon not got enough in the tank to be able to take that Raging Bolt attack. Frigorath against the three Pokemon now on Ray's side of the field, and it probably feels a little bit too far for him to make a comeback in this one. Ray taking it with quite dominating fashion in this first game. 
100%. We talked about the importance of this Calyrex Shadow Rider and not allowing it to get set up. This is going to be great to know the amount of damage that you'll do from here on out with that foul play, but of course not dropping it. Still plenty in the tank. Good, but a second Raging Bolt. That was a self KO. <laughs> Self worth it, I think, taking it down and then closed up with this Calyrex. It's been so phenomenal through this first game and closing it out for Ray. Port of options and we have all the fun here as we hop right back into the match. Game number two, Frigoraf Maridon on the opposing end. It'll be the Amoongus to support the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Yeah, the electric chain coming out, we've already talked about it. It is going to give you that alleviation against a small threat from the Amoongus, but it is still a threat at the end of the day because it is going to be able to redirect. It frees up the Calyrex to go for that nasty plot here. The Furograph obviously gets the Psychics, the boost in this situation, the defense boost isn't really going to be too useful and you've got to try and weave some way about getting the Amoongus off the field as soon as possible and going for that foul play which is doing good damage into that Calyrex. If you can get maybe some sort of damage off early on, on Luke's side of the field onto that Calyrex, it's half the battle. If you do think that there is the possibility of Rillaboom, a switch is great. And bringing the Entei out a lot earlier in the match, we'll be able to pressure on this next turn as when you're staring down a Choice Lock Pokemon on the opposing end, I'm not necessarily too surprised to see Protect coming out from both Pokemon on Ray's side of the field. The Psychic Noise, Null and Void. And now, how will Ray react to the Entei? Yeah, and it's a nice patient play here from Ray again, just probably wanted to scout out what that Maraidon locked into and then it just next turn going in after that decision's been made. But Luke making a really nice play here, not locking into the Volt Switch because knowing maybe the Protect is coming out from both these Pokemon, hard switching into the Entai and now it's in a position where it is going to be able to Terrasilize, have that pure immunity from the Astral Barrage because of the normal typing and then start to pressure that Amoongus it has just protected. Now if you are Ray, do you have something in the back that you could switch in from the Amoongus and if you are going down that route it does leave the Calyrex a little bit vulnerable in that situation where if a foul play comes out and you don't have that Rage Powder support you're going to be taking heavy damage. Yeah, Ray definitely has a couple of Pokemon that would be able to take a Sacred Fire better, but no swap and helping hand this Entei. This could be a lot of damage and we'll be going straight into the Amoongus as no terrestrialization will be taking the full force of this hit. Calyrex wants to make sure once we get past this turn, it'll have that plus two to the special offense to really be able to hit on that go button as Sacred Fire it will connect and Amoongus will go down. Calyrex Shadow Rider losing its partner. Yeah, and that's a big turn here for Luke, removing that key support option here from Ray's side of the field. But the thing is, it's done its job almost. It's allowed that Calyrex to at least get a nasty plot up. Now sitting on plus two special attack, gonna be able to threaten Luke's side of the field. But there is Terrasilization active on both sides of the field. Now the one Pokemon that you would say from Ray's end is perfect against that Entai is the Urshifu. It is gonna come in and it is gonna threaten with those surging strikes, do super effective damage. Even if it terrestrializes, you can just lock in with the close combat there and you've got the Unseen Fist ability so you, you don't even need to worry about the Protect. You can remove that Pokemon quite happily. And when Entei is the attacking threat on this turn, and well, slower than this Calyrex Shadow Rider, I mean, the Calyrex can just start firing off attacks and the Ferrigarath, I mean, we saw how much the Foul Blade did, but at the same time, it's not really threatening too fast into this Urshifu, especially since it does have this Focus Ash. Yeah, and the one thing you would say is that Ray does have access to that Terrestrialization, not using on the Amoongus here, could go for it onto the Calyrex and get rid of that Foul Play threat. Instead, it's going to be the stellar terrestrialization on to this Urshifu. We're not worried about defensive of all. We are making sure the damage output we have is what we need. Not the only terrestrialization on this turn, though. Luke, this is time to make sure your Pokemon can make it on through the Dark type for the Furgaraf. Yeah, it's going to boost that foul play even further, but it is going to be weak now to that close combat. Has Ray kind of scouted that out and maybe covered that slot? Gazin, then the Calyrex might be in a little bit of trouble. Extreme speed coming out into that Urshifu. That's going to be breaking the Sash, but the importance of the Terrestrialization. Sure, you, you can be hit by the Astro Barrage, but not by the Psychic. No damage in, but the Surging Strike's firing off. But how well will the Frigoraph take it? Because it's going to be able to hold off and start firing off and attack back. It does survive. Is it going to lock in with that foul play into the Calyrex, taking that immunity to the Psychic? Here is the foul play. It's into the Calyrex. And will it be enough? Of course it'll be enough. Huge knockout for Luke to take a step further in clawing back this match. This Cal 
Alaric Shadow Rider that was so problematic in the first game of the set is now gone. And two Pokemon remaining for Ray. The adjustment, the Rillaboom coming on out. But Luke in so much more of a commanding position the last time around, thanks to this aggression and the Fergaraf that we talked about how little damage it can do and proving us wrong. Huge terrestrialization. Yes, so surprising and a really great one because you do expect it onto that Entire. You think, okay, get the immunity from that Astro Barrage, but no, Luke pulling the Master Stroke there and really catching Ray off guard. Still got a number of Pokemon he can utilize. The Grim's not going to enter the field and really give a little bit more alleviation because there is that threat now from that stellar terrestrialized Urshifu on Ray's side. The surging strikes though, less damage because we've already already used up the boost from that one as Rillaboom is just gonna be dealing that last little amount of damage into the Ferrograph to finally drop it down. At this point, it has done what it needs to do and Luke can freely bring something out onto the field to support this Grimmsnarl, which in this case can also try and make sure you outspeed and start going for these Thunder Waves. Yeah, and that's the thing. The Thunder Wave is going to be really useful here. The screens, you've got to reflect if you need to, but the big important Pokemon that you want to bring out onto the field right now is going to be that Maraidon, overriding the terrain, winning that terrain battle, and now you are instantly pressuring that Urshifu. The Rillaboom can resist, and it does have the Assault Vest, so we'll be able to take those attacks a little bit better, but not considering it, locked in cancellation, tied up. And really pressing on the pedal, and from the... The final way to be ending off his time in seniors. Let's make some noise and get into game three here. Adjustments. Calyrex next to the Urshu for Igarath Maridon yet again for Luke. Yeah, nice adjustment here. Again, going from that Amoongus into the Urshifu here. You've got that immediate damage. If you are the Calyrex, if you are the Urshifu on Ray's side of the field, you may protect that Calyrex here, maybe protect the Urshifu here, scout out what the Maraidon's going to do again, or do you try and play into that, maybe expecting Luke to expect that from your side of the field, switch that Maraidon out, maybe go after that Ferrograph because of how threatening it was in that second game. Remove that from the field. You remove the Armor Tail. You kind of free up some of your more options where you've got access to those priority attacks as well. You don't need to worry about the Trick Room either, so your Calyrex can hmm, breathe a little sigh of release when that Pokemon has gone down. Every match so far, we have seen the double protect on this first turn, but Ray is going to go on the offensive. Astro Barrage, nothing into the Ferrigraph, but a lot of damage into the Maridon. The follow-up, but it's going to be a Draco Meteor miss into the Calyrex. That could have been everything, but instead, That is so unfortunate for Luke going for the Draco Meteor and missing. You would have got such a good return there from that Pokemon, keeping it on the field. The Psychic Noise coming into the Urshifu, taking it down to its Sash, but not enough. Ray taking a huge advantage because of that miss and because he's been brave and not protecting that first turn, going for pure damage. The bounce back you have to have from that losing the restricted on the first turn. You can come back from that. If you have something like the update, there is possibilities, but absolutely devastating. This is gonna be an uphill battle from this point on. In the Calyrex, it has not been damaged whatsoever. So even if the Entei does target into the Urshifu here to take it down, the Calyrex will be able to respond. Yeah, and will be able to respond, and it probably in that position now where it could go for a nasty plot here, maybe even go for a terrestrialization here, because it's still available on the race side of the field. One thing you could say Luke has got, and it, an advantage of here, can terrestrialize that Entai now. Go for that extreme speed, get rid of the Urshifu. Once that's gone, then you can start concentrating on that Calyrex a little bit easier. You don't have to worry about the Astral Barrage so much, but you still have to worry about that Psychic. You've got the Ferrograph there that can help with speed control. You can flip the dimensions. The Amoongus isn't on the field right now. If it is in the back though, that comes a little bit risky because your electric terrain is now on a timer. In the turn two, it's time for the terrestrialization of the Ferrograph. Last time, game two, we saw that foul play coming out from that castellization and what it was able to do to the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Can it do what the Baridon could? Not extreme speed. Urshifu goes down. Is there going to be the follow-up from this Ferrigraph for a double KO onto this turn? We have to get past this Calyrex first as Psychic into this Entei instead. A lot of damage, but not enough. This is going to be the moment, Mo, for Blue to see if he can come back into this match, and it will be that foul play. Took the KO last time around, and it will again. Calyrex, one hit KO. 
seeing the Draco Media miss that turn one, deciding I'm not going to settle on that. I'm bringing my Entai onto the field. I'm going to use that extreme speed. I'm going to get rid of the threat in the Urshifu and go once again for that successful terrestrialization on the Furgraph. Take advantage of that boosted foul play and get rid of the restricted on race side of the field, leveling the playing field going into this next turn. We talked so much about the importance of the Entei, but this Furgraph has been MVP so far, doing what the Restricted could not, and now raid down to final two Pokemon. It's the support, and it is the Raging Bolt. The Raging Bolt, since it's been introduced in the format, has definitely been a force to be reckoned with, and this one does have the potential for that damage with that Life Orb. Can it do enough, though? It doesn't have access to that priority, thanks to that Furgraph. So it has to go slow but steady to take these KOs. Yeah, I, the thing is you really want to utilize that Thunderclap in this situation, but with that Frigoroth on the field with the Armor Tail, that is blocked until that Pokemon exits. The Amoongus as well is going to be heavily threatened from that end time now with the Sacred Fire. It's going to do a lot of damage into that Pokemon, but maybe scouting out a Protect from Ray's side, the end time going for a Protect of its own. Amoongus as well, not wanting to take attack from this potential Entei. So it's going to be the other two to act on this turn as Raging Bolt targets into the Frigraph. It's going to be hanging on on this turn, though. Not going to be fall, but Psychic Noise targeted into the Protected Mushroom instead. Yeah, and that's a really nice play there. Getting some damage onto the Frigraph as soon as possible. Prioritizing getting rid of that Pokemon is really what you want to do. We talked about the importance of that Armor Tail. It is going to be something you have to remove as soon as possible to kind of free up the ability to use that Thunder clap some of those priority attacks that are going to be so useful in closing this game out maybe you have to sacrifice the amoongus here and go for that rage powder to try and draw in some of those big threatening attacks from anti on that on luke's side of the field notable there is still terrestrialization for a raise so when the moment counts the most we're going to be able to see the sparkles come out onto the match not for offensive on that raging bolt though instead Wanting to make sure that this Amoongus can stick around as long as possible into that fairy type. Trying to make sure if a Sacred Fire comes out, it's going to be helping out, but helping hand. Can we get the damage here? Rage Powder, the Amoongus is... You got the damage with the Raging Bolt. You need to keep this Pokemon safe. But is this going to be enough? You drop the weakness, and you're going to take this hit. But you oh, take the burn. It's a burn. It does survive, though. That's all Ray needs to do for this one turn, because maybe that is enough to remove the NZ from the field. And the Thunder will come out. A Thunderbolt enough to take that down, not into the Frigraph. So that gets to stick around for a little bit longer. All right, we got these two Pokemon, the Burnt Little Mushroom, on a little bit of borrowed time as we get into the ending of this game number one. Ruluk, this will be the Grim Snarl, once well trained, as it's down to his final two as well on this full health. Yeah, the, the Amoongus now in a good position to just go for another one of those Rage Powders. Can the Raging Bolt get rid of this Ferragraph on Luke's side of the field? And then it becomes pretty much a one-on-one -on -one situation. You've got the more offensive power on Ray's side. So it's all for Luke to do here. Rage Powder coming out as a light screen is set up. Trying to make sure that you can out damage your opponent, not take too much as Thunderbolt into the Vergraph. More than enough to bring Luke down to final Pokemon. And with the sport of one and the only move of choice being this foul play, does Luke have enough to close this out? Ah, it's going to be very, very difficult. You'd say with the burn on the Amoongus is really impactful here. But the big thing is the electric terrain has now disappeared. So that Grimmsnarl is going to be susceptible to those spores. If the Amoongus can get one of those off, maybe you take a chance to just protect the Raging Bolt one turn. Scout out that the foul play is going into that slot. Utilize the Amoongus. Go for the spore, but we're not going to have it. Instead, the forfeit's locked in. And with that, Ray Yamanaka is going to be your Pokemon World Champion here in the set. And in the end, being able to close it out. First year in playing now in Scarlet and Violet. First game, first generation, and a world champion. What a feat. What an accomplishment. Uh, now, maybe what kind of game plan you want to go for, but this Maraidon, again, a very classic composition. Come on, world championships. For Luca, you are right away going to see this Maraidon next to this Urshifu, but for Utah, it is going to be the Pelipper and the Landorus. This Landorus is in such a commanding position at the moment. You've got the rain on the field, so that not only allows Sansa's Storm to be able to deal 100% accuracy, but Pelipper is also rocking that helping hand. If you can give a boost to the Landorus with sheer force as the ability going through for something like a Sansa Storm, that is going to be able to remove the Maraidon from play. 
and the Landorus. It sees the perfect target on the other side. This Maridon with the Terra Fairy is going to be weak to the Sludge Bomb, but it's also being pressured down by those super effective Sandseer Storms. So this could be one way that we actually need to see Luca make one of these split second decisions. Do you try to Terrasalize down? Do you try to actually try to get yourself off the field with something like a Volt Switch? It's going to come down to this first turn. The Urge Review on Luca's side as well, having that Focus Sash gives it a little bit of flexibility. You can apply a lot of pressure with something like the Surging Strikes, particularly boosted up by the opposing Pelipper's Reign and really kind of provide a way of getting through that opposing Landorus. But let's see how this turn is going to play out. It does have a Focus Sash, so it's going to be able to withstand one of those hits as well before the Pelipper may be able to follow up. But that's why this Maridon is going to be forced to have to manually switch off the field. It's going to be the Iron Hands that takes its place. Hopefully able to take these hits also. You see the attack boost come through from this pork drive as Look at that, there is a terrestrialization. Yes, the Iron Hands joins the field. It is holding that Assault Fest, so it's gonna be able to, you know, withstand a decent amount of the special attack that the opposing Landorus is able to throw its way, but it is gonna go for that defensive terror type into the ghost typing here as well, as Pelipper does use its wings to give a helping hand to the Landorus. This is one way that the Pelipper can bypass some of these speed interactions, just be able to help out as the Slut Bomb gets tanked here by this Iron Hands. In response, this Urshifu with the Surging Strikes, it's gonna be three hits, and this Landorus, that's gonna be the only thing it gets to do for this game number one as it goes down. Fantastic play by Luca. The one hit KO removing this threatening Landers from play. I love the way Luca was able to pivot this in here. From Utah's side, it looks like he was thinking that Maridon is going to go for the Terra Fairy. So then it's going to be a lot more vulnerable to something like the Sludge Bomb coming through from the Landorus. So a fantastic switch by Luca, not only using that Assault Vest to take the attack, but enabling the Urshifu to come through and get that damage on the board. It's going to, was a very tough turn for both of our trainers having to think about that, right? Is that Terra going to come through? Are you actually going to see a switch? And so both of them really having to make that quick decision. But where do we go from here, Lou? Because right now, Utah is going to be down one Pokemon and critically down the Terra. It's gone. That's very true, and it's going to be interesting to see which Pokemon Utah has in the back. If it is something like that Ice Rider Calyrex, you can start getting into a position where you might be able to set up the Trick Room and gain a little bit more momentum on your field. And we are going to see the Calyrex join the battle here now. This is your big offensive powerhouse. And again, you have the utility with something like the Pelipper to be able to go for a helping hand here, just to be able to boost up some extra damage. Or at the same time, try and deal out some big damage with a Hurricane, because those do hurt, considering it's holding a Life Orb. Yeah, but the problem here is that because that Terror is gone, this Calyrex can't even go for defensive Terra with the Terra Grass. Maybe a little bit of good news for it is Luca is going to remove the Urshifu from the field in favor of that Maridon. So what in, is going to happen on this next turn as do you see the Hadron Engine activate once again and Calyrex is also going to get out of there. It's a little bit of a bait here actually as Amoongus joins the field. So we do see this kind of slower mode in the back that was kept for Utah as the fake out comes through into that Amoongus. Going to be able to retaliate with a little bit of Rocky Helmet as Pelipper does go for that Weather Ball is going to be bringing the water type attack down into Iron Hands but not enough to get the knockout. The bulk there really prevailing for Iron Hands. Not quite enough but now this the Simungus is on the field. While it's not going to be able to go for something like the Spore because the electric terrain is active, none of these Pokemon will be able to get put to sleep. It does have the opportunity here to go for something like the Pollen Puck or the Clear Smog, just get a little bit of damage down, but it can also go for the Rage Powder if it wants to. That's what we see with this Pelipper switching off the field. This is what you two wants, though. You want to make sure that you have the Calyrex next to the Amoongus so you can provide that redirection to enable a safe setup with the Trick Room. But it's always a little risky switching in, and at least if the... Mo oh, it's going to be just the Draco Media straight out the blocks it into the Amoongus. That's gone. It does not have the redirectional support anymore. That's going to be another knockout here for Luca as Yuta, just like that, is down to his two final Pokemon in this first game. The Wild Charge as well is going to have to be taken here by this Ice Rider Calyrex. And on this Electric Terrain, not only is it going to be able to get a boost from that, but you're also going to see that massive attack added in. The Recoil, though, going to eliminate this Iron Hands from this game, but there's still so many more Pokemon that Luca gets to depend on. I mean, honestly, Luca has played this so well. Losing the Iron Hands is actually a benefit because you get the option to bring your Urshifu back onto the field, and it still has its Focus Sash intact. Two more turns of Selectric Terrain as well for Maridon to play around. Pelipper also does not want to have to face it looks like that's the forfeit coming in from Yuta. Luca's going to take game one. Calyrex sets up. And you also have Amoongus for redirectional support. Lots of options, but let's see what the trainers have gone for. Well, there's going to be an adjustment here from Luca Ooh. as we do get a chance to see this Ogre Prawn, Heartflame, and the Maridon. But here for Yuta, it is going to be that Iron Valiant finally making an appearance on this stream next to his Landorus. 
Utah is not slowing down, instead going on the speedy side here. You've got the Iron Valiant on the field with the boost that it's going to get from Quark Drive. Now it's going to be extra speedy and you have the Choice Scarf on this Landorus. Iron Valiant's going to be the fastest thing on the field. And that Lander is not too far behind it either. And so now, Luca's gonna have to figure out what do you actually go for here. With this Iron Valley, it is running Spirit Break, so that is one way that you can start to control a bit of this special attack output mm -hmm. from this Maridon, because you have no way to actually remove the terrain. So it's always going to keep that Hadron Engine boost to its special attack. The other thing that you have, though, is if you really want to, you can consider trying to switch something in or go for coaching. There's a lot of options here for this Iron Valley to provide in terms of support. It's gonna be tempting to go for the Spirit Break, though to kind of force the terrestrialization on the opposing Maridon, but then Maridon has that redirectional support with the um, Ogre Pond next to it to be able to provide that redirection. You do see the terrestrialization come through though. It has been forced. There is no Dragon type on the field anymore. A pure Fairy type in the form of Maridon here. Something like a Dazzling Gleam would deal a significant chunk of damage. It's gonna be some redirection coming in for the Ogre Pond, just gonna save it from taking a Spirit Break and luring its special attack. Well, the Spirit Break into the Ogre Pond is going to do just a little bit of damage, is resisted though, and that special attack drop not going to matter on this physically offensive threat, but it is gonna be the Sludge Bomb follow-up that gets the knockout at the end of the day. But the most important thing is that this Maridon is going to be alive and also with full HP to go for the Volt Switch in the um, into the Iron Valley, which is a one-hit knockout. You've removed one big threat from the field here, as well as enabling Luca the opportunity to now adjust and switch up the ball position. The Vault Switch will mean a Pokemon has to come into the fruition, but then because you have had that other partner removed, you can also bring a second Pokemon into play. It's going to be the Iron Hands. We know that Fake Out Potential is on the field, as well as once again boosting up that Quark Drive and boosting the attack of the Iron Hands. Oh boy. <laughs> We've got two future Paradox Pokemon in this match, but it's going to be the Iron Hands that continues to prevail above all right now. Do you know what I wonder, though, is if Yuta is now going to completely switch things up here. You went with the fast mode front and center. Now you have the utility to bring in something slower from the back. It is that Calyrex Ice Rider, and you have the offensive pressure from something like the Landorus that could go for a lot of damage right now into both these opposing Pokemon. If you've got the Calyrex in play, you can try and get the Trick Room. And if there is indeed something like the Amoongus in the back as well, that could be a fantastic endgame state for Yuta. It could be, but there's not really a great way to remove this Maridon before it can potentially get a decent amount of damage out. You look at the landers with this Sludge Bomb, and it's not necessarily guaranteed to be enough for a knockout in a lot of cases. So if there's any little bit of extra damage that could come through, maybe this Calyrex is able to withstand another attack. It's why this Terra is going to be so important to have preserved for something like this Ice Rider to have a defensive capability. I almost wonder if the Terra on the Landorus could be good as well, though, because you know Fake Out's on the field with the Iron Hands. You're locked into Sludge Bomb, and you're going to be able to do a significant chunk of damage to the opposing Maridon here. If you do indeed go for something like the Ghost Terror, then you can avoid being hit by that fake up. But the Grass Terrestrialization is also a key component. A lot of decisions here for Utah. A lot of decisions and not a whole lot of time to do it as he is down a game in this set. One more win here, and Luca's going to become your world champion. So it comes down to this. The Ice Rider Calyrex going to take on that Grass Terrestrialization. He's going to have to hope that it can get through and survive some of his damage, and that this Trick Room is going to be the exact environment that it wants to be in. But as there's going to be Ooh. a fake out here, this Ice Rider Calyrex is not going to be able to get a chance to move as a Sled Bomb in return. Definitely not enough to knock out this Maridon. So it's free to go for another Draco Meteor, another one hit knockout. And that is going to be Luca one step closer to becoming the world champion. No stopping Luca at this point in time. You needed the helping hand to be able to get the KO with that Sludge Bomb. It just wasn't enough without a critical hit to completely deactivate this Maridon on the field. Fantastic play from Luca here. And you see the Amoongus coming in as well. The last two remaining Pokemon for Yuta in his bid to become the world champion. Trick Room is not in play. However, Amoongus can now go for a little bit of redirection. You know that the opposing Maridon is now locked into that Draco Media. It's had its special attack dropped, so it's not going to be dealing as much damage. Yeah, and if you are able to actually get this Trick Room set up, then it is going to be a easier way to try to get through this Maridon. You have the speed in your control, and you will be able to start dishing out some of these Glacial Lances. As Maridon does go for a Draco Meteor, though, into the Amoongus, it's going to do a decent amount of damage. And no di redirection coming through here. Instead, just the natural double target from Luca into the, the Amoongus. on! The Iron Hand's going to take a little bit of recoil from the Rocky Helmet, but critically, Yuta still has two Pokemon remaining on the field. It did not go for the redirection. It goes for the Pollen Puff, has Calyrex's back, and if Calyrex is going for the Trick Room, it flips the match on its head. Now the speeds are going to be in control, potentially, for this Ice Rider Calyrex, but we have to see how it's going to fare against something like this Iron Hand. 
Iron Hands is definitely a Pokemon that can be trained to be very, very slow, and in some situations can indeed match that Calyrex in form. So we're going to have to see exactly how these trainers have trained their Pokemon in terms of speed and who is going to be the faster. Amoongus really sitting on borrowed time here. There's no other Pokemon to switch out with, so the regenerator ability is null and void. And because the electric trainer is on the field, you cannot go for any spores. If anything, Amoongus here needs to maybe, I think, only go for the redirection. You've got clear smog, but I don't think that's going to do too much. Although into the Maridon, it might be enough. It might be enough, absolutely, but Amoongus and Trick Room is going to be the first to move. Iron Hands is going to take a very pitiful amount of damage there, and as it goes for the Drain Punch now, it is going to get a little bit of recoil thanks to hitting into the Rocky Helmet. And it went before the Calyrex as well, so able to get a little bit of damage back. This could be indicative of how they are trained indeed. Of course, Amoongus does go down, and now Calyrex has the utility to go for that Glacial Lance. Instead, however, it's high, high horsepower. horsepower. I mean, that's one way to do it. You get a KO and you will get the Chilling Nay boost as well, but Maridon is yet to move. It is yet to move, but it is at minus four special attack. So it may be, as long as this is not going to be a critical hit, it is going to just do a little bit of damage at a time. Now that Maridon is at minus six, as the Ferrigraph is now going to come in as that fourth and final here for Luca. This is not what you want to see if you are the Calyrex here. Not only is the Electric Sea boosting up the defense on Farigaraf's side, but it is rocking that foul play. And as your attack boost from Chilling Nay get higher and higher, foul play's potential gets bigger and bigger. Calyrex going for the Glacial Lance. However, this is going to be enough to get the KO on the ride on, but Farigaraf, no, it's still here. It's going to have to take another one of those. It's going to have to take another one, and it's going to have to survive another at attack coming in from this Farigaraf. And so, as we see the Chilling Nay boost come up one more time, it's going to be even more detrimental as the foul play goes into the Calyrex and brings it down so low. So close, but Calyrex hanging on. It is now a 1v1. Calyrex is going to move first. There's a single target down into the Ferrigara. And that's going to be enough for the knockout. We're going to a game three between Utah and Lucas. Between Utah, Ishigaki, and Luca Cherry Belly. The leads are out once again. Maridon with its best buddy Ogapon by its side for redirection. And now we have got the Speedy and the Slow. We have got the Iron Valiant and the Calyrex Ice Rider. Both of them on the field right now. It kind of forces your hand. What mm -hmm. sort of mode would you potentially want to go for? And let's not forget that this Iron Valiant has the opportunity to go for coaching that would help to increase the attack stat of this Ice Rider Calyrex right away. I mean, if you go for the Terra Grass as well on that Calyrex Ice Rider, you're in a difficult spot here. It means you will resist the electric type attacks from the opposing Maridon. Draco Meteor will be neutral, but you are fearing that opposing Ogre Pond. If it wants to go for that Fire Type Ivy Cudgel, it is going to be dealing a huge chunk of damage. But whether or not with the coaching, being able to boost up your defense as well, that's going to be able to put you in a survivability spot is yet to be determined. And if there is not a terrestrialization coming through from that Maridon, a Glacial Lance is going to hurt like a trap. It will. So uh, I think it comes down once again to what's going to happen on this very first turn as we do see the leads on the board. Do you also continue to think about Trick Room setup in this moment? I wonder. Exactly. Trick Room has the capability here, and really, Yuta is in, I think, Luca's head. What's it going to be? Redirection coming through from that Ogre Pond, drawing in all of the attack potential, maybe something like a Spirit Break, but instead, it's going to be that coaching coming through. And as you can see, Calyrex is going to be gaining the attack and the defense that is not redirected by the Follow Me. But the Draco Meteor into that slot, it's not going to help you with that with your special defense. But this Ice Burner Calyrex does hold on as he gets to set up the Trick Room. Now the speeds are very, very interesting. The Iron Valiant in a little bit of a detrimental position, but you could always use this opportunity to switch something in from the back or let the Iron Valiant go down, be happy for it to be KO'd and allow it to try and go for something in return here. You could always maybe, maybe switch out for something like the Amoongus, maybe just get some Rocky Helmet damage here. But for me, it's about the Calyrex. In this situation, do you actually go for a Protect and allow one turn of Trick Room to allow for a ball position switch from that Iron Valiant? Or do you just go for the Glacial Lance? I think you just have to try to make the most of the attack boost that you've been given, right? Mm -hmm. You may not necessarily be able to uh, get a big knockout onto uh, this Ogre Pond, but also depends on maybe how these are trained. But at the very least, you've scared away this Maridon. It is going to retreat, and instead, it is going to be Iron Hands that takes its place. So let's see what happens from here after we see this attack boost for the Iron Hands. Well, Yuta doesn't necessarily want to see this Iron Hands. We know that it has the potential to be faster in Trick Room against that Calyrex, and with the very low HP remaining, it's got something like a fake out should be able to get the edge on it the Pelipper joining the field though bringing that rain is just going to enable none of these fire type attacks to deal as much damage but Ogapon playing defensively and going for that spiky shield spiky shield means that you are actually going to have it on the field a little bit longer it's going to deny a boost another boost to this ice murder calories attack 
but as it's going to be the Iron Hands that has to take its place, it has the Assault Fist, it doesn't necessarily have a way to boost up its defenses, so that's over 50% it's going to take from a single Glacial Lance. If I'm the Iron Hands now, I've got a decision to make. Do you go for the Fake Out into the Calyrex, or does the Calyrex protect? And then you wouldn't go for the fake hand to the Pelipper because if you leave the Calyrex unchecked, a Nullic Glacial Lance is going to do a huge chunk of damage. But if you leave the Pelipper unchecked, something like the Weather Ball is going to hurt going down into the, or a Hurricane even, into the opposing Ogre Palm. That's why we're going to see the Amoongus actually end up taking this Pelipper's place instead, and the Calyrex smartly protecting itself so it doesn't have to fear a fake out. Fake out does go into the Amoongus though, so now that you see that come through, it's going to be a little bit more Rocky Helmet recoil and the Ivy Cudgel going into the protected Calyrex. I really like this play by Yuta, sacrificing a turn of Trick Room to switch up the ball position because now Amoongus is going to be the slowest thing on the field. It can go for something like the Pollen Puff and how that Calyrex regenerate a little bit of HP, particularly with the rain in play. It gives it a little bit more defensive support, or at the same time, you can go for that redirection. You know that the Iron Hands only has single target type attacks, so you can draw them in. Obviously, the Ogre Pond, however, being a grass type, is not going to be affected by that Rage Powder, so it makes things difficult. It does make it difficult, meaning that if you try to redirect away something like an Ivy Cudgel, or even just a wood hammer. This Calyrex is already not going to be sitting at a very healthy amount of HP. So as you head into this next turn, we are going to end up seeing a Terrasalization first. And let's see what it's for. Nice to see it a little bit later in the game, but it is indeed going to be on the Ogre Pond here, dropping its grass type and just becoming a fully fledged fire type in this rain on the field here, trying to maybe use that embody aspect to boost up the attack stat and get rid of this Amoongus. Would be nice, but the Amoongus going for the Rage Powder means it's going to work because it did get rid of that grass typing. So it's going to redraw this attention away from this Ogre Pond as it also has to take the low kick. Another little bit of chip damage down to this Iron Hands as the Glacial Lance hits into both of these targets. The Iron Hands is definitely going to go down, and the Ogre Pond, now that it has removed that grass typing, it still only takes about half of that damage. It's still going to be vulnerable, though, considering that's another chilling nay boost that the Galyrex has got. The Ivy Cudgel going to come through in the rain down into this opposing Amoongus. It's going to be able to hit hard, and it is enough to get the knockout. Ooh, the knockout even through the rain. That is what you can see from just this embody aspect attack boost really trying to help out there. It allows Utah to bring in something else, and this Calyrex in Trick Room is still going to be the, one of the faster things on the field, but it's going to be the Ferrigraph now that's going to take this Iron Hands' place. This gets very interesting now. You've got the defense boost coming through from the Electric Sea, but you've also got Pelipper, generally on the slower side, Pokemon-wise, on the field. But whether the Pelipper or the Ferrigarath are going to be able to move first could be critical here. Pelipper in a prime position to target down something like a Weather Ball into that Ogre Pond and remove it from play. At the same time, Ferrigarath doesn't want to have to take another one of these Ivy um, Glacial Lancers, maybe doubled up from the Pelipper, could be enough to get the KO. You have got the other boost. Ogre Pond may go down to another Glacial Lance. This is the last turn of Trick Room, though, so we we are going to have to see you to try to make the most of it. And while you have all of these boosts intact, even the sliver of HP means that you will be up and ready to go for something like another attack. Now that there is also this terrestrialization on the Ogre Pond, there's no way that Ferrigarath can actually terrestrialize to a water type to try to resist some of this damage. So we see the Ogre Pond go for the spiky shield here. Very safe play to make sure that it will be one of the fastest things outside of this trick room. So when we do see this attack from this Calyrex Ice Rider, it is not going to end up attacking into the Ogre Pond there. But critically, we also don't see a helping hand from this Pelipper. But the Ferrigarath going for the foul play will get the knockout onto the Calyrex, but what is this Pelipper gonna do? I mean, it, I don't know if there's too much that it can do here. The foul play removing the restricted here. Pelipper was going for the weather ball. It is finding its mark down onto that Ferrigarath. Rain boosted, life ball boosted. It gets the knockout. But both these trainers now, as Trick Room ends, forced to their last two remaining Pokemon. Pelipper's gonna be joined by the Iron Valiant, and it's gonna be the Maridon joining the um, Ogre Pump. Yes, but now that we end up seeing this board state, we have the Iron Valiant that's going to be coming back in for Utah, which, outside of Trick Room, now that that's expired, is going to be faster than this Maridon, especially because Maridon is going to reset the electric terrain as it comes back in. That's very true, giving a natural quark drive boost to this Iron Valiant. And as you said already as well, the terrestrialization has been used on that Ogre Pond, so there's no fairy terrestrialization that can come through from this Maridon. I have to say, though, the one thing for Ogre Pond here is that redirection. If you want to go for the follow me, and save the Maridon from having to take a powerful um, spirit break from the Iron Valley, and that can be exactly what the Maridon needs in order to get some damage down on the field. You could go for something like a Dazzling Gleam, but there is the potential of a White God on the opposing side, so I think you've got to lock in something that's going to be boosted by the Electro Train, maybe the Electro Drift. I think it's time to see it. 
think it might be time to see it as well. We saw how much the Volt switch from the Maridon did into the Iron Valiant before, so we know that an Electro Drift would certainly be able to get the knockout as well. You just still haven't used Terra though, and there is a very good defensive Terra, but you take a look at this Pelipper being able to Terrestrialize to the Grass type. Yeah, Pelipper can't protect either, so it's going to be completely vulnerable to any Electric type attacks that are coming its way. So I think as you have got the Terrestrialization in your back pocket, Yuta needs to unveil it now, and I think that's exactly what we're seeing, Rose. It's going to be a terrestrialization into potentially one of the final turns of this Masters Finals. The Pelipper going to take that grass typing, a great way to be able to resist these electro type attacks from this Maridon, but you do make yourself a bit vulnerable to this Ogre Pond, even if in the rain. Helping hand though into this Iron Valiant. Do we end up seeing a redirection though from this Ogre Pond? And yes, we do. It is going to redirect away this attack. The Helping Hand boost though is still going to be able to come through. Spirit Break, fastest thing on the field, connects down into the Ogre Pond, but not enough to be able to get the knockout and as a physical attacker Ogre Pond does not mind taking that drop for its partner Maraidon right that does go for the Electro Drift. The Electro Drift into this Iron Valiant is going to be enough to secure the knockout here. You see the headset come off and Yuta knows this might just be all she wrote. This Pelipper, the last bastion of hope here for Yuta to try to get through this game but the rain has stopped. The protection is gone here for this Grass Knight Pelipper and as we see the forfeit locked in, Yuta, we got to see Luca Trenavelli. See him here going through the crowd getting back onto center stage after celebrating with his friends who really were the true player he made along the way as well as some incredible 